Welcome to Val d'Argenton, a charming haven nestled in the heart of picturesque countryside. This region has offered many people a peaceful retreat from the hustle and bustle of city life for years, until you come across the Val d'Argenton kart track. Opening in the year of 96, it has played host to several major karting event championships over the years. And in 2022, the circuit was brought back to life after being purchased by former French karting star Arnaud Salazen. It now plays host to round one or round two of the Champions of the Future in France. Year of opening 1996 and the lap record currently being set by Finn McLaughlin. That was set yesterday in timed qualifying, 49.210. That is the time that all of our drivers will be chasing over the course of today through all of the qualifying heats. The track itself, an absolutely fantastic circuit, 1,280 meters in total length. It's 225 meters down the main straight in towards turn one, 170 meters into the braking zone of turn number five as you make your way through the, uh, the entirety of the track. Eight meters the track width is only two meters of elevation, meaning it is a fast, flat circuit. Turns in total, there are 13 of them. Many of them very tight and technical, but so demanding on the drivers still. Like we say, eight to the right, five to the left, and those two hairpins. The track offers a brilliant roller coaster for our drivers. The main overtaking opportunities around the track as well. In towards turn one, we've seen many, and in towards turn three and turns four, the same into the turn seven hairpin, and of course, turn number 12. We did see an attempt into the final corner of turn 13, side by side across that line. That was a very interesting one. Top speed drivers will be reaching here is a dizzying 130 kilometers an hour. And that was again into the braking zone of turn number one. Average speed around 93 kilometers an hour, meaning again, this is a fast and flowing circuit for the second round of the Champions of the Future. Well, myself, Anthony Jordan and Guillaume Alvarez in the commentary box for your uh, listening delectation today. Guillaume, great to have you back uh, in the RGMC paddock. Really looking forward to today. The sun is shining. It's a beautiful day for racing. It's a beautiful day indeed for racing in the uh, French countryside. Uh, happy to be back by your side, Anthony. Happy to be here for the first time in the history of Champions of the Future Euro Series. The Karting Val d'Argenton, the rebirth of one of the uh, most prestigious karting places in France. As you said, welcoming... Uh, they're only allowed to use a sort of set and a half for this weekend and then they have to really babysit these tyres. They go through qualifying, qualifying heat and the superheats on all this one set of tyres and then they get a fresh set for that final later on. Current championship standings, it is joint on point. Schaufler and Van Langendong, 88 points apiece from Coronel and Craigie. Hugendorn and Salah are the top six. It's so, so close in those standings and going into this weekend, we have seen these top running drivers struggle a little bit, haven't we? It's not been a straight fight all the way to the end, is it? Uh, not at all, indeed. Uh, certainly so. Uh, William Kaleja, that you have on your picture, will be starting on pole position for the opening race, 18 on schedule. This is a new layout. This is a new challenge for all the drivers in both classes, the seniors and the juniors. Uh, most of them were not even born when uh, the track of Val d'Argento was uh, uh, brought to reality back in 1996. Uh, the uh, green flag is waving, the whistle has been blown, and the drivers, uh, having waiting patiently on the dummy grid, make their way onto the track for the first time today. Which I'm not to uh, roll over any mechanics uh, while doing that. Uh, here's a look at the first starting grid of the day. Yes, indeed, there is 31 of them, and it's William Kalesia starting on pole position with Casper Rypold alongside Rypold with two third places yesterday. Zhang Jose and Kia Verhand on row two from Daniel Kelleher and Rocco Coronel on row three. Archie Lovett, who did take a race win yesterday, starts along Bosco Arias, who needs a good result today. 2.28 finishes for him. Dean Hugendorn and Louis Cochet on row five from Boris Lyzen and Jarrett Clark. Then it's Van Sarkerd and Arthur Huang on row seven. Armin Carrier Osman and Paul Andriotis round up row number eight. Row number nine will have Kanish Rao and Eton Lennon, followed by Bikhan. Amin Manak and Noah Baglin, Sebastian Means and Oliver Rasmussen on row 11. Row number 12, Mariano Lopez and Rajar de Troya. Alexander Unseen and Jesse Phillips on row number 13, followed by Luke Conde and uh, Thomas Gender on row 14. Row 15, Marianetto and Drew Waltz. Row 16, Matteo Rivals. A total of 31 drivers onto the track as well. Everybody in for the warm up laps. And as you can see, these are the perfect conditions that we had been expecting. Yesterday was the same. The sun is shining. The track is very dry, 14 degrees Celsius in the air. This should remain the same until the end of the day and tomorrow as well, hopefully, for the Super 8 and the finals. But before getting there, those drivers, 173 in total this weekend, have to go through a 
good number of uh, qualifying hits uh, today too, uh, done yesterday for each of those drivers, but uh, the biggest part of the weekend remains to be done. And here, William Kaleja is uh, leading the pack as everybody's gonna have to pace themselves down coming to the end of this lap. The uh, rolling start will uh, follow. Uh, you know the drill if you're familiar with uh, the uh, karting proceedings as uh, we do them here at Champions of the Future. The mechanics, uh, as uh, they have their own grandstand by the uh, Parc Fermé and the scrutinizing area, watching closely for what the driver will be able to achieve. 10 laps for the juniors and 12 laps for the seniors in each of those uh, races. Indeed, the tarmac here, very, very smooth, relayed in the year of 2022. So the tarmac only two years old, it is incredibly smooth out there. Did a track walk this morning. It is a lovely racing surface to go on. And for our drivers here, into the tram lines we go then. First time of asking today, the lights go green. We are away and racing, and it's a great start from Kalija in the front. He holds onto the lead, but he runs out oh. wide and over the top. It's the Kart Republic, I think. Uh, that was Daniel Kelleher going over the top there. The driver who started this one in P5 uh, will have a lot of car damage on that one now. Yeah, already a bit of an incident, but uh, fortunately everybody was able to carry on into that turn number one. 13 turns, a uh, couple of overtaking opportunities, as we said, coming to uh, turn number five at the end of that long uh, back straight. This is the middle corner of the track, and already Rocco Cornell trying to sniff a little bit on the inside of the road. Not quite able with the orange element to make his way through to uh, P2. This is uh, quite early already, but uh, a couple of drivers trying to find the best racing line into uh, the uh, corner number 12. Keep a close watch on that one in particular, as some of the drivers are already trying to make their way around the inside. Turn number 13, one of the fastest on this track. And lap one completed, and William Kaleja was able to hold on to that first position. Certainly was, and I've got to say, his teammate here, Kalea Fairhand, is being the ultimate team player here, and rear gunner. He is holding up the rest of the pack here. Archie Lovett right on that rear bumper, wanting to get past in the early stages. But the track here is narrow. It's only eight metres wide, and it's a fast circuit as well. Drivers have said that it is a little bit difficult to overtake, but there are overtaking opportunities out there. So we've seen plenty of good racing over the course of yesterday in the first 12 qualifying heats that we had. We're going to see more racing today as down the inside, Lovett and Coronel go through. And now Hugendorn's trying to go wheel to wheel with Fairhand. But Fairhand slams that door closed and he holds on to P4 for now. They're going towards turn 12 for the first time. And again, big lunges here as down the inside. That's Boris Lysen going down on Dean Hugendorn. He's up now to P5. Here we go into lap number three and a bit of a gap already built by William Kaleja taking advantage of the battles behind him. Seven tenths of a second, as you can see on the left of your screen. Rocco Cornel with the Aranio colors on his uh, crash helmet with the victory lane machine. Trying to uh, chase and shake up a little bit. Archie Lovat, one of the uh, new additions of the uh, Forza racing uh, team as well. Lovat, one win in the bag already yesterday. Then uh, Fehran lays in Ogendorn. Uh, we have as well further back uh, Jared Clark uh, making uh, four places up to eight uh, in front of Kasper Rashbold. Arthur Wong climbing as well four places up into the top ten for the young VDK drivers. As uh, further back as well, Bosco Arias and Daniel Kelleher dropped uh, outside of the top ten. Seven places lost for Daniel Kelleher, who was indeed. The uh, car Republic driver got involved into that uh, a bit of a heated moment in turn number one. Run inside goes uh, one of the power lanes. This is the number one oh. 100 in it. And look at that move from Car Firan. Beautifully made with uh, Boris Linzen actually the two battling along uh, for that position. As uh, we had Dan Ogendorn uh, on your picture making his way past as well into turn number one. The 102 from uh, AK Motorsport. Beautifully made from Ogendorn up into P5 in front of Firan. But uh, what a move that was from uh, yeah, Ferran indeed, who had dropped a bit of momentum as a result. But that turn number 13, just before the uh, start finish straight, certainly not the easiest place to launch an attack. Well, here for hand uh, coming away with a warning flag now, so that will not be well received by him fighting away in that P6. Back with your top three here, and Kalija has not broken away, I think, as much as he'd like. Love it right on that rear bumper. Coronel has followed through as well. So we think we're going to get a three-car battle here for the race lead as we go on to lap number five now. Four completed, and it's not looking comfortable here. And already Lovett was looking to the inside there. You can see the much tighter entry line. There are definitely two different racing lines into turn one, and so many different teams and chassis are adopting the different racing lines through there. It's a very strange one to see, but 
crucially, both of them, they're coming out at the same sort of result. It's a very weird situation. Right on that rear bumper now in towards turn number five, down the 170 meter back straight. And no moves here between the two of them. Into the hairpin though at turn seven. This is where you see the moves. And we're gonna oh! see him here. And it's contact oh around God. goes Archie Love it. It was a battle for the lead. And he's out of this qualifying heat in the early stages of today. Ah, oh, such a disaster for Archie Love. Had one win yesterday in a P5. This is certainly not the way to start second day here in Val d'Argenton. And uh, we felt it coming, that move. This is one of the right spot to do that. But uh, there wasn't enough space, but we might need to see that again. Will it be deemed as a racing incident? Was the other driver involved by uh, shutting the door a little bit too late? But as a result, Archie Lovat is out of this race, unfortunately for the Forza Racing driver. And uh, halfway through that race, oh, that must feel bitter. It certainly will. That's not how you want to start the day here. But uh, like you say, he's had two good results in the early stages. He might be all right. Wheel to wheel in the background there. That's Collegia with Daniel Kelleher. Uh, Sebastian Mins going down the inside as well. And if you pay close attention to that parallel of Collegia after that contact, heavy damage to the radiator oh. as a big send there. No drama whatsoever. Daniel Kelleher down the inside of Sebastian Mins again. And there was a little bit of a contact for Sebastian Mins, but luckily he was able to keep it together on the road. And he lost a place as a result with the pressure of Louis Cochet for the back, the French driver with the uh, Victor Lane machine, being himself pressured by uh, Ethan Lennon for the back, the 106. So we can uh, feel a move coming up from uh, Cochet indeed. Tries to line him up uh, into turn number one, the breaking point. Look at how narrow that is in that particular part of the track in front of the grandstand, the biggest grandstand you'll ever find in the world of carning, not only in France, but uh, worldwide, certainly, with a capacity of uh, 2,500 people. And uh, if you find yourself uh, in the region of Val d'Argenton and uh, you want to spend a nice time in beautiful weather conditions, well, why don't you uh, pay us a visit? You won't regret it. Well, Archie Lovett sees a warning flag as well for his troubles as again we go so close into the breaking there of turn seven. Here's a replay of why that black and white flag has come out down the inside. The gap was closing, contact was made, and uh, unfortunately, out of the race was Lovett. And uh, yeah, well, Kalija still in this race is another angle of it. And, yeah, well, say that the gap was there, and I think he just ran wide a little bit. That was just a bit too close for comfort. Yeah, and the uh, officials decided that uh, Archie Lovato was at fault in there, even though he went for the gap. It was uh, a bit narrow, the door was shut, but uh, maybe it was uh, some sort of a late move. And uh, Louis Cochet ran the inside, beautifully made with Semasse Mins, as well as the 106 Ethan Lennon taking advantage of uh, Mins going wide a little bit, and he go he's going to carry on on that momentum in the back straight. Louis Cochet, the 112, up uh, a position as well as Ethan Lennon. The best means now must, must shut the door behind because he has a clock behind uh, coming on his tail into turn number seven, that is. One of the uh, hardest spots of that track. Then we have eight, nine, and that chicane. Close watch as well on that particular part of the track. Very flat, very aggressive as well. You don't want to uh, get on those curves just too uh, often, otherwise for the tires and for your racing line, that could be bad news. But as we enter lap number nine, oh, and two drivers coming together outside of your picture. This is on the back straight, actually. Two unfortunate competitors. This is Benjamin Manak and Maria Neto, by the look of it, who just came together. And they're joining Archie Lovat, and we did lose Arthur Wong as well. I spotted a VDK machine on the grass somewhere onto the track, and uh, Arthur Wong, that's a shame for him. He was uh, climbing through the field a bit to P10 at some point, and uh, the younger VDK driver is no longer part of this race. No, that is a big, big shame. You can just saw a brief view there of those two cars stricken on the back straight. Back here, though, with your race leader, Rocco Coronel, uh, looking comfortable at the front here. Coronel, who only his best result, second so far this weekend. So a race win uh, will be greatly received as they go on to their final lap of the race now. Boris Lysen uh, is there in second place, but only eight tenths behind. Uh, then you have Dean Hugendorn, who's doing a brilliant job in third place. This will be a good result for Hugendorn after qualifying uh, ninth in group, uh, in group B. So certainly wanting to get some decent results in this one. And he is looking like he's getting that. On to the back straight they go. Uh, no contest here. I think uh, Coronel, shaky first start to the day. You know, second best result, but sixth in his uh, third one. Didn't really gain any positions. This today, after a good night's sleep, looking much stronger. And Rocco Coronel, don't forget, he is the round one winner in Valencia mm. of uh, the champions of the future. He was dominant in Spain, looking dominant uh, to uh, start his day. He will be one of the young names to keep an eye on until uh, tomorrow's final, that's for sure, for Rocco Cornell, who really stepped up his game uh, this season in international karting. Checker flag is waving. This is uh, victory number one of this weekend for the Oranje driver from the Netherlands, uh, Rocco Coronel, 
with uh, good results as well and recovery move for Boris Linzen with the Solicat machine. Nine places gained up to P2. Dean Organon running at the top three with six places gained for uh, the young driver from uh, the Netherlands as well. And we have uh, Kasper Raspold in P4 and Kara Firen in P5. Well, a certainly very good race there for Rocco Coronel uh, from Lysen. But uh, yeah, like you say, tough old race. Obviously, these are only provisional results. Drivers will head back towards uh, Park Ferme where everything will be checked over to make sure everything is good. And I've got to say, there's been a, a, a fair few, there's been quite a few nose cones over the course of today. Like you were saying, the track is quite a tight one. It's like you say, difficult to overtake and you, you get those front to rear moments in some of these tight hairpins out there. So yeah, it is a, it is a tough one and they've got probably the longest uh, pit entry here <laughs> at uh, Val d'Argentine under the, the Sodi Bridge there and then all the way around the back of the dummy grid area. It's quite a long little uh, single drive they have. Uh, a brief look then at the entirety of the results and at the end of qualifying heat B versus F. It is Coronel from Lysen, Hugendorn from Raipold, Beerhan from Alias, Kelleher from Cochet, Mins from Lennon, the top 10. Then it's Francois Kerdel, Jared Clark, Paul Antriotis, Noah Baglin, and Oliver Rasmussen, who rounds out the top 15. Biggest mover in that race, got to give it to Sebastian Mins. 12 places gained for Ricky Flynn Motorsport. That is a very good run. And in P16, we do have uh, Amin Osman, followed by Jesse Phillips, nine places gained up to P17. Then uh, Kanish uh, Rao, P18, followed by Alexander Ussin, uh, Mariano Lopez, P20, Radak de Hoya, follows in P21. Uh, Luc Cordner, Matteo Rivals, uh, Drew Walls, uh, Thomas Gender, William Kaleja, uh, Jiang Uzei, and the drivers missing out, Arthur Wong, Archie Lovat, uh, Marianetto, and Benjamin Manak, the last two coming together at some point in the race towards the later stages of that uh, qualifying heat. Rocco Coronel, uh, you can see, at the scale into the uh, Parc Verme with the handshake and the uh, congratulations of his mechanic at uh, Victory Lane. The uh, French team, uh, of course, run by uh, the uh, Martins brother, Nico Martins, the brother of uh, a certain driver you may have heard of, Victor Martins competing in F2. What are the new additions to the world of karting in the uh, CIK classes? Here's a look back at how the race went on. A great start from uh, pole position from uh, William Carleja into turn number one. A bit of a contact there, quite a heavy one, but Daniel Kelleher from Car Republic was able to keep going. Uh, I don't know how he managed that, actually, because he wasn't hit by anyone else into the middle of that pack, looked over his shoulder. The other drivers were able to uh, go around. No harm done there, and everybody going through. Yeah, I can think we know why Arthur Huang had to retire from that one. I think heavy damage to his radiator, fluid going everywhere over the circuit. You can see all the steam coming out. So uh, that's why we saw an early retirement for him. Uh, race carried on, and uh, there you saw the move coming in thick and fast. Boris Lysen, who did finish in second place at the end of that one, uh, going wheel to wheel with Kia Ferhand at the early stages. This beautiful little positioning here, just making sure the drivers got through. Dean Hugendorn later getting the job done. This was a crash for the race lead down the inside. That's how we lost Archie Lovett. And I'm going to say William Kalija in that one. Kalija dropping down the order. Uh, well down in the order as well, uh, finishing in 22nd place at the end of that one after that contact. And uh, that is a big, big shame. And uh, for Love It, that did result in a warning flag. Uh, later on in the race on lap six, again, we see the moves here just behind the Koski Motorsport drivers getting their wheels uh, dirty, just trying to get down the inside going in towards turn one. Uh, and again, big send there for your man, uh, Sebastian Mins. He did gain several positions, but certainly he was having to fight all the way throughout this one. Louis Cochet started to get involved as well. A little bit of contact between the two of them. It got elbows out at this stage of the race, but it would go the way of Rocco Coronel taking the win uh, by nine tenths of a second from Boris Lysen and Dean Hugendorn. Some good results for them as they go into their next races later on today. Well, we'll turn our attention now to the senior category and Group B and F for the OK. And for Lewis Francis from Australia, it was a very good day on Thursday. Very quick in free practice, and he delivered in qualifying as well. It was an outright pole, but he was certainly only, I think, about six thousandths of a second off from outright pole, which meant he gets to start on pole position for this one. And yesterday was a good day as well. Second and a first in his qualifying heats. Let's see what he can do today. But we caught up with him after qualifying yesterday. There is Francis, congratulations. We are only getting started here in Val d'Argenton for Champions of the Future Round 2 and already in the pace, you topped your group for 8,000 of a second on your closest rival. Talk us through that lap. Yeah, it was a great lap. Honestly, I didn't expect this. I didn't think that I had the, uh, I didn't think that I did the lap to be on pole, but I'm super happy. My first pole position in OK, 
and yeah, really excited to build on this on this and um, looking forward to building on the weekend and getting a good result. What have you learned so far about this new location, a new layout for everybody, conditions a little bit here and there from a day to the next? Uh, what do you expect for this weekend? Oh, well, this track seems like really good for me. Like it's very flowing. Um, the conditions seem OK. Hopefully it doesn't rain. And um, yeah, we're looking forward to uh, managing the tyres throughout the weekend and yeah, just building on this. I'm really happy. Thank you. Best of luck to you. Thank you very much. Well, great to hear that from uh, our pole sitter, Lewis Francis, who starts this one on pole position. He'll have Alexander Bondarev alongside. Now, Bondarev uh, struggled a little bit in qualifying. He is in Group F. It is one of the slowest groups out there, but it, it's not slow by any means. I'm talking about it tenths off uh, the, the fastest times. Uh, fourth and a fifth place uh, yesterday for Alexander Bondarev. So still some really good results. Good to see, obviously, stepping up into the senior category. There's a lot of differences between the juniors and the seniors, isn't there? Yeah, definitely in terms of... Uh competition in terms of uh, level. Here's uh, the uh, young driver from the Williams Racing Junior Program, Alexander Bondarev. Bondi the Bison, as he's known around these parts, with uh, the uh, Car Republic machine and the Prema colors, with uh, Bondarev winning last year's European Championship in the junior class, mm. stepping up to OK, as you said. Like a pair of strong results. He was one of the fastest this morning in the warm-up session, pulling up 49.9. And for the information, the uh, all-time I mean, the overall lap record as for now for the OK class uh, was uh, achieved by Fionn McCoughlin from VDK in 49.2. Watch out for this young man from Brazil competing with an Italian license, uh, Gabriele Gomez, the standard bearer of CRG. It's certainly one of the biggest promises for Brazil in the years to come. Exactly that. And watch his race starts as well, because yesterday in the first qualifying heat for this man here from the second row of the grid, he got into the lead before even turn one. It was a superb start. It was checked, of course, to make sure it was all legal. It was. It was a brilliant start. And he managed to get the lead. So, uh, again, keep an eye on him from the second row of the grid. Now, he'll have a young female driver here, Luna Flusha, starting alongside winner of the Champions of the Future Academy program uh, in Cremona a couple of weeks ago. Uh, dominated the category in that one. Now coming up to this one and had a really good day yesterday. A second place and a fourth. Really strong showing for the young female driver, now backed by Mercedes, uh, part of the Mercedes F1 Junior program as well. Uh, so really promising uh, uh, career, I think, ahead for Luna Flusha. Yeah, a couple of uh, interesting names on that grid and a strong following indeed from uh, Formula 1 team, Mercedes and Williams, just to name a few. By the side of uh, Ludovico Busso on row number three is Emily Corvisto, the uh, Finnish driver for Falcon. One of the few uh, Falcon chassis that we have uh, here on the grid and competing in champions with a seven and a sixth place yesterday. So strong results for Emily Covisto starting from fifth on the grid. Will be, of course, more than eager to emulate on that and even improve on yesterday's results. And you can see, <laughs> we mentioned the long uh, pit lane entry coming to uh, the uh, scale and the parfait army. You can see still some of the drivers from the, pa from the uh, eat before pushing their carts. Uh, towards the zone for the scrutiny while the others are waiting. So, and uh, just beneath the new bridge, one of the new additions uh, of this Val d'Argenton circuit, uh, entirely renovated two years ago. Certainly so. There is Ludovico Busso, who starts this one alongside Emilio Coivisto. Uh, third and an eighth yesterday. Again, good results. We have been seeing that from uh, a fair few drivers. One qualifying heat, really good. The second, just dropping back. We've seen that a lot uh, throughout of this one. As uh, engines fire up, whistle blows. It's their first qualifying heat of today, Friday today. Finals and superheats on Saturday for Champions of the Future. Let's take you through the full starting lineup for this one then as qualifying heat B versus F heads out on track. It's Luis Francis from Alexander Bondarev, Gabriel Gomez from Luna Flusha, Mili Coivisto and Ludovico Busso on row number three. Michael Adir got a penalty in his first qualifying heat yesterday, needs some good results today. We'll have Marcus Shilkunas alongside Dominic Simek and Alpac Soy on row five, for Vivek Canthan and No Montero on row number six. On row number seven, you will see uh, Xavier Avramides and Dante Vinci. Row number eight, uh, Marty Rittanen and Joe Turney. Andy Kansani and Tim Saleh, row number nine. Row number 10, uh, Mick Varela and Wojciech Woda. Row number 11, Aaron Garcia and Hugo Rajametz. Row number 12, uh, Bernardo Bernoldi and Marius Barryberg. Row 13, Louis Castellini and Nico Lana Latti. 26 competitors on this grid once again. And uh, a familiar name to uh, those of you following the karting. Uh, races on the international level. Joe Turney, the returnee at uh, Car Republic, only a B16 on that grid. A qualifying that didn't go according to plan for Joe, who uh, got it used in the past uh, to uh, not starting his weekend, certainly on the best foot, but uh, 
turning himself into the king. There he is, uh, Joe Tony, turning himself into the king of recoveries in the heats and uh, being always in the uh, circle of contenders for the win coming to the finals. Joe Tony, of course, you might be aware of, uh, didn't have uh, the best of uh, ending in uh, last year's season of the World Championship uh, with uh, an injury that kept him out of uh, business and out of racing for the past few months. But uh, he's back and stronger than ever for the past few weeks, uh, competing at his best level ever and uh, is here once again to prove that. Certainly is. Well then, as drivers make their way around the infield section of the track, uh, again, it's been a, a close fight for, you know, Gomez in this one. It's been, I think, the driver that most people are looking at over the course of this weekend, you know, part right up there in the championship points and uh, battling away with it. So again, you just need to keep an eye on it. But again, Finn McLaughlin is a driver that you need to keep an eye on as well. He's not out in this race. We'll see him out a little bit later on. I think his qualifying went a little bit better. Obviously, yeah, hole for him. But, uh, you know, we'll see what he can do in his qualifying. It's all down to these ones here. Because again, real shakeups in the order in qualifying. New names fighting at the front. Familiar names fighting at the front as well in this one. Into the final corner we go, and it is Lewis Francis and Alexander Bondarev on the front row. Who will get the whole shot in towards turn number one as we exit out of turn 13 into the tram lines. Lights go green, and here we go, down towards turn number one, and it's a great start from Francis, holding on to the inside line. Gomez not able to get that drive down the inside, but Bondarev holds it on the outside. There's a bit of a contretemps oh. in the background there. One of the Tony cards going off the circuit rejoins, and everyone gets through relatively unscathed. Yeah, that might have been Javier Avramides to confirm that who uh, went cross-country a little bit because there was no room on the track anymore. But in the lead, indeed, Lewis Francis is a great getaway. Bondi de Bison in second, with Gabriel Gomez down in third, and the rest of the pack going through into that uh, turn number five. Top speeds of about uh, 130 km an hour here with the tow towards the uh, end of uh, the long straight into turn one. The chicane, not climbing the curb too much, otherwise you might lose a bit of momentum. The premiers of uh, Luna Fusha and uh, Bondar in second, Luna Fusha down in fourth, uh, trying to uh, stay close within of uh, course, from uh, Gabriel Gomez with uh, Marcus Silcunas just behind Emilio Cavisto, Dani P6 uh, from Ludovic Abuso, Michael Haider, Andy Consani. What a first opening lap for Andy Consani, climbing eight places from 17 up to nine. That's the way to do it for the Frenchman. We told me this morning that uh, he came here with pretty much no knowledge and uh, no pre practice to the track. So that's proof that the pace has been oh, found. Oh, oh dear! And that's wheel to wheel contact there, and that's Marcus Silcunas off the track. Now he'd gone wheel to wheel there with Alexander Bondarev. Now it looked like Bondarev tried to take the defensive line and I just don't think it was completely unsighted there for Shilkunas and contact was made. We hoping if we can see that one again, it's down the inside. Here comes the other Bramer cart now as they're three wide on the exit of turn 12. It's Luna Flusha down the inside, but Bondarev goes oh! through. Oh, and a big one into the final corner. And two cuts off, it's Flusha and Amelie Coivisto in the barriers at turn 13. And their qualifying heat is over. They seem to be okay both on their feet. Yeah, Luna Flusha is wondering what on earth happened there. We might need to see that again, but both seem to be okay. He's still in his car. We're going to wait for uh, the uh, marshals and officials to uh, make the following decisions. The race is still going, but what's happening already? We had two big incidents in the opening race. Once again, a few contacts into the opening stages. Yellow flag is being waved into the last part, turn number 13. But uh, yeah, by side by, yeah, he's on his feet. That's I, good I to see for the Falcon driver. Yeah, I think we're under slow procedures right now. So the track, uh, the race has been neutralized. So uh, drivers. Uh, still yet to pay attention to those ones at the moment, but the slow boards are out. Uh, so racing really needs to come to a, a nice steady pace. And I think right now it's been seen and I think drivers are starting to bring it back. Well, there's Luna Flusha, uh, understandably frustrated there. You could see the reaction after it saying, what was that? Uh, let's have a look at these moments. There was the defensive line there from Bondarev. That's how Marcus Shilkunas ended out of the track at turn 15. Uh, and then, well, obviously, three wide going into the uh, final uh, corner. That was the first initial move from uh, Luna Flusha. Bondarev then got down the inside. Now, keep an eye on the Falcon car. Emili Coivisto, who tried to get down the inside, oh, just lost the back end. You saw the back end step out there, and that was a big, big moment there. And for Flusha and Emili Coivisto, both out of the race, uh, it's a hard one to call because, yeah. What was he trying to achieve there at well, some speed? That's the, the gap was open on the inside, Slightly, so yeah. but, oh, that's a big oh. hit. I do hope he's okay after that one, because uh, that is a heavy, heavy hit into that wall. Bosh, there, yeah, that's not like, what you want to see at all. Yeah, he was uh, walking, well, he's out of the so, car, that's good yeah. to see. 
that's uh, that's what we like to see. Indeed, there was a big shock, and uh, some of uh, our officials from our GMMC, we uh, were quick on the action to uh, rescue them and help them get out of uh, the gravel out there. But the big contact, indeed. And uh, thanks again to the Orange Army and the marshals on track for uh, acting quickly as well as always efficient, the Orange Army. But uh, that was a big one indeed. Uh, coming back on what happened with uh, between uh, Alexander Bondarev mm. uh, as well and the CIG driver out there who uh, will be retiring, Marcus Silkunas. Uh, do wonder what the official was made will make uh, of uh, those uh, those incidents because uh, yeah, as you said, uh, Bondi was uh, acting a little bit defensive, and uh, of course Silkunas was trying to go the long way around with Bondarev moving slightly and uh, wheel touching in the end so it might be a racing incident so we'll have to wait for any uh, decisions uh, following that uh, incident and uh, when it comes to the second one well there was a gap and uh, if you don't if you no longer go for a gap you're no longer a racing driver so that's what he did in turn number 13 the door was slightly open and uh, the wheel uh, got together and, and that speed in that uh, uh, place of the track there's a uh, little we can do to uh, Try to avoid the incidents, but that's quite unfortunate for Lina Fusha. I mean, for both drivers, obviously. But look at that move, look at oh, Bandera going right a little bit and I touching mean, the wheel of uh, the CRG rival. I mean, you saw the head turn there before he came across. I, I, I may have said earlier that I think he was unsighted from the, again watching it back there. I don't think he was unsighted, I think he knew he was there, but I think he was expecting Shogunas to go with him uh, across and. Shakunas just held his line, and uh, unfortunately, that's what resulted. Yeah, we won't jump into conclusion about no, that. No, uh, no, not at all. Replay, of course, and it's down to the officials to make their mind about this, as the race is still neutralized, but we should be uh, back to green in any moment with uh, our race director, Martin Bean, watching closely the action and uh, making the big decisions. But now, as for now, Lewis France is still your current leader, but uh, Alexander Bandarev and Ludovico Bosso, second and third, will give him the charge. Watch out for Gabriel Gomez further back as well with Andy Consani up into P5 after those incidents as he was starting all the way down to 17 on the grid. So Consani has something to say and to do in this race. Well then, the grid now getting bunched up. There are static flags out on circuit, which indicates one thing. It looks like we could be going green at the start of this lap. It is Lewis Francis then who leads the field from Bondarev. Ludovico Busso from Gabriel Gomez as the lights go green. Here we go again on the restart, down in towards turn one. It's a great getaway from Francis once again, holding on to the lead. No dives down the inside for the top six as they all stay in formation. Bondarev though running slightly wide and now under pressure, Busso looking to the inside, not able to get it done. Gomez, right on that rear bumper, is now going to go for the move on Ludovico Busso and gets up into P3. Yeah, there you go. Beautifully made by Gomez just before the uh, back straight. And around the inside goes the car Republic driver, the 203. This is Joe Turney on the charge as well. And Consani is dropping two places as a result because uh, Akshoy, Alp Akshoy was able to make his way through by the look of it. We'll get back to that. But Joe Turney, fantastic pace and 10 places gained now for the British driver. He's back into contention, Joe, into turn number 12 with uh, the Forza Racing driver in need further back of uh, Dominic Schimmick at the uh, just behind uh, Bakshoy. Uh, Bakshoy just uh, in P6, Konstantin P7, Schimmick in P8, Vinci Kahan, that's for the top 10 at the moment. We've already four tenths of a second built by Larry Francis. With Bondi device and Bondi under the pressure of Gabriel Gomez. Gomez goes for the move around the inside of turn number four, that is. Same place, next lap, and another move pulled by the Brazilian, who finds himself now in P2. And if I were Alexander, bon uh, Alexander Bondarev in P3, I would stay where I am as oh. further back. Oh, what a dive from Joe Turney on Busso. Beautifully made. And the British man is now up into P3. Uh, that's Joe Turney in a nutshell, that is. He wasn't even in camera shot. It just came out of nowhere and still found a gap. That is just him getting through this field. It's something he struggled to do yesterday as Lewis Francis is under investigation. Now, what is that for? Because he was clear of all the incidents that we saw uh, before that. Was it maybe a uh, jump start, maybe at the, the beginning of the restart, or maybe that? We don't know at all, only speculation, but he is under investigation. Well, that is an interesting one. Uh, fastest driver out on track is the American for Parallel Motorsport. It's Vivek Canton, 50.478. As we continue to watch the battle for second place here, uh, Gomez Bondarev and then Joe Turney starting to close in. Yeah, beautiful recovery from the British man uh, up into P4, not P3, as I said earlier. Bandarev uh, behind Gomez. Uh, those two uh, dropping momentum from Luis Francis. He might know already 
that uh, is being investigated. As uh, you can see, the gap uh, between uh, Gomez and Bondarev does to know each other quite well, not competing at the same level. As for the back, Tony Akshoy, Konsani, the gap keep extending just a tiny bit as we enter lap number 10 out of 12. Still three drivers missing out of this race as we head toward the checkered flag. Lewis Francis already uh, one win for him so far and a second place, so certainly one of the contenders to keep an eye on. The gap just slightly increased between uh, Vandarev and Gomez in second and third respectively. As uh, Alpakshu and Kansani try to keep up as well. But uh, as I said earlier, Kansani 11 places gain with uh, pretty much no knowledge and pure practice uh, before this uh, round two of champions. So he learned quickly about the uh, challenges and tricks of the uh, Val d'Argento track, which is, uh, remember, brand new for all the drivers competing, even though they came before to uh, practice and discover the track, but uh, they never competed here before. Hey, exactly. So race knowledge of this circuit they've only had this is their third time racing on it yes you can have a practice session all to your heart's content but knowing where the the great overtaking opportunity is how you can position the car from this corner into the next corner that's things you only learn in these sort of scenarios so this is the first or the third uh, real time these drivers will have full experience of this one joe turney is closing in he's bringing alpac soy with him as they go towards alexander bondarev so bondarev not out of the woods yet granted time is very quickly running out it is doable to defend here uh, but turney is all over that rear bumper and the racing lines there completely different you can see turney he's just able to hold a much tighter line there uh, between himself and bondarev and well bondarev does not even fight it just lets the door open releases Turney, uh, and now he can uh, go for second place as we go on to this final lap of the race. It's Lewis Francis who leads the way by seven tenths of a second from Gabriel Gomez, and now Joe Turney, who's up into P3. Into the final lap we go. Lewis Francis on his way to uh, victory number second. Uh, shall we see any late move with the 2.14 of uh, Busso and uh, Vinci just behind? With uh, the recovery effort from Andy Kansani from Sodicard, a little bit of a touch uh, on the car Republic driver. Started 17, P6 at the moment for Andy Kansani. That should be the result. He will take home back in the tent. As Dante Vici on your picture, 245, the fastest lap in the bag. Can he maybe achieve one late move into turn, turn number nine? Ago, the right and left of the chicane. Turn number 12 will be the last opportunity. But Lewis Francis will have no idea about what's happening behind because he takes victor number two in the qualifying heats for the car public driver. Well done to him. There's Francis wins in front of Gabriel Gomez. 13 places gained for uh, the king of recovery, Joe Turney, in front of Alexander Bandarev and Halpak Shoy for the top five. Well, good little result there for Lewis Francis, but remember, he is under investigation. All of the results that you see on your screen right now are, of course, provisional. Uh, pending any post-race penalties or scrutineering. But for Lewis Francis, for right now, it is job well done. That would be two victories and a second for him over the course of today. Uh, so he's looking like he is on top form this weekend here in Val d'Argentan in France. They'll make their way back to Parc Ferme then. Gomez, great race for him though. One position gain on that one. Tough fights, uh, but certainly some brilliant overtakes there, making his way through the field. And, uh, I mean, you've got to give it to Joe Tony again. Yesterday wasn't a great day for him. Qualifying didn't go well, and then really struggled to make those places. But today, uh, I think he learned a lot from yesterday, because th 13 places to get P3, that is a superb result. Superb result indeed. Even though, uh, starting at the back of the grid, you need, of course, to put on the recovery effort, which is uh, demanding a lot as well for your tyres. Is the classification in full? The victory, number two. As for now, for Lewis Francis from Gabriel Gomez, Joe Turney, Bondi the Bison in fourth from Alp Oxro, P5. Andy Kansani, 11 places up to P6 from Ludovic Fabusso. Dante Vici, uh, Vivek Kahan, Aaron Garcia, 11 places up to P10. For Michael Eider, Mike Pariella, uh, Noah Montero, Marty Rittenen, Dominic Semek running up the top 15. 16th place downwards sees uh, Javier Avramides from Team Soleil, Wojciech Voda and Marius Ballyberg, Hugo Rajmajets and Louis Castellini, uh, Nico Lanalatte and Bernardo Manoldi round out the 23 carts that finished the race. Luna Flusha uh, and Emilio Covisto both crashing out at turn 13 and Marcus Shulkunas crashing out at turn number five. Here's the highlights then. The start relatively good. It was only the Tony card in the early stages of the race from uh, Avramides, who I believe ran wide at the exit of this uh, corner here in the early stages. You can see just running out of room, the Tony card getting squeezed and onto the grass.
Yeah, that's not the best way to start your race, is it? I was uh, watching Lewis Francis to see if there's, there was any wrongdoing from uh, the Australian driver in the early stages. Here's the contact between Sinkunas and Bondarev. Will it be investigated? Will it not? That could be the end racing incident, but there was a slight move that uh, sent the SRG driver into a spin. Second incident with Luna Fusha making his way through Bondarev by his side. And then the uh, Falcon driver for the back of Emily Covisto is going to try to go for the gap in turn number 13. It's not working. The wheel touch and bang into the entire wall, but fortunately, uh, both drivers were on their feet. Yeah, that is a scary moment there at one of the fastest corners on the circuit. You are flat out round there uh, through turn 13 onto the start finish straight. And uh, yeah, there you can see gravel trap just getting skipped over. Thankfully, like you alluded to there, both drivers okay. The restart then, and well, again, that looked absolutely fine from Francis. Didn't look like anything. Uh, Bondarev getting a good getaway as well. It was Gomez and Ludovico Busso, though, on this opening lap that certainly got a bit interesting. Down the inside through turn number four, the hairpin before the uh, back straight, just nicely done. And that allowed Joe Turney to really start to close in here. There's the first overtake and before his second one on Busso into turn seven was absolutely superb, wasn't it? He wasn't even in camera shot at that point and he got through. This was the Bondarev and Gomez uh, position change. Uh, again, no drama there through turn four, nice and clean. No drama. There was Turney down the inside. That camera angle, you could see him coming through. From the other camera angle, you couldn't see it at all, could you? That is a uh, brilliant dive down the inside, wasn't it? Yeah, definitely. So a lot of good moves from uh, George Turney. But in the end, uh, Lewis Francis was the uh, strongest of them all. Taking win number two as we wait for confirmation still is under investigation. We'll keep you up to date uh, following any decisions from the official. But Gomez and Joe Turney running up the top three of that race. Uh, three drivers missing out in the end with uh, Luna Fluscia, Marca Silcunas and Emily Colvisto. Surprisingly enough, only two races down and a little bit of uh, madness, a little bit of uh, craziness into the early stages of that race. Next one is OK Junior for qualifying heat C versus E, 10 laps uh, to go through. And uh, yeah, a little bit of madness. I do wonder if it has nothing to do, has something to do with the name of the place we find ourselves in, which is in French, La Folie. And La Folie means madness. Wow, actually. there you go. So there you go. Hopefully not too much madness for the next races <laughs> because it's still early in the day. Uh, so we've still got 16 more qualifying heats to go, can we not? Uh, there we go. Here's your pole sitter then for Group C. Uh, Filippo Sala uh, representing Italy. Beautiful helmet. We caught up with him at the end of qualifying yesterday. Filippo Sala, well done to you. Qualifying is done here at Val d'Argenton. Talk us through that lap of yours and a good position that uh, you were able to achieve for the qualifying heats. Yeah, it was a very good result for us. And it was difficult, like the first some groups are faster than the third one. So yeah, it's, it's fine. Like we already know that it will be difficult, but yeah, we're happy with Paulette, so it's fine. <laughs> yeah, pace seems to be there for you. And uh, this is a good sign because you guys have a, a couple of races to go through on the way to the finals on Saturday. Yes, like like that we can start in the front for the heat and start, mo like, start more in the front also in the final. So. We will see in Saturday. All right, best of luck to you. Thank you. Good to hear from uh, young Filippo Sala as uh, we caught up with him uh, as they were making their way back uh, to the scale after his qualifying effort uh, that put him third overall and on pole position for this race. But he won't have an easy time, uh, Filippo Sala, with his uh, London race machine because this young man, Dries van Lagenog, the Belgian, Last year's junior world champion, a uh, second year in the junior class, uh, and one of the contenders for this year's title in the uh, uh, Champions of the Future Euro Series. He picked up a win yesterday, but didn't have the best of second heat. P14 in the end for Dries van Langenon, in need of a stronger results to get his day going. It certainly does. Well, let's see what happens as the carts fire up. Let's take you through the full starting lineup then for OK Junior qualifying heat C versus E. It's Filippo Sala and Dries van Langenon on row number one. Jack Eilir from Roman Kamiab on row two. Kosa Aguma and Kipbalowski, they go from row three from Christian Kostoya. And Ili Christian, who again is a driver who needs some good results today, 23rd and 28th yesterday. Matt Van Ruin and Michael McGow go from row five. It's Sky Parker and Bruno Grieg on row six. Alex Malota and Oliver Kinmark go from row seven with Andrea Mani and Jacopo Martinez running up row number eight. Row number nine, uh, Anshelson and Maka Savalev. Row number 10, uh, Ro Thomas Pradier and Ari Domain. Row 11, uh, James uh, Anja Nostiaris and Augustus Stoniolo. Row 12, Eskandar Zulfikari and Ella Akinen. Bogdan Kosma Christopher and uh, Meryl Paldes on row 13. Row 14, Clara Kovalcic and uh, Tobias Sutsenzi. 
row 15, Alexander Kortenov, Efim Dernov, row 16, Theo Battisti and Marco Gast. 32 drivers on the grid and 32 on the track as well for two warm-up laps and one to get everybody in for the start of proceedings as we go back to juniors. Then laps to go through C versus E and the juniors uh, as it stands. Yesterday we had uh, a couple of winners indeed with Se Sebastian Letimaki taking two wins. One win for Filippo Sala that was going to be starting from pole. We we're certainly uh, more than eager to add another one to his tally. Archie Lovat and Jake Heinef uh, took uh, wins as well and one win for Dries van Langendonk in this uh, junior category. Not sure if Filippo Sala is trying to predict the future of this qualifying heat. He's broken a massive gap uh, from the rest of the field in this opening stage. He brings it back now, uh, constitutes the group up as they head into the final sector of this formation lap. Uh, like we were alluding to earlier, this is a uh, this is a tough old circuit, isn't it? So many uh, tight, twisty corners as well, but they are fast and they are flowing as well. Means that the racing is fierce and very competitive, and we have been seeing that over the course of the first few races that we have seen this morning. Uh, we're on race three of today. Uh, this will be race 15 over the weekend. We had 12 qualifying heats yesterday. We're two down now. Uh, maths would indicate that we're on race 15 uh, as we go into it. But for all of our drivers, this is certainly going to be their first race of the day, and let's see what they can do. It's Filippo Sala and Dries van Langendonk on the front row. It's a great start from the inside line, and it was too good from the inside line. We are going round again, so another formation up, which is good because that gives us a little bit of time to talk about the intermediate classifications at the moment. It's Rocco Coronel who leads that intermediate classifications uh, at the moment, 128, only eight points clear from both Rypold and Sebastian Lettermarki. 120 versus 100 points. Remember, Sebastian Lettermarki is yet to go out today. He is effectively leading the IC uh, because he's got two race wins and he's yet to go out today. If he gets another one, he bumps himself straight up to 150 uh, points. So uh, that is what uh, they will need to, uh, to get to on this one. Uh, drivers, again, starting to get themselves formed up and ready to go for it. And again, temperature into the tyres. Did a track walk this morning, Guillaume. Uh, thing that I noticed, there was no marbles out on the circuit. Now, either the team here at Valadon did an absolutely superb job of clearing the track last night, or there was no marbles that were going down off the track. Yeah, one or the other reason, certainly. But uh, that's interesting. Uh, yeah, constat indeed. Interesting seeing because, uh, yeah, the marbles sometimes. Martin Bean, our director, on your picture. Uh, it's... Uh, usual certainly a common thing to uh, have a lot of marbles outside <laughs> of the racing line on some of the tracks that we go to but uh, it seems like the, the tire uh, degradation has been uh, quite positive so far and he has right lights go green this time and we are away and racing and it is a great start from Sala but it's an even better start from Van Langen Donkey's holding it on the outside here but he goes wheel to wheel with Jack Eilif and Eilif goes through the two teammates going line astern in towards turn number five there's a bit of coming together oh there's a cut off in the background it is the 21, I believe, that span around, and that was a Constantino effect for the rest of them. Uh, now, that is an absolute disaster uh, for them. I think it was Clara Kowalczyk who initially spun, uh, and that's uh, Thomas Vladeer off the track, and I think that was Meryl Peldis also in the 29 off the track, so that is not the start uh, you would want to see at the beginning of this one, but for the drivers at the front here, it is a start they want to see. Kosa Aguma, who's up into P4 now, looking very strong, but he's got the close company of uh, Mats van Ruin, who sends it down the inside, but out breaks himself. They now go oh. wheel to wheel, as off the track there. Is that, uh, well, that's the number 25. That's another one of the uh, Ricky Flynn carts there that's gone off. That's Roman Kamyab, and I think, is that Illy Christian there as well, the Tony Kart driver, also off the circuit. There's another one off the track as well. That's a Koski. It might be Michael McGann. And I think we might have lost uh, Thomas Pradier by the look of it. We'll get back to that. Yeah, but, uh, it, we did. A couple of drivers indeed involved. Once again, a bit of craziness into the opening stages of that race. Uh, then to go through, and uh, Filippo Sala is building a gap in the middle. There we go. Madness, as you said. The uh, local uh, area that it's called, I think, still kicking in, and it's still flowing in the air here on uh, on Friday's qualifying heat day. Uh, but like you say, yeah, Sala leading the way, but only by three-tenths of a second. Van Langedonk closed in three-tenths in that first sector alone on this lap. Keep an eye on the Belgian in the Forza racing car. He's got his fellow uh, Forza racing teammate driver, Jack Eilif, just behind him as they will exit out of turn 13, back onto the start finish straight gap. Down a little bit more there. It's staying roughly the same. Salah is back on the pace. Back on the pace. Uh, we'll be able to keep him going until the end of that race. Uh, remains to be seen. Three, four, almost four tenths between the leader and Dries. 
and three tens with Jack Eilif. The two Fords Iracing drivers helping each other out with uh, the same pace at the moment, pretty much. They're giving the chase to Filippo Sala. Mas van Rooyen is leading the second train of drivers with uh, Oguma for the back. Uh, Sky Parker, five places gain for uh, driver from uh, DPK Racing. She uh, needs a good result, didn't have the best of outcome yesterday. As right inside, you can see Oguma with uh, the car building machine trying to uh, make his way past uh, Mas van Rooyen. We started nine, currently fourth. Good effort, but he's about to drop a place because uh, Oguma, the 104, is making his, his way past in turn number 12. Beautifully made from the Ake Motorsport driver, AKM for Antonelli Motorsport. Antonelli, a name that might sound familiar to many of you and to more and more people in the motorsport world for the past few years. And they have their home team in karting as well. So it's not uh, uncommon to see uh, young Kimi Antonelli getting back to karting and uh, giving a hand to the young drivers. That's what I'd like to see. Certainly so. Two Brits just behind here. You've got Sky Parker and Kip Belofsky who are starting to close in on this battle. You can see the DPK and the Fusion Kart going uh, line astern in through turns five and six. Martinez oh. closing in a little wide there from Mats Van Ruin and he runs wide again through turn 14. They gifts the position to Sky Parker. Mats Van Ruin there, well, he's all over the place. Uh, now, has he pushed those tyres a little bit too hard too early on into this weekend? because he is slipping and sliding all the way around this lap. And he might fall into the hands of Jacopo Martinezzi with the number four. He was a 16 only onto the grid eight. This is gain, as you can see, and uh, he keeps on charging his way through. And we'll see if Jacopo Martinezzi was going to be able to uh, make his way past. Uh, as we get back with the leaders, Filippo Sala and Dries van Lagenog with one tiny tenth of a second. The yeah, Ford's racing driver all over the back of Filippo Sala, the young Italian. It's about time to wait patiently for the right opportunity, the right moment, and try to kick that door right open. Turn number 12 could be an opportunity as well. But uh, now, Dries van Langenong has a bit of time on his hands. We have uh, the sort of protection from uh, Jake Heilig. Of course, he's doing his own race as well, but uh, they're from the same team. They want to support each other. And uh, Jose Oguma, the Japanese driver from further back. Uh, oh, as Jacopo Martinez pick up a warning flag. And in the meantime, side by side, Van Langenong is going for the move just before turn number 13. That's the way to do it for young Dries. Not clipping the curb, the door was wide open. He just uh, dived his way through and takes the lead. Dries van Langenlok on lap number six. Filippo Sala was able to hold on to second place, but Jack Heilif is all over his back with Oguma searching for the opportunity as well. And he takes it in turn number four, up into P3. Yep, nicely done, straight down the inside. And again, Sky Parker has closed in on this battle as well. Uh, so we could see some uh, five-car battles here for the race lead, but Van Langendonk now with the clean air, starting to break away. Again, I thought that was a massive lunge there for Jack Eilif, thought against it at the last second. Now Sky Parker right on that rear bumper now after taking the optimal racing line, is piling on that pressure. Are we going to see a move in towards turn 12? We are on the outside, trying to get the switch back, oh. gets the car alongside as we go wheel to wheel now in towards turn 13 and gets it done. Now, crucially, you're seeing their drivers just on the outside. They're tucking out of that one. They're not going to do that. I've had a front row seat to what happened earlier on between Flusha and uh, Coivisto, and they think, I don't want to give that one a go. That looked a bit uncomfortable. Yeah, that was a lovely move indeed from uh, Sky Parker there to uh, make your life easier, and that's what we like to see. But uh, that's the way to do it, certainly, as uh, going around the outside a little bit, switching the racing line, and then open the door for turn number 13 without too much pressure. A couple of uh, overtaking similar after Dries, uh, Sky Parker. That might give ideas to other drivers as well for the uh, next few uh, races. And uh, yesterday, those were the first qualifying heats, you know, and uh, this time around, we can feel that the drivers are eager to take more risk. They are op opening up opp opportunities in turn number one, turn number 13. We haven't seen that much happening yesterday. We're still day one. They need to uh, bag in the points, the good results, and building on the confidence. But now, day two, things are getting more serious. You need to collect those re winning results and uh, find your way through uh, the field. Uh, it was a little bit hectic to start with. Things seem to be uh, turning uh, quieter and uh, more and uh, reflection. Dries van Langenonk is still uh, holding on to that lead for two tenths of a second. Filippo Sala and uh, Oguma in third. Oguma closing in on the uh, Ruki Finn Motorsport driver. Certainly is. Uh, so Oguma set in the fastest lap earlier on and now finds a gap down the inside of the turn seven hairpin. But Sala holds on to it, denies them as they go through turns eight, nine, ten, and eleven now in towards turn twelve, the hairpin. And no chance this time around for Jose Aguma. Stays there in P3. Sala, though, definitely 
on the defensive at this point of the race as we go on to lap number nine. It's the penultimate lap of the race and a late lunge there down in towards turn one. And Aguma gets it into second place. Filippo Sala down into third. And you could see Filippo Sala gesturing to Aguma. Stay with me, let's keep going because there's one lap to go. But Dries is up uh, for a grab, but uh, the Japanese driver didn't listen as uh, Filippo Sala might have been a little bit unfocused there. The door was too wide and he just went for it. Again, the first time that we see today and it might be the first proper overtaking that we see in turn number one. Yeah, exactly that. And uh, again, it's completely understandable from Kosei Aguma's point of view. He knows that they're not going to catch up to Van Langdonk with the time they've got remaining. So he thought, right, let's just get this move done. Let's get into position. And that's where he's going to be. I think he'll, he'll probably stay there. If he does close in, it's a great effort because he is quick. Kosei Aguma's been absolutely on it. He's got the fastest lap of the race, actually, uh, at the moment. And on that last lap, uh, there's been oh. another change. Uh, now, on the final oh, lap sorry. now... Uh, that's, uh... Yeah, so that's the 21. <laughs> that's Clarica Wolczek, who I think is at the back of the grid now, yeah. who's just may have rejoined or, or something. I'm not too sure what's happened there. Uh, but, yeah, she's uh, she's not part of that race. She will tumble down the order. Uh, so it's Van Langendonk who leads from Kosei Aguma. Filippo Sala still there in third place, but Sala's not dropped off, and Aguma knows it, checking over the shoulder there. He just needs to make sure that he covers off any attack here. Uh, you know what? I got caught up a little bit by uh, Clara Kovalcic, actually, because she's uh, the teammate of uh, Filippo Sala wearing the same RFM colors. Yes. So I was like, is it Filippo Sala dropping down the order? But it was indeed uh, uh, Clara Kovalcic. She was a P2 for a moment, but uh, certainly a narrow there. Watch out, because between Oguma and Filippo Sala is not over yet into the last turn. It gives ideas to other drivers to go for the attempt, but this will be too late, I'm afraid. In the meantime, Luis Van Langenon wins. Kosei Oguma hold on to second place, and Filippo Sala having to make the way third for just 400 of a second on the line. So maybe a couple of meters would have been needed for uh, Filippo Sala in third place. Good return, though, for the uh, Luka Finn Motorsport driver. And Kansi Oguma climbing three places up to second. But in the end, there was no one strong enough to beat. And now, Dries Van Lagenong taking a second win for the Belgian driver. Yep, certainly so. Good results then for the Belgian. Back on fine form at the start of Friday's qualifying heats after that 14th place finish in his second one yesterday on Thursday. Uh, back on the top of the field four. And Kosei Aguma, really good result then for Kosei Aguma. That is two second places now and a fourth place uh, over the course of the qualifying heats. Looking very, very strong here in France is the driver from Japan. Uh, Felipe Sala then finishing in third place from Jacopo Martinese. Uh, and the rest of the field as well. Sky Parker, brilliant result. Big movers all the way throughout this one. Martinez, 12 places gained. The main 14 places gained. The same as Zulfakari, also 14 places gained. Let's take you through the full lineup then. Van Langdonk from Aguma, Sala from Martinez, Sky Parker from Henry Domain finishing in sixth place. Andrea Mani from Christian Costoya. Uh, Isakanda Zulfakari finishing in 19th place from Jack Eilif. Bruno Creek from Senna Z, Augustus Toniolo from Kip Baloski, and James Anagnosiaidis uh, rounding out the top 15. The Mercedes F1 Junior driver up six places in that one. Yeah, well done to him. 14 places gained for both uh, Efim Derunov and Theo Battisti, up to P16 and 17 in the classification, classification that follows. P18 for Mats van der Rooyen and uh, Oliver Kinmark following in P19 from uh, Alex Molota. Uh, Klara Ko Kovalcic, who was on P2 in the end, but uh, 21, still with a good recovery of six paces, as much as Tobias Senzi and the rest of the classification in a minute. As we take a look back at the uh, replay and the start, Filippo Sala on the inside line. Luis van Langenonk a little bit shuffled around the outside. As, oh, maybe a slight touch, not so much, uh, with uh, Jack Heilif, his teammate. No harm done there, as they were able to uh, keep going in the end. It's a pretty clean start for everybody, and uh, even though contact uh, and a heavy one, actually, that uh, we uh, missed in the early stages with a couple of drivers involved. And we had the uh, fourth three over there, and some of the drivers need another angle with that big contact with one of the victory lanes, the Triple 11. This is Thomas Pradier, actually, who was indeed involved in that early uh, tussle. We lost to Meryl Paldes, Thomas Pradier, to Michael McCoggy, as well as Ali Christian and Roman Kamiab in the course of this race, uh, starting with this incident. Yeah, it certainly did. That allowed so many drivers to gain those many positions. Uh, racing went on onto lap three, and Kosei Aguma getting down the inside there. Great moves just getting through uh, on the number 11 of Matsan Ruin, who did just fall down the order uh, at the end of that one, tumbling down, which is a big, big shame. Uh, again, getting the moves straight down the inside. No time wasted for Kosei Aguma. Uh, this time on the number 10 of Jack Eilif, who again just tumbled down the order in those dying stages. 
Uh, Sky Parker getting down the inside as well. Good, uh, good drive there for Sky Parker. Six places gained. Uh, young female driver racing now for DPK Racing. Uh, from Wales in the United Kingdom, uh, having a really good run here in France. Uh, same with the drivers all behind as well. Domain was there, Andrea Mane, Costoya, Zofakari, all in that battle. This was the change for second place down the inside at turn number one. Jose Aguma just getting up into P2, but had to defend from it. But for Theresa Langendonk, that is a second win. Plus a 14, that 14th place, that's going to hurt him going into uh, the end of today. But if we can get some good results going into the next ones, it'll be absolutely fine. Well, we head back to the senior category now with the OK class with Zach Drummond starting on a pole position for this next one with Jimmy Helias alongside. Uh, qualifying really good for Zach Drummond. Was an outright pole. He was third fastest overall. Uh, but the qualifying heat certainly went very well for him yesterday. Two qualifying heat wins out of two. He is on maximum points going into this weekend. And a little look about the class as well. Ages 14 plus, 78 entries, 31 different nationalities in the senior category going into this week. And again, a fantastic turnout for the class. The chassis and engines themselves, well, it's a 120cc engine, 39 at brake horsepower and 150 total uh, weight kilos for the drivers. That is uh, chassis, engines, everything, and driver uh, that they've got to adhere to. Then the tyres, they're on the Maxi Prime going into this weekend. And again, drivers really putting in some quick times in qualifying. Uh, it showed that the Maxis have been absolutely on it over the course of the weekend so far this year, setting new lap records at every track that we've been to so far right now. Looking very strong. And the same with the tyre allocation. Uh, you do get the one set over the course of all these qualifying heats, qualifying, qualifying heats, and of course the super heats tomorrow. The championship, though, it is Gomez who leads it from McLaughlin. Drummond, who starts this one on pole position, sits third. Anatoly Kavalkin is fourth with 58 points from Thibaut Ramakas and Alexander Bondarev with 47. Of course, those uh, will change at the end of the qualifying heats today. They will change again at the end of the super heats and, of course, the finals. But Drummond put it on pole in qualifying. This is what he had to say after his qualifying session. Zach Drummond, uh, qualifying is done here at Val d'Argenton and uh, you nailed a good job, you nailed that lap. It puts you uh, in confidence and in a good position for the qualifying heats. Yeah, I mean, first three rounds, three poles and grip, obviously. I mean, I'm, I didn't get pole overall, but I'm still very happy. I think I'm third overall, but I'm still very happy with that. Um, yeah, I mean, I can't expect anything better. It seems like you guys at uh, Parolin have put the finger on the right setup. Do you think you can still keep on improving through the races on the way to Saturday? Yeah, Parolin made a quick uh, setup change just before the qualifying. Uh, it turns out it worked very much. And um, honestly, I'd like to thank Parolin so much, and especially uh, Lorenzo and Nico and stuff, because... Um, to my usual mechanic, Giacomo, I'd like to say get well soon because um, he's on well just now, so hopefully he's here tomorrow. From what you learn about this new track for everybody, are there any spots uh, for interesting overtaking manoeuvres that uh, you've seen? Um, yeah, I think it's there's not very many overtaking opportunities, but the last couple of corners maybe you could, and then the first couple of corners as well. Fantastic. Thank you very much, and uh, best of luck to you. Thank you. Well, great to chat there to Zach Drummond. Uh, two out of two qualifying heat wins. And uh, like you say, going from the front row in this one uh, for the Parallel Motorsport team, uh, certainly had a very good start to his season. Uh, and of course, over the course of the qualifying heats today. Now, he does sit sixth in the IC, but that's only because he's not had his third race. Everyone else who was above him has. Uh, so this, uh, if he takes another race win in this one, he will uh, gain those positions. Uh, engines fire up, then let's see through the full starting lineup for the OK qualifying heat C versus E. Zach Drummond from Jimmy Elias on row one, Matteo Giacardi and Noah Wolf go from row two. Casper Henriksen and Kai Rillart round out the top six on row three from Matez Morgato and Dmitry Matviev on row four. Joseph Smith and Leon Brunner round out row five from Tom Dussel and Jakub Mikulev on row six. It's uh, Stefan Antonov and Anatoly Gavalkin who round out row number seven. Row number eight, uh, Leon Nelson and uh, Stiganos Colodos. Then we have uh, Chusen and David Walter, row nine. Row 10, Freddie Lloyd and Hugo Marti. Row 11, uh, Roland Cochrane and uh, Brody Norris. Sebastian Pavan, Pisa Still, row 12. Row 13, Vega Clementson and Jensen Graham. 26 drivers into the formation lap as we're back with the OK Senior 
And as you can see, Sebastian Pavan has put on a fresh half set of tires. As we said, one and a half set to go through from qualifying all the way to the super heat and one fresh set for the final. And Sebastian Pavan in 2010 who will be starting from further back in the grid from 23rd only uh, has chosen at a quite early stage to put a half fresh set of tires because he needs the results, he needs to pick up the pace and uh, that means of course having half of a fresher set for better performance hopefully for him yeah he's not had those results has he and Sebastian Pavan is a driver who we are used to seeing at the sharp end if you cast your mind back uh, to uh, well way back I think Cremona uh, last year Pavan was right on the on the charge in that one of course the Italian on an Italian car an Italian track it was all there for him so you know uh, really really good uh, driver and uh, yeah shame that he's just not been on it this uh, this weekend so far which is uh, a big big shame uh, right then field have ended their for or ended their outlap they're beginning now their formation uh, as they get going for this one uh, but uh, right now it is going to be a tough one Zach Drummond of course what can we say about him such a good start uh, to his weekend. Two qualifying heat wins out of two. Can he maintain that? Jimmy Elias, who starts alongside, has taken a qualifying heat win as well. Second uh, in his second qualifying heat yesterday. So again, he's looking for another race win on this one. But Drummond's certainly going to make it interesting. Here we go then into the tram lines. Are we going green? Yes, we are. And it's a great start from Drummond and uh, Giacardi on their inside row. A little bit squirrely there from Giacardi as they try to file their way into position. There you can see Casper Henriksen's not oh. had the great start. One of the Cut Republics off the circuit as they all file in towards turn number three, the hairpin. It's nice and clean at the front. It's a little bit bustly at the back there, but it looks like we're all fine and clear. Drummond in the lead from uh, Jimmy Elias, who just slots back into, uh, I think, fourth place now. That's uh, not been the greatest start for Jimmy Elias. Yeah, pretty much clean for the rest of the drivers, though, as run inside. Go, there he goes, Matteo Giacardi, beautifully made for the uh, Ford Racing driver, looming a little bit uh, in the early stages, but I think uh, there was a switch back. Oh, and a bit of a uh, contact on the uh, outside of the car. The 218 in your picture, this is uh, Matheus Morgato, Brazilian, already fighting his way through as we're waiting for the opening up to be completed. There they come, Zach Drummond, Noah Wolf. Uh, this is him making his way past, uh, up to be second. Uh, Noah Wolf with the uh, Van Amersfoort Van Pai Pirelaf machine. Here we have Matteo Giacardi, Matteo oh. Morgato, and uh, right inside, beautifully made by Matteo Morgato. He didn't put any fresh tires on, but the, the pace is definitely there for uh, the uh, Brazilian world champion in the OK class uh, two years ago, remember. And now he finds himself into P3, chasing him on a very early stage. Noah Wolf and Zach Drummond, not to let them get away in any uh, possibility. As Tiziano Skolovos is uh, picking up an investigation flag, remains to be seen for what reason into the chicane clipping the curb some of the drivers being quite aggressive into those opening laps trying to put themselves into the best racing lap possible as Zach Drummond completes another lap in the lead but for how long look at Noah Wolf is closing in two tenths of a second into turn number one the two Brits uh, coming into play together uh, I will cast my mind back. I'm pretty sure these two have raced together in their cadet years uh, and then up through the junior years as well. So these two, I think, are well accustomed uh, to each other's driving styles, but uh, curious to see what they'll do in the senior category here. But Drummond leading by just two tenths of a second. Then you've got the third place battle, Morgato, who was right there, is bringing Giacardi, Henriksen, Brunner, Mikulev, uh, Smith, and Tom Dussel. Uh, Tom Dussel, unfortunately, getting disqualified in one of his qualifying heats yesterday, so he certainly needs another good result in this one. This is the battle a little further back. This is Matteo Giacardi just trying to uh, uh, latch on to that rear bumper uh, just behind. We just saw there Leon Brunner on the back of Kasper Henriksen as well. Uh, those battles are happening thick and fast. We keep an eye on this one, but it looks like Drummond's found the pace here and he's just opening up that gap just a little bit. And, and a driver who didn't have the best of uh, happy opening laps is uh, Jimmy Elias, actually. We lost, we lost him pretty much all the way down to P12 as uh, it was uh, starting on the front row of the grid alongside Zach Drummond. So uh, as a result of the contact, oh, so, oh, two drivers coming together, two Tony Cat machines, unfortunately, the 265 That's and the 210. David Walter. David Walton and Sebastian Pavan, unfortunately, coming together. Pavan with the half-pressure set of tires. He was climbing his way through four places gain, 
but unfortunately this will come to nothing. Well, it looked like there that David Walter is in a bit of discomfort, still seated in his cart, so we do hope he is OK. Marshall's on scene uh, as the race continues. Drummond now has lost his advantage. Noah Wolf has closed right in as they go now battle to battle uh, here in towards turn at number three. Uh, they will come in towards yellow flags soon, I suspect. So there will be yellow flags going in towards turn seven. Uh, so they will have to be careful there. No overtaking uh, between that sector. Uh, but we keep an eye on this battle. Kasper Henriksen now with the fastest lap of the race. Uh, now starts to close in 50.184 as we keep a visual on this top battle here between these two. Morgato still there in third from Giacardi. Henriksen from Mikolev. Brunner from Dussel, Smith from Rillarts now in the top 10. Uh, biggest mover in these stages as well. A little further back, but it all seems good. And I'm afraid that we're going to have a yellow flag in um, just after turn number four, where the incident between Pavan happened and David Walter, because David Walter is still in his card, being, being taken care of uh, by the marshals and uh, our deputy race director. But uh, yeah, he's out of his car and on his feet. That's what we like to see. So good news for uh, David Walter, who might have been a bit shaken up there by uh, the incident. But he's walking and uh, seems to be OK. Yeah, certainly so. Good to see then, uh, just off camera. Back here, though, with the battle for third place. And Matez Morgato has not broken away, and Giacardi sends it down the inside. A beautiful move there in towards turn seven. Morgato just leaving the space and allowing uh, the uh, the Monogas driver to just break through and drive away now and see if he can try and close in on the top two, which again, it's close, but not close enough for a race move at the front. But this here for third place is starting to heat up. Lap number seven out of 12 already. And uh, the Tutanikar teammates uh, with the marshals on the, on the sideline, which is good news as uh, two tenths of a second. The fastest lap for Leon Brunner from uh, DPK Racing uh, from P7. Nothing is done yet. Two trains of drivers, two for the win, potentially. And then uh, Giacardi, Morgato, Ericsson, Makalev, Brunner, Tussol, Kai Rilartz in P9. Kai Rilartz, I, wanna, I wanted to pick up on the Belgian driver, back with Sodicard for uh, Champions of the Future. And is one of the few drivers who might have a little bit of experience more than the others of the uh, Val d'Argent racing track as he competed here uh, the last few seasons in other series as well, which uh, wasn't the case of uh, most, uh, pretty much uh, the uh, totality of the other competitors here. But the gap is uh, slightly decreasing in the meantime uh, between Zach Drummond and uh, Noah Wolf, uh, the uh, young driver from Britain, alongside his fellow countryman Noah Wolf, the uh, first ever driver picked up by the uh, Vanamos Ford Junior Program, as you can see with the colors on his card, in support of uh, the Birelart Factory, another big name from uh, the uh, motorsport and single-seater world uh, being involved in karting. We've seen uh, a lot of them over the past few years and uh, keep them coming because it brings opportunities for the young drivers to uh, climb the ladder. And uh, Noah Wolf might be one of them for the years to come. But uh, he's uh, busy showing his pace and the set of skills that we've seen of him uh, for the past few seasons as well. As uh, we enter uh, lap number nine of the year, Zach Drummond, Noah Wolf, uh, three tenths now. As the leader just picked up a little bit of pace. Morgato still observing Giacardi in the battle for P3. As uh, I think the fastest lap went to another driver this time around. We'll get back to that. Yes, it was Leon, Leon Nilsson from uh, P11, 58.0 at the moment. As we head towards the end of the race, we can feel that now the drivers seem to be in a bit of a control mode, watching for the right opportunities, a bit of an open door to uh, get their way. In that particular turn, at turn number four, is uh, one of the uh, couple of spots where the overtaking is possible. We went for, indeed, like four or five uh, different spots, but uh, we could head to this one, the number 13, the last turn before the uh, start finish straight, considering uh, the uh, couple of uh, very good maneuvers that uh, we've seen so far. And then another one uh, could be one, especially coming towards the uh, final stages of this weekend. Yeah, certainly so. It's, uh, it's getting to that final stage of the weekend as well, isn't it? Because all of these groups that have come out now, they've only got two qualifying heats left. You know, we're at that halfway point now, and that's where you start to see drivers really start to... Well, we've already seen it with Sebastian Pavan uh, deploying uh, that fresh set on the other half. The only problem that he's had is that, well, he's crashed out on this one. The only solace he can take... It's a bad result. It's not great. 
but he's still got those fresh tyres. They're only, what, two laps used, so he can really push them again maybe in the next one. So it's not the end of the world, but again, he's not had those good results. Remember, only uh, 72 go through to the super heats, and it's only the 36 that go through into the final. So there is a cutoff point. We are going to lose a handful of drivers. You don't want to be one of those drivers, so getting a lot of bad results is not what you need. On to lap 11 we go then, it's the penultimate lap of the race. We continue to see Zach Drummond and Noah Wolf breaking away. Unfortunately, into the pit lane there is uh, Vanguard Clementson uh, for Birolat Racing, the driver uh, from Norway, not having the best result here, starting at the back of the grid and uh, unfortunately not gaining any more of those positions, finishing now in P24. Uh, right, well, like you were saying, going on to this lap, I don't think we're going to see an attack here from Noah Wolf. It was kind of calm and copy of what we saw yesterday a little bit. He was in second place, he was doing a good job, uh, but then he had the difficulty of drivers closing up behind him, he dropped down to fourth. He doesn't have that here today. Uh, but that car is absolutely on it, but I think he's just in a case of, I'm happy, I can take a second place. It's good points, it's where he needs to be. He's up there in the points at the moment, he's sixth in the IC. You know, he's gaining positions in this one. Uh, as we go into this final lap, I, again, there's no stress, I think, for either of these two drivers. They've been out, and uh, the driver under no stress at all is Zach Drummond, at least by the look of it. He's in control mode, but now Wolf, uh, two places gain up uh, to a second after a fifth and a fourth. So he keeps in on increasing his performance. He keeps progressing. The next one should be, logically, if we follow that path, maybe his first victory of the weekend for uh, Noah Wolf. And talking about winning results, well, Zach Drummond has already two in the bags on his way to a third, which will make him and confirm him, as always, as the uh, current leader of the classification in the OK class. Zach Drummond was uh, this year's first pole sitter in Valencia, and he currently sits in third overall in classification. So, certainly one of the names, one of the young drivers to keep an eye on. Race leader and race winner for the third time since uh, yesterday, a close watch. And uh, the thumbs up, that's what we like to see. Fair play between those young drivers. Four tenths of a second between German and Noah Wolf on the line. Don't forget that once the helmet is on, they become rivals, they become competitors, but they remain friends and in good terms once back in the paddock. And uh, this is the majority for all those young drivers getting along uh, pretty much well, at least to my knowledge. Giacardi uh, in P3 from Matteo Morgato and Ericsson in the top five. And uh, Zach German asserting himself once again as the uh, current leader in front of Gabriel Gomez and Lewis Francis in the uh, provisional classification. I think that's our first calm race of the day. Wouldn't you agree with me on that one, Guillaume? Uh, Zach Drummond then taking the win. Uh, I'm not going to say comfortably, only four tenths of a second from uh, Noah Wolf. Matteo Giacardi finishing in third place from Morgato. Henriksen uh, finishing in fifth. And in those opening stages for Casper Henriksen, I was watching his sort of track positioning of where that cart was sitting. It did look a bit slidey as well. Again, drivers again seem to be uh, struggling at this stage of the weekend. It's at that, it's at that halfway point now, isn't it, where you've really got to think, how am I going to deploy these tyres? We'll, we'll cast my mind back a little bit to Valencia. We'll, we'll do that a bit later. Let's have a look at the full results on this one. Uh, like we say, it was uh, Drummond from Wolf, Giacardi, Morgato, Henriksen from Mikulev. Tom Dussel finishing in seventh place. That's a good result. He will have needed that one from Leon Brunner. Kai Rillard from Leon Nilsson. Joseph Smith from uh, Sun Zhao Yu. Jimmy Elias from Stepan Antonov. And Roland Cooklane rounding out the top 15. In P16, uh, we do have uh, Dimitri uh, Madvev uh, following uh, with Peter Steller in uh, P17. And Atelier Kavalkin dropping four places down in P18 uh, from Hugo Marti, uh, Brody Norris, uh, Freddy Lloyd, Jensen Graham as well as Tiziano Skolovas and uh, Vega Clemetsen, uh, two drivers that we lost uh, through the course of that race, the two teammates of uh, Sebastian Pavan and David Walter coming together uh, before and uh, between turn seven and eight. Uh, on your picture, third winner, Zach Drummond, and here's how he achieved that result. Yeah, look at the highlights in this one there. You can see in the early stages, Wolf breaking to the inside, already straight up into uh, P4 there. Uh, trying to hold the outside line. It wasn't going to happen for Jimmy Elias. He drops down to about P4, P5. That's what I'm talking about with Henriksen. Right at the start there, you can see he was already tentative just at the start, and he had a big train of carts just behind Leon Brunner trying to get past the opening stages. This is Wolf getting up into second place in the early stages of that race. Giacardi just dropping down, then Morgato came through. This position stayed like this for a while. Uh, then uh, Giacardi managing to get back on the pace, back on the momentum, was able to get that move back uh, down the inside. That's Henriksen again down the inside. And then this was the moment between our two retirements. David Volta and Sebastiano Pavan on lap number four. Uh, Volta clearly in a little bit of discomfort. That was the change there. Giacardi back down the inside of Morgato, uh, back into P3. 
That stayed like that for the end of it, and so did this. It was Zach Drummond who took the win by four tenths of a second from Noah Wolf. Nice clean finish and a nice thumbs up there at the end. Just saying, well done, mate. Yeah, well done too. Well, that is the seniors done for a while. We'll turn our attention back to the OK Junior category. And now it's time for qualifying groups A versus D. And for Sebastian Lettermarki in the OK Junior category, he had a very good qualifying and good qualifying heats as well. Two qualifying heat wins yesterday from starting from pole position. And it was outright pole as well in qualifying. A really, really solid time he achieved yesterday. Uh, he was the uh, the first time that we saw in the junior categories. 51.137 was the time that everyone had to try and beat. No one could get close to it, though. And for the man who starts this one on pole position, it's just been a good weekend. I mean, you, you can't say much more than other than praise for the driver for Koski Motorsport. You know, he's battling off so many quick drivers. He's got Devon Waltz, got Kenzo Craig, he's got Nicholas Schaufler. Nicholas Schaufler, current championship leader, starting behind him. So, you know, really fantastic pace that we've seen from this uh, young driver from uh, Finland. And uh, really curious to see what he could do in this one. We caught up with him, though, at the end of qualifying yesterday. Sebastian Letimaki, well done. This is a good start to your weekend in Val d'Argenton. Fastest in uh, qualifying is looking good for the rest. What do you think? Yeah, it was uh, really good. Again, the quality. And yeah, the, yesterday we have been testing different things with the engine and the chassis. And now we put uh, every piece together and uh, yeah, the pace is there. The pace is there, which looks promising, considering this is a new track for everybody. What are your thoughts on this new layout in Val d'Argenton? Well, it's, uh, I like it. Some corners are a bit challenging, but uh, most of the corners are quite nice. I like it, yeah. Fantastic. Best of luck to you. Thank you. Well, great to chat there to Sebastian Lettermarki, starting this one on pole position. We'll have the likes of Americans. Uh, Devin Walt starting alongside P3 in his first qualifying heat yesterday. P6, though, uh, at the end of his second one. Uh, after a post-race penalty, unfortunately, uh, he would drop down a few positions, but still a P3 and a P6. It's a good result. He's in a good spot at the moment, and he starts to one on the front row. He has been looking really quick, hasn't he, the American? He's been really quick so far, even though uh, this time around it will be on the outside mm. uh, coming to turn number one, which uh, generally in karting is not the ideal uh, of position if you want to go around the inside of the turn, but uh, especially here with uh, turning to the right on that uh, narrow entering uh, turn number one into the breaking point. We've seen overtaking uh, happening. Could be done around the outside, even though there's not a lot of uh, runoff area. This is uh, an old school kind of track in Val d'Argenton. That's what we like to see as uh, further back is uh, Kenzo Cringy indeed from uh, Prima Racing, the young British driver with the uh, Mercedes AMG College and uh, one of the young drivers backed by uh, further structures in the world of motorsport. Two uh, second wins for uh, Kenzo Cringy so far and uh, it will be on the inside just behind this uh, Sebastian Lettimaki so we're searching for another uh, good results for the uh, Prima racing driver. Nicholas Schaufler current championship leader from Austria starting on the outside of row number two with his uh, well, new beta sponsor uh, liveried all over his race suit and his car looks absolutely fantastic you can spot him from a mile away coming through the field uh, the all fully orange liveried um, DPK car there really doing a good job uh well the whistle's blowing uh, you can see the one minute ball going up there mechanics are getting primed and ready to give these cuts a good push off the line uh in the okj category we have seen some superb races over the course of uh, yesterday and this morning uh that last race like to say it's the calmest one maybe it seems to have simmered down now as drivers are getting themselves focused and thinking and actually you know we really need to focus on getting some good points here that's probably stop having massive uh, accidents out on track uh that's probably been delivered quite uh, calmly to the drivers there you can see the yellow light is flashing indicating we've probably got about 30 seconds before the drivers get going for this qualifying heat it is okay junior qualifying heat a versus d that is about to go racing. Some of the fastest drivers out on track with only drivers who are a tenth off the pace uh, in qualifying. Let's take you through the full starting lineup then as drivers' engines get fired up and we head out on track. It is Sebastian Lettermarki and Devin Waltz who start this one on the front row of the grid. Kenzo Craigie and Nicholas Schaufler on row two. 
Asha Oshteen and Matt Corby, who got disqualified in his previous qualifying heat, needs another good result here. Alfie Slater, who was disqualified in his first race yesterday, got a third yesterday in his second, starts on the fourth row. We'll have Scott Marsh alongside. Alex Martinez and Vladimir Ivanikov go from row five. Then it's Sun Zhao Yu and Jean Mateo Rousseau on row number six. Yol uh, Pokola and Remy Samchek, who's gone for a brand new set of tyres on the right hand side of his wagon. They start from row seven with Aloy Girode and Georgi Zazov on row eight. On row number nine, we have uh, Jason Burnett and Harlan Kraling, uh, Scott Lindblom and Florent Atomer, row number 10. Row 11, we have Gustavo Marquez and uh, Manuel Miguez Garrioso. Row 12, with Travis Tejo and Marco Porovko. Nikita Nikishov and Apo Timonen, row 13. Row 14, Harrison Mackey and Marcel Zebo. The other driver with half a set of fresh tires, as you can see. And further back, we have for row 15, Cole Denholm and Alexander Dahlstrom. Row 16, Philippe Reis and Amir Sabirov. Two drivers with half a set of fresh rubber for this race. Two drivers in need of uh, good results. Uh, didn't pay off for Sebastian Pavan in the race before due to an incident with his own teammate. Uh, unfortunately, both uh, in uh, good uh, spirit, hopefully, afterwards, as uh, we go again for the junior class. Ten laps to go through. Sebastian Antimaki, can he make it three in a row, just like Zach Drummond did for Parolin in the senior class just before? Remains to be seen, because Devin Waltz, uh, Kenzo Kringi and Niklas Schaffler for the back on the row number two. Might have other ideas as well. Niklas Schaffler, don't forget, has yet to uh, win a race, but is your current championship leader on equal points uh, with uh, uh, Fionn McCoughlin. Uh, Sorry, my apologies with uh, Alexander Bondarev. I'm looking at the senior uh, category. At the same time, <laughs> nothing will go right with uh, uh, Dries van Langenhoek. We'll get this right. So 88 points so far between uh, Schaffler and van Langenhoek. Each of them needs the results to uh, get the advantage at the end of this weekend. I like that. That little move there from Letamaki slaps the front of his helmet saying, let's go, let's do it. Lights don't go green. There we go. Oh, there you go. I amped myself up there. <laughs> uh, false start. They are going around again. I think it was a little too amped up there from Sebastian Letamaki. Got that on that loud pedal a little bit too soon. They uh, head round again. Uh, there, your race director, Martin Bean, keeping a close eye on the start, deeming that was not one that could go green on. Uh, so again, a little bit more wear on the tyres then. They, they've spent a whole two laps there warming them up and getting the temperature in. Now they've got another lap to do it the same. So again, tricky, uh, tricky stage because you don't want to do that too much. You know, you could ruin a tyre just in this sort of stage of, uh, you know, a race. So you've got to bring it back. You've got to be careful uh, at this point. Don't uh, put too much stress on them. Uh, Kenzo Craigie on this one. Uh, a driver who uh, I think is looking really strong this weekend, actually. Two second places. Uh, has looked really good. The uh, the young driver, Mercedes uh, F1 junior driver as well with the Prima Racing team. Uh, I think Mercedes junior program having three drivers entered this weekend. Uh, currently fourth in the championship. Uh, let's see what he can do in this one. Of course, good qualifying heats means championship points at the end of them. So again, it's good to get these positions done. Yes, you might think, oh, it only means where I start for the super heats and the finals. Uh, it means a lot more than that. Here we go then. This time it's good. It's green flag and the way they go down towards turn number one. Great start from Waltz on the outside line. The American going wheel to wheel with Letamaki, but he can't hold on to it. He stays there in third place. He actually dips down to third, but now it's Kenzo Craigie down the inside. Waltz follows through as well and Letamaki Letamaki is fading, fading, fading. He's down to P6 now as the entire grid goes down the inside. That's a disastrous start for Sebastian Letamaki, who's only had race wins this weekend. And what a start it was for Kenzo Krenge, actually the primary racing driver, making his way past up to the lead, around the inside, a little bit of a touch on the curve for the 27 of Alfie Slater. Alfie was disqualified in uh, his first races yesterday, so he's in need of good results. And he made a P3 in his second one, so the base is definitely there as around the inside, Letimaki trying to uh, fight his way through. The pulse is uh, turning down the order, but he just made his pass, his way past in turn number 12. Let's see where he is at the moment. He is uh, down to P6 in front of Alex Martinez, who he just overtook. Lap number one complete. Uh, Kenzo Quingy, three tenths of a second from David Waltz. Uh, David Waltz, shall I say. Alfie Slater up into P3. Beautifully made for the uh, young RFM driver in front of Asche Ostein. Niklas Schaufler down to P5. Then we have uh, Letimaki, Martinez, uh, Marsh, Corby, and Pohola. Keep an eye on Asher Austin there, possibly going to go for a move here on Alfie Slater after he ran wide out of the exit of turn number four. Doesn't have the legs on it here and actually goes defensive here, really early doors. So Slater not feeling comfortable out there despite the fact he's in P3. There is your, uh, was your pole sitter. Uh, 
Sebastian Letamaki, uh, he was quick on a one lap per point of view. Let's see if he's quick in a race scenario as well, because he's able to start at the front and just drive away at the front. But can he break his way through a field as well in this one? He is under immense pressure from the UK, Scott Marsh just behind him, and he goes defensive again in towards turn number one. Nicholas Schaufler just ahead of them as well. All of these drivers so, so talented and quick, but yet right now they are struggling in that mid-pack section. And on your picture is Scott Marsh with Tony Clark machine, the green one. Just behind us, Sebastian Littimaki, certainly not happy on himself about losing that many positions into the opening laps. He was uh, first on the grid and now trying to fight his way through from P6. Uh, not the easiest of start indeed. Niklas Schofler just in front of him with that uh, orange livery on his car Republic machine from DPK. Trying to uh, get close to Ostein as well, Slater. That's uh, a little bit of a train there. Is it the young British driver trying to uh, gain momentum and keep a close uh, look and uh, contact with uh, Devin Waltz. Devin Waltz who has other things in mind, of course, as uh, he tries to uh, stay as close as possible to Kringi. And to Kringi keeping himself on the racing line and shaking into turn number one, turn number two, the little kick. And then uh, this is the first real overtaking opportunity. Two tenths of a second between uh, the two leaders. Letty Maki, the start of uh, his charging suddenly through the field. This is a hammer time already at this early stage of the race for Sebastian Letimaki, who would have seen suddenly himself leading the pack at this stage. But uh, turn number one in the opening lap decided otherwise. Only so. Right, we're with here the two leaders, Kenza Craigie, Devin Waltz, as they make their way in towards turn number 12. Craigie looking comfortable here in the race lead. Uh, just in the background there, Letimaki getting the move done, I think, on Schaufler. Uh, that was for uh, fourth place, uh, just in the background. Yes, confirmation there. Letamaki up into P4 is on the charge back. Slater uh, still there in third place, is in a bit of a no man's land right now. Hasn't got the pace to close in as a change for the lead. Devon Waltz down the inside. We were not expecting that in towards turn three, but he delivered straight down the inside on Kenzo Craigie. No time wasted whatsoever. Slater running wide again on the exit is not able to capitalize. He is really struggling in there in third place. And just on that turn, the uh, turn number uh, five, on the way to turn number six, uh, there's a little bit of dust as well, but a little bit onto the curb, uh, which will be in interesting to keep an eye on for the next few races. It's quite dusty on the outside, of course. You might have noticed in the background there's a, a motocross track as well, brand new to this year, bringing a little bit of dust onto the track. All oh, three drivers are coming together, four drivers involved between turn number four and five in the middle of the track. We're going to try to pick up who got involved there, but this is certainly not looking good for some of them. And uh, one of those drivers from Pirela was trying to uh, get going again, the 28 on your picture. So to see who that is. I think it's Nikita yeah. Nikishov, Florentine Hatima, Mark Brovko, yeah. Remy Samchak, and I think Gustavo da Silva uh, also off the track there. All of them coming together. Yeah, well spotted there, Guillaume. That's at, uh, yeah, turn seven. That is a disaster for many of them, isn't it? Yeah, disaster. And uh, unfortunately, uh, I think that Gustavo Marquez was trying to get back onto the track, but uh, the marshals decided otherwise. Once the engine seized, the uh, drivers, according to the rules, only are allowed to try to push once and not two attempts, otherwise uh, they are forced to retire. But this time around, we'll get, we'll get to see if the engine was still on for Gustavo uh, Marquez da Silva, but he seemed really, really disappointed, as you can be in a, a particular case of a DNF. Uh, but uh, four drivers coming together in turn number four. This is one of the hardest spots of the track, that's for sure, where you go searching for that overtaking maneuver. You try to kick that doors open. Didn't go according to plan this time around as we uh, lost three drivers Gustavo Marquez da Silva, Remigius Samchik, and Florentino Atomer. Well, racing continues. Uh, Sebastian Latimaki has closed in now. Uh, we've got three carts here battling for second place. Craigie from Slater, Latimaki now down the inside through turn seven, is back up into third place. I think he has answered the question we called out earlier on. Can he make his way through the field, or is he just a one-lap wonder driver getting to the front in qualifying and just breaking away? He's answered it. The answer is yes. He, he can get these overtakes done. He has got himself back into third place. It's Craigie uh, left on the table to get back up into P2. Uh, but he's got to think about doing it quickly if he's uh, got the momentum, because Devin Watts is breaking away, and there's only a couple of laps left of this race. He will not have the time to close back in. He will lose. Uh, his uh, clean start on this one, outright Poland uh, wins. He does not want a third place or second place tainting him. He wants uh, another race win. 
Right now he's not close enough, but he is close enough. Down the inside in towards turn seven, and he gets it done again. Now into second place. That's a lot of real estate, though. He's got to close up between himself and Devon Waltz in the race elite, though. And that's a right moment to make that move. He could feel the pressure coming from behind from Alfie Slater. He's trying to uh, go for a similar attempt, uh, but uh, it was uh, done in the seat. Paul Timaki up into P2. Now he has six tenths, uh, now half a second to try to decrease on Devin Waltz. It's about pushing time for uh, Sebastian Timaki, putting up the fastest lap in this race in 51.4. As Devin Wells, your leader was uh, lapping in 51.7, so that might be certainly the time for Letimaki not to make a mistake. Devin Wells, uh, certainly more than aware of uh, the pressure rising on his shoulders. Was a racing driver keeping the inside line and shaken. Letimaki, Krenji, Slater, Marsh, Schaufler, Alstein, Girarde, Russo, and Pohola, your top 10 as we head towards the uh, end of this race for the uh, OK Junior category. After this one, we'll get uh, a couple of more, three more races after that. Two for the seniors, one for the juniors before the year lunch time and the rest of the schedule this afternoon. Stay with us. Then race this afternoon to decide the uh, classification before the Super Heat and the first points awarded for the overall classification of the championship. Final lap it is. And still almost three tenths of a second between Devin Waltz and Letimaki. Can Sebastian Letimaki surprise us all with a very late move into that last lap? Had two wins already. Maybe the temptation to go for the third could be too big, but that could actually uh, lead the drivers to make unwise decisions and lead to mistakes. Or will he be wise indeed in that case and uh, chose to, uh, to go for P2? As Alfie Slater now is uh, under intense pressure, rising pressure from uh, Scott Marsh for the back of the Tony Cup machine. He might want to go for the move in turn number 12, unless uh, Alfie Slater goes defensive. That's what he does. Watch out for the uh, switch of racing line on oh. inside the door. is short. That was a close call. But Marsh is going to have to stay behind. And in the meantime, this is the first victory of the weekend for David Waltz, third and six yesterday. The victory for him on his first attempt. Sebastian Etimaki, second in the end with uh, Kenzo Kengri taking third place from half his later. Scott Marsh for just uh, less than two tenths of a second and uh, Niklas Schoffer having to make do with uh, sixth place in the end. Yep, certainly. Well, that is a change for so many drivers. Sebastian Letimaki having to deal with his first non-race win. Devin Waltz dealing with his first race win. And uh, Kenzo Gregi dealing with his worst result of the weekend. Granted, it's only a P3. Uh, it's still a very good result. Uh, well, there we go. Drivers will make their way back in towards Park Burme. That is the end of their third uh, qualifying heat of the weekend only. Uh, a handful more to go for the drivers. Five qualifying heats all the drivers get over the course of this weekend. We are more than halfway point then on these tyres uh, through the weekend because they've still got a super heat to do uh, tomorrow for some of the drivers. Remember, only 72 go through to those super heats. Uh, so there is a handful of drivers who are at this moment not in the cutoff area. They need to get those good results in their last two races of the day. Let's take a look then at the full lineup at the end of that one. Uh, it's Devon Roltz from Sebastian Lettermarki, Kenzo Craigie from Alfie Slater, Scott Marsh from Schaufler, then it's Asha Oshtin from uh, Girardet, uh, Jean-Matteo Rousseau uh, finishing in ninth place from Joel Pokola, Jensen Burnett from Georgi Zazov, from Matt Corby, Sanjao Yu, and in 15th place, Scott Lindblom, four places gained. In front of Alex Martinez in P16, from Harrison Mackey, Aaron Kralling, Colden uh, on Hapo Timonen, Marcel Zebo, Alexander Dahlstrom, uh, Travis Teo, uh, Manuel Miguel Grioso, uh, Vladimir Iav Ivanikov, Nikita Nikishov, Amir Zabirov, and Felipe Reis, as well as Marco Brovkov. Uh, who uh, didn't uh, see the checker flag, I'm afraid, yes, he might be somewhere on the track. And uh, the time for the drivers, including Devin Waltz, on your picture with the congratulations from his mechanic. The time for everybody to get through the scrutinizing phase and the scale. And the time for the team of the track to. Uh, get uh, a good help to the drivers to recover the back family onto the track. Let's have a look at the uh, replays in the meantime, as it was a strong start on the inside from the uh, ball sitter Sebastian Timaki before things took another turn. A couple of drivers involved in a bigger tussle coming across as uh, around the outside, there's nothing he could do against uh, a good start from Kenzo Krenge. The Puma racing driver was uh, quick to take the lead from uh, the ball sitter, as so was Alfie Slater. And then there was the switchback around the inside from the Forza Racing driver. Devin Waltz beautifully taking the lead into uh, it was the uh, 
ballet of overtaking maneuvers between uh, the two, Devin Waltz oh. and Skenzo Quingi, and then uh, coming together, a couple of drivers. And as we said, it was Gustavo Marquez da Silva who uh, was keen on getting back onto the track, but the marshal decided otherwise. And then a half it's later here, the 27, uh, dropping a place to uh, Sebastian De Timaki on a charge from P6 after dropping momentum in the early stages. And uh, maneuver after maneuver, he was able to get back to P2. Well, uh, a very unhappy uh, Gustavo da Silva there. Uh, clearly not happy with his wagon. Uh, race finished, though, and it would be a first win for Devin Waltz. It would be a first loss for Lettermarki. Uh, but they will go into the next round of qualifying heats in a good position in the intermediate classification. Back now with the senior category, qualifying heat A versus D, and it is David Cosma, Christopher, and Mark Dubnitsky starting this one on the front row of the grid. Both of them having good results in their first races yesterday. Uh, second races though, still good for David Cosma, but for Mark Dubnitsky, a retirement, finishing 25th, unfortunately, for the driver from Estonia. Uh, but this man here, David Cosma, well, fastest in qualifying yesterday. What can you say? A brilliant time, 49.606. I believe that has been beaten uh, a little bit, though, in uh, previous uh, races that we've had. But still a very quick time, nonetheless, securing uh, outright pole. This is what he had to say after qualifying. David Cosma, Christopher, uh, well done to you. A new track in Val d'Argenton, and already you put yourself ahead. That could be pole position, fingers crossed, but certainly a good start to your weekend at Champions of the Future. Yeah, I honestly didn't expect that because I didn't do the test. Uh, I couldn't come to the test and uh, I was really not expecting this result, but uh, I found a really good gap and I did my time, so I'm very happy about the quality. Couple of novelties this weekend, not only the new tyres that you guys need to understand, a new layout. Have you managed to uh, get more information about those uh, particular aspects? Yeah, the track is not that grippy, so it's quite difficult to learn it and to carry. You need to also carry a bit of corner speed, but for me, I learned it quite quickly and yeah, it's nice. Fantastic. Best of luck to you. Thank you so much. Uh, well, David Cosma starting this one on pole position. Uh, like you were saying, no race wins for him just yet, uh, but starting alongside, we were talking about him earlier on, Mark Dubnitsky, part of the CRG racing team, who were so dominant uh, in Valencia in the first opening round. Uh, you know, coming into this one, again, they've had good results. They've still got CRGs right up into that sharp end. They're just a bit more split up in the qualifying heats. They're not all tucked together in the same one. Uh, giving us those like sort of dominant races. Uh, Tiba Ramakas, though, starts uh, on the second row just behind David Cosma. Now, Tiba Ramakas has taken a qualifying heat win so far uh, this weekend. Uh, finished first in his second one, third in his first. Uh, the young Belgian driver stepping up into the senior category, looking very strong here in France. We'll have the very close company of uh, Czechs, uh, Jindrich Peschel, starting alongside second and eighth yesterday. Uh, looking very strong as well uh, in these races. Um, again, real shake-ups at the front here. Again, drivers who are having good results, bad results. I think Guillaume Bazar is a prime example of that one as well, starting on the fourth row of the grid, 26th in his uh, first race, third in his second. Big differences there in race results, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. So from one race to the other, so drivers were not as lucky as uh, before. Guillaume Bazar, as you said, is a good example after his... Uh, the trouble, 26 and then a third. So the pace is definitely there for the driver from uh, Luxembourg. Ross Hampton, the yeah, chief brigadier officer with the one minute ball remaining before the start of the upcoming race, A versus D in the OK senior class. So we had a uh, brief look at the grandstand of the Val d'Argenton circuit. The best spot definitely to uh, not to miss any of the action around this uh, almost 1.3 kilometer uh, track. So. The sun is shining, so if you want to pay us a visit and have the best spot in town, well, that grandstand is where you need to go. Tindrich Pezel, 262 from Czech Republic, under the uh, Monster K factory team colors, uh, will be uh, starting from uh, fourth on the grid on the outside line on, alongside Thibaut Ramakus that you see on the left of your picture. Thibaut Ramakus, who uh, owns us a revenge after a difficult final in Valencia. He was starting on the front row of the grid, couldn't only make it to P10 in the end but is uh, logically one of the contenders for this year's title, having climbed to uh, the senior uh, category uh, for the first time and doing wonders already uh, ever since the start of the season. The green flag is waving, the whistle has been blown, and here we go for 
10 more, uh, 12 more laps, shall I say, for the senior category. After that, we'll have two more races and time for a break for everybody here. Certainly so. Uh, right then, qualifying heat A versus D. Let's take you through the starting lineup. Uh, David Cosmo and Mark Dumnitsky on the front row of the grid. Timo Ramikas and Unit Special round out row number two. David Pataro and Luis Werrell on row three. Guillaume Bazar and Salim Hanna go from row four. From Santino Panetta and Tiziano Monza on row five. Finn McLaughlin, who's fighting for the championship lead, will have Len Nice alongside on row six with Gresham Skulinov and Elik Kaczynski on row seven. Row number eight, uh, Murilo da Rocha and Ian Ekmans. Row nine, Miguel Costa and Mace Hoban. Row ten, uh, Blake Nash with half of a set of fresh tyres. Ewa Besterda by his side. Row eleven, uh, Alphonse Mitinen and Louis Iglesias. Tom McKinsey, Kai Albag on row twelve. Row 13, Ken Fadin and Aaron Kivilo. 26 competitors as always. And a couple of interesting names that didn't have the best of qualifying, including Louis Iglesias for his second year in the OK senior class at first onto the scene. You might remember that last year at the European Championship in Cremona with a fantastic pole position. He took second place recently uh, in uh, the opening round of uh, the European Championship, really to uh, step up his uh, pace and results this year. But this time around, he will only be 22nd on the grid after a difficult qualifying. Difficult effort as well for Ian Eggman, uh, 16 only uh, on his grid as well. The young Belgian driver with the Pirelat machine. And uh, let's not forget Miguel Costa, one of the young standard bearers of uh, the Parolin factory, uh, 17 on the grid. And as you mentioned, Phil McCaughlin, who is the new holder of the lap record here in Val d'Argenton in 49.210 that he achieved in uh, free practice coming to this event. Still the time to beat to this day for the new data that we have for OK and OK Junior here on this layout. So Fiona Coughlin, 11 on uh, this grid, fighting for the championship lead, lead indeed. Fiona Coughlin second to Gabriel Gomez for six little points. Fiona will need the results, considering that Gomez for the overall classification uh, starts a little bit further up uh, each of his qualifying heats. So let's see what the uh, VDK driver will be able to achieve this time around. Well, there we go then. Grid is slowed down, and Cosma and Dumnitsky on that front row of the grid. Who is going to get the whole shot then? Down it towards turn number one. We go green and we go racing. Down it towards turn number one, and it's a great start from Cosma. Blocks the middle of the track there. We, that's the first time we've seen that one. Blocks any advantage from getting alongside. There's a slow cart just in the background there. It looks like it's Key and Fardin in the Sodi cart. And his cart is stopped. His wagon's broken down. Oh, oh dear. And there's got to here as uh, McLaughlin uh, had the close company of the 2-2-2, two, 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 I think that was, on the rear bumper. That was Davide Bataro had mounted the rear bumper of Finn McLaughlin's cart. That had bunched the whole pack up there. There's Kian Fardin. He's off the circuit. Brand new to the Sodi team uh, in 2024. And unfortunately, his second round in the championship is not starting the way he wants. Yeah, that's too bad indeed. And a couple of drivers getting together slightly into that opening lap. On the inside, Ramaker is all a little bit of a nudge with a 256 of a Tony Card, I'm afraid. It was a close call. We're going to have to get back to that. But uh, Ramaker forced his way past. And uh, it might have been Tijano Monza actually who got involved there and pushed a little bit around the outside. We might need to see that again. But uh, as early as the end of uh, lap one, Thibaut Ramakers who dropped a little bit of momentum. He's only P8 uh, in front of uh, Tijana Monza and Ian Eggmans, who uh, took uh, advantage of the uh, door opened by his fellow countrymen to make his way past up into P9. You're seeing here the battle for third place. Lewis Werrell with Salim Hana all over that rear bumper. Uh, now, Werrell's going defensive here despite Salim Hana's uh, pleads to no just go 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 i'm not going to attack in this early stage and now mark dimnitsky is all over the rear bumper here of Salim Hanna, and they're both going to have to go defensive here now as uh, dimnitsky tries to get down the inside not able to do so stays there uh, just behind this is close fighting uh, between these drivers it's allowing peschel and cosmo to break away at the front here Werrell is becoming a rolling roadblock at this point here now because Panetta has closed in as well. Now you've got two CRGs right behind there. Dubnitsky and Panetta. Ramakas is just behind, also closing in. There is a sea of quick drives behind. Eichmanns is there. School enough. Tiziana Monza uh, there as well. And Guillaume Buzar. Lewis Werrell is going to have the longest oh. race of his life if he stays in this position like he is. Well, there was a little bit of a nudge uh, coming to uh, turn number five and six over there for uh, the uh, Prama Racing Machine. I'm afraid Salim Hanna uh, being not in the best of positions against uh, Lewis Werrell and Mark Nubdinsky with uh, Werrell, who uh, won last year, did wonders last year as well in the uh, overall championship of things. 
as a run inside goes Mark Dominski on the young British men. Well done to Dominski as in the meantime, there's a switch for the lead with Juric uh, Basel getting ahead of David Kosma Christopov for the uh, lead on, ten, on lap number four, that is out of 12. Here's the switch with uh, David Kosma down to P2 and uh, dropping momentum by the look of it. So Juric Basel not only took the lead, but pulls away as soon as he can. That's going to be an interesting one between the two. Mark Dudinski, in the meantime, while taking advantage on Lewis Werrell, opened the door to Salim Anna, the 288, now up into P4. Lewis Werrell down to P5 from Eggman, Ramakos, Panetta, Skulanov, Tiziano Monza after the incident in the opening lap with uh, Thibaut Ramakos' incident. So, shall we say, a slight contact, but still, he dropped a couple of places down to P10 from Guillaume Buzaras. Around the inside goes the Oakman, Eggman's from uh, out and. Uh, might have seen oh and a couple, uh, another driver from DPK in trouble the 238 I'm afraid that's school enough Gerasim Skulanov dropping as uh, one of the CRGs you might have heard that on the stream the 24 224 by the look of it if I'm not mistaken has some engine problem and Santino Panetta by the look of it that's quite unfortunate for the Greek driver we seem to be running into some engine trouble. Something is definitely going wrong with his engine. I, I think his exhaust has come off, and I stand by it to this day. I wish we didn't even have them, because that sounds fantastic. Uh, but obviously, it's not fantastic for his point of view. Is Obviously, he's going to have to bring it back into the pit lane. His race is over. There it is on your screen. It doesn't look like it's fully fallen off, but uh, yeah, it's clearly come off the, uh, the back of the engine there. Uh, and that's not what you want to see, but it's definitely something that you want to hear. Uh, unfortunately, yeah, dropping it to the back of the field. Well, Peschel leads the way then by five tenths of a second from David Koska. Dubnitsky uh, uh, there from Salim Hena. Eichmanns from Ramakers. Werrell now down into seventh place as we watch this battle here. This is Len Nice and Guillaume Buzar and the recovering 266 of Tiziano Monza, who's trying to gain back those positions there into the pit lane. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's completely detached there, hasn't it? It sounds great, but not great. Yeah, too bad for uh, Panetta in it as he was uh, pulling off a uh, strong performance in the early stages. The momentum was good for the Greek. As on the inside, two Belgians fighting them off as Thibaut Ramakus takes the third position from Ian Eggman's P5 for the uh, Vilica Racing Machine in front of the Birelart of uh, Ian Eggman's. Uh, those two know each other well as uh, they've been competing against one another in the uh, national ground as well. But Ramakos has the upper hand for now. We're back with the leaders. Jirish uh, Bezel, Kosma Christopher, Mark Dudinsky closing in on uh, the uh, Chetilaka Republic machine. What can uh, the CRG driver do in, at this stage of the race? Halfway through now into this qualifying heat. As we'll have uh, two more after that. One for the juniors and once again for the seniors. Oh, a little bit of dust uh, onto the track at turn number four. As uh, the uh, gaps have spread out a little bit, the field is uh, slightly spread out in the upper part of the uh, classification. As for now, Jirish Bezal in control mode for half of a second from Kosma Christopher. Dubinsky down in third is waiting for the right moment. Dubinsky working together with Kosma Christopher. They both know that uh, Jirish Bezal, by the look of it, is still up for grab. So nothing is done yet when it comes to the fight for the victory. Let's have a look at the uh, respective lap times, shall we, as they come across just in front of us. Uh, the leader just lapped in uh, 50.4 and uh, pretty much the same for Dublinski and 50.5 for Kosma Christopher in second. So as for now, still very much close between those three. But Thibaut Ramakers has just picked up the pace with the fastest lap in this race so far, 50.0. Trying to get close to Salim Hanna, as you can see on the uh, corner of your picture with uh, Salim in the uh, Prima red color. Ramakers down in P5. and. Uh, Dropping actually, Ian Eggman further back behind in P6 from Werrell, Ruben, Arocha, and uh, Len Nays uh, running at the top then. Yes, indeed. Well, race getting on now. We're on uh, lap eight. We'll be going on to lap nine in just a moment. We'll keep an eye on this battle for second place. Uh, Eichmanns and Werrell are pretty close as well, battling away. Werrell, who just lost out to uh, Eichmanns, has not dropped off the back of him. Uh, they are closing in on each other as they head in towards turn number one. Off camera, he has just gone for the move as well, just behind. Uh, as we keep an eye on this battle here for P2. Uh, Dubnitsky still not able to get the legs on David Cosma at this moment. Ramakas again with the fastest lap of the race is really closing in on Silimana. Yeah, you can see that battle happening just behind this one. Oh, now it's getting close. Now Dubnitsky is on that rear bumper. Is he close enough for a move here? Yes, he is. Down the inside. Really closed in, under braking there through turns five and six, uh, using that slipstream down the back straight, that 170-meter back straight. Get a good kick out of that uh, turn four hairpin as well. 
as uh, now they head down through turns 12 and into the final turn is Dubnitsky now who's on the charge towards Jinji Peschel but that gap is now nine tenths of a second that's a lot of time he's got to try and close up that was a very nice late move from Magdubinsky, that's for sure, as uh, Thomas Kinsey in the meantime picked up a warning flag. Thomas Kinsey, the Frenchman, who is uh, currently uh, further back in the classification, I'm afraid for him. Uh, where is he actually, Thomas Kinsey? Yeah, down P20, I found him. Warning flag for him. Uh, Thibaut Ramaker is another fast stuff in the bag, and you can see that he's working towards Salim Hanna, lap by lap. He still has a bit of time on his hands, a young Belgian driver, to try to uh, make a difference in this race. Uh, Salim Hanna, in the meantime, is getting close to uh, David Kosma. So that's going to be interesting for both Salim and uh, Thibaut Ramakers in that case. Because uh, the drivers in front of them are still quite close together. Not so much for uh, Werrell and Ian Aikmans. So briefly that Ian climbed 10 places from 16 to be uh, 6 at the moment. And the 266, two drivers coming together by the look of it with one Tony Kart and one CRG driver. That's Guillaume Bazaar that oh. you can certainly see walking away. And that stricken car in the background with Tiziano Monza's Tony Kart. So uh, it's not gone well at all for those two. And that, uh, like you say, yeah, is at turn number one. And it looks to me like the tyre barrier has moved there as well. So they've gone into that barrier at some speed. and. You can see them having a, a quick chat with each other. And there, I think, international signal of, you were, I was on the inside, you closed the gap. Here we go, though. This is Salim Hana getting down the inside of David Cosma. Uh, and that is nicely done through turn at number seven. Out of nowhere, the Prima Racing driver has closed in on the fellow Car Republic chassis driver. But he goes back down the inside. And through goes Timo Ramakas as well. Gaining one, losing two on this final lap of the race we go. And what a move that was from David Kosma. We didn't see this coming. Certainly Salim Hanna, the first one, didn't see that coming either because there was pretty much no space at all. But he just kicked that door right open. So lucky for both, no contact whatsoever. But Salim Hanna had no other choice to get out of the way. And Thibaut Ramakos was there for the taking as well. So those two, same livery, different team though, even though with the support of the Car Republic factory. But let's see how this will play out because Ramakers is on a much stronger pace by the look of it. Trying to go around the inside is no space at all for the Belgian. As uh, David Kosma is going to try every trick of the book to try to hold on to that position. Could Salim Hanna get his revenge in turn number 12? As around the inside, no space once again for Ramakers to make a difference. And could be some contact. He's going defensive, Ramakers. Does he have a problem on the exit of the turn? He was on a different pace. He's still able to hold on to that position. But for a brief moment, I felt like. Maybe he was uh, running a bit slow. Was he maybe uh, a little bit uh, uncomfortable with uh, David Kosma just in front of him? Remains to be seen. But uh, he was able to hold on to that place. But Salim Hanna was very close for less than a tenth of a second onto the line. In the meantime, Jadrus Pezel was able to hold on to that first place for a full second in front of Magnum Linsky. First win of the weekend for Jadrus Pezel after a second and an eighth place yesterday in his previous qualifying heat so well done to him and the driver from uh, Czech Republic and ASD Monster K the factory team one full second in front of Mike Dundinsky who uh, finished where he started uh, David Kosma Christopher won't be too happy after losing that one since he started from pole position uh, P3 though for him in front of Ramakus and Salim Hanna as the drivers make their way uh, back to the uh, pits back to the scrutinizing area a couple of drivers that we've lost through that uh, qualifying heat A versus D. Here's the classification in full. Dijon Spezel, first win of the weekend for the Czech driver from Dan Magnubinski, David Kosma, Tibor Ramakos, Salim Hanna, Lewis Werrell, Ian Ekman, 10 places gained up to 7th from uh, Mace Oben, 10 places gained for him or the Dutchman up to P8 from Murilo de Rocha, Miguel Costa, Louis Iglesias doing a great job as well with 11 positions to recover up to P11. 12th place and 12 positions gained as well for Guy Albach for the back in 12. 13th place and a good recovery effort as well for Alphonse Mittinen from Davide Botaro, Fionn McCoughlin, all the way down to P15. Certainly not a result he had, he had been expecting, the VDK driver who is in contention for the championship title. For the back, we have Len Nace, Elliot Kaczynski, Tom McKinsey, Aaron Kivilo, Blake Nash, and Ivo Vesterda, the last one coming across the checkered flag. A couple of drivers that we lost, as you see, Chidris Pezel in conversation with his mechanic after his strongest result so far. First P1 for him. A couple of drivers that we lost, and let's see how this all play out. At the first start of the, of the race, and a good getaway for David Kosma on the way to turn number one, under the pressure of uh, Mark Dudinsky, with uh, 
Thibaut Ramaker as well on the inside, finding his way through. Salim Hanna getting ahead of the Belgian. And a little bit of a contact, you can see Tidiano Manza as well. But uh, we had trouble early on for Kian Fadin, who is a Solicard machine, uh, refused to go any further that uh, turn, the outside of turn number one. Early DNF, unfortunately, for Kian Fadin from Switzerland. Unfortunate uh, turn of event for uh, the young Sodicard uh, driver. Then the contact in the opening lap around the inside. Tidiano Manza being uh, slightly pushed out of the way by Thibaut Ramakus. Making his way past in turn number 12. Ian Ekmans as well, uh, getting himself into that open door. He was uh, patterning along left and right with uh, the good recovery of Matt Dundinski after dropping some momentum in front of Salim Hanna. Around the inside, he went uh, Dundinski on the Forza racing machine of Lewis World. He was in the upper part of the classification after before dropping a bit of momentum as uh, the Oakman, Ekmans from Birelart, uh, did the same on uh, the 220 of Lewis World, opening the door to. Uh, Thibaut Ramaker is uh, some trouble as well for the 238 of uh, DPK. This was Jerozim Skulanov. This race coming to an end as run inside a beautiful overtaking by uh, Thibaut Ramaker. Skulanov out of this race, unfortunately, joining the likes of uh, Kian Fadin as well as Santino Panetta, Guillaume Buzarti, the Monza as well, out of contention. The two Belgians battling along halfway through. Thibaut Ramaker is getting ahead of uh, Ian Aikmans, as so was doing the 232 of Mark Nudinski on David Kosma, he was for second place. Something went wrong, unfortunately, in turn number one between uh, Guillaume Buzar and Tiziano Monza. Monza after that contact with Ramakus. So his race coming to an early end, two, less than two laps before the checkered flag. And Guillaume Buzar, that's a second DNF for the driver from Luxembourg, unfortunately. In the meantime, Salim Hanna and David Kosma in strong explanation, run inside a slight touch it was well made by David Kosma, allowing Ramakos in, and Salim Hanna was the biggest victim, losing two positions outside of turn number 12. He would make it up into P5 in the end, with Jedrish Pezel taking his first win of the weekend for the Monster K factory team from Mark Dubinsky and David Kosma at the end of this race. Strong performance, that's for sure, for Jedrish Pezel as we wait for the next race. Coming up in less than three minutes' time, the OK Junior B versus E qualifying here. This will be the penultimate race of this morning. The senior class coming up after that for eight number 20. Uh, same group, B versus E, to run things up for this morning. Here we go for the next uh, starting grid, shall we? William Kaleha will be starting from uh, the first position, pole position for the uh, Parolin driver, who was one of the fastest in yesterday's uh, qualifying effort. William Kaleja, and then that's interesting, he just put new uh, tires on the uh, left side by the look of it. So William Kaleja is in need of uh, strong results. Uh, let's see what he can do, and we caught up with him yesterday. Let's hear from William Kaleja. William Kaleja, well done to you. It was a strong job in qualifying. The first step is done. What are your thoughts? Well, I was not expecting this. I mean, we had a good slipstream behind the Saudi car, and... Um, I was expecting to be somewhere in the top five, but um, when I came in, I was not sh unsure, and then I realized I was pole position, and the guy told me, and I'm very surprised by this result. Um, and it was a, the car felt really good, um, the engine also as well felt really good. Uh, so, quality is done, let's see how we can go through the heats. I'm sure the confidence is on a high, thanks to that performance. On a new track though, what are your thoughts on this uh, layout? Any opportunities you might have seen? I, I really like this layout. Um, the, overall, the truck is pretty good. Um, I like how it flows, pretty similar to Valencia. Um, and just the, the surface as well, really good. Yeah. Fantastic. Best of luck to you. Thank you. William Kaleja, well done to you. It was a strong job in qualifying. The first step is done. What are your thoughts? Well, well, good to hear there from William Kalija, who starts this one on the front. And uh, like you alluded to there, has deployed a fresh set of tyres. And the same could be said for a lot of other people choosing to deploy a new set of tyres in this stage of the weekend. And um, yeah, as you were saying it, there was a bit of confusion, I think, in your voice on that one, thinking, God, why has he gone so early for a fresh set of tyres? And I mean, well, we are past the halfway point on this one. And, you know, if some drivers have had to use these tires a little bit more, if you think for William Kalija, in his point of view, he may have had to. You know, he's had a second, he's had a third. Um, he's had a 12th, sorry, I should say, as well. Um, but uh, again, you know, earlier on, it was a tough old race as well. So, you know, I think now is probably the right time. And crucially, 
with everyone else not deploying them, he can take full advantage of using this. You know, if you leave it too late, everyone deploys it on the last race of the day. And then all of a sudden, everyone around you is on the same situation as you, and you don't gain anything. The only downside is now he's deployed them. If later on everyone around him deploys them, then they've got to deal with the whole pack all with a fresher set of tyres on his wagon. Uh, well, there we go. We'll have to wait and see what happens for that one, uh, as it is the penultimate race uh, for this uh, two groups. Uh, let's see through the full starting lineup then. It's William Kalija and Drizan Langendonk on the front row of the grid. Oh, that's going to be a good one. Uh, Zhang Jose and Roman Kamyab go from row number two. Daniel Kelleher and Kip Belowski go from row three from Archie Lovett and uh, Illy Christen on row four. Dean Hugendorn and Michael McGow on row five. Boris Lysen and Bruno Grieg ran out row number six from Francois Kerdel and Oliver Kinmark on row seven. It's Amin Kari Osman and Jakob Martinese on row number eight. Row number nine, Kanish Rao as well as Makar Savelev, Benjamin Manak and Henri Domain on row 10. Row 11, Sebastian Minz and Augusto Gnolo. Row 12, Mariano Lopez and Ella Akinen. Row 13, Alexander Usnim and Meryl Peldes. Luke Kondo and Tobias Senzi. Row 15, Marianetto and Efim Dernov, Matteo Rivals and Marco Gatz the, uh, on row 16, 32 drivers and uh, a couple of them at the back end of the grid with fresh set of tyres, half a set of new rubber. So William Kaleja is not the only one. You have the likes of uh, Meryl uh, Paldes as well as Alexander Unseen, Mariano Lopez, uh, Luke Onber as well as for the back Matteo Rivals and Ella Hakinen has decided to put on uh, fresh rubber for this race. But it's certainly unusual to see uh, a Paul Sutton, a qualifying head at this stage, deciding to go for uh, fresher rubber. If you can make those tires last as long as possible and still extract the performance, uh, the better for you and wait maybe for the superheat to have that extra bit of, uh, of pace, even though towards the end of a qualifying heat day like today, it's not unusual to see uh, the contenders trying on this half a set to uh, maybe extract that yeah. little uh, extra performance and maybe gain the result they had been expecting. Uh, talking about Hakkinen, I've been told, but don't tell no one, that uh, is, uh, her famous father is around this weekend as well. I've been told by some of my uh, love, little friends at VDK Racing. Uh, Mr. Mika Hakkinen, of course, following close the uh, performance and progress of his uh, daughter, who did uh, some uh, wonderful work not so long ago in the academy program that you uh, uh, call down, my dear Anthony, in Cremona. Yes, indeed. Yeah, great results. Uh, winning the final uh, as well in the second final on day two uh, in Cremona did Ella Hakkinen. So, uh, yeah, really strong peddler uh, starting this one. Right then, into the tram lines we go. Kalija Van Langendonk likes to go green, and it's down in towards turn one. And it's not the best start from Van Langendonk. He's going to try and outbreak himself now. Uh, through turn one, he has to settle for P3 as he slots back in. Now, down the inside, I thought there was going to be a move there from Zhang Jose. He thinks against it. He stays there in P2, and it's a great start from Kalija, who now starts to break away from the rest of the field. In through turn four, they go. Uh, they're three, four wide in the background. There, you can see them just coming in. Oh, a little bit of contact there is down the inside. Kibaloski looking for the move. It's not going to happen as he now tries to defend. Uh, from uh, Illy Christian, who has got up a couple of positions in that one. So good start then uh, all around as they head down in towards turn 12 for the first time. There we go again, uh, lap number one almost completed. It was a textbook uh, first lap and start for our leader, Milan Kaleja, pulling off uh, an interesting gap already, almost six tenths of a second on the Dries van Langendonk. Uh, James Jose, the Chinese driver down in third, Daniel Kelleher to 62 on your picture, Kit Belovsky. From Forza Racing around the inside on 72. Beautiful main, Roman Kamiab, 25. With that London Norris machine getting a place up into P6. Well done to Roman Kamiab. Now his next up will be further up with Daniel Kelleher. Still a relatively closed upper part of the field so far into lap number two. Driver is finding the base, finding the easiest and the most practical of racing lines into turn number eight and nine that is into the chicane. Not so much of uh, trouble for the driver so far into that she gained that very fast right and left uh, selection. But uh, in turn number 15 as well, earlier we had that big incident involving uh, Luna Flusha. Everybody okay after that, but so far so good. Kaleha still in the lead and not quite able to increase on his gap. He went down to uh, four tenths of a second on Dries van Langenonk under the pressure of uh, 
Daniel Rizet just further back. Chinese driver staying close to the Belgian as well as uh, Kipilovski. So those three might be in the right train if they're able to uh, work with one another, support each other to uh, try to decrease that gap on Kaleja. And I'm afraid that uh, for the Australian lead, he might find himself into a bit of trouble in a couple of seconds and minutes. Yeah, indeed. Well, there you can see Van Langendonk holding on to second place. But uh, yeah, Zhang Jose, obviously after just getting up to P2, now having to defend as Belowski goes down the inside through turn 12. Nicely done. No time wasted there. And a, a brief check over the shoulder there for Zhang Jose just to see right who's next. Uh, and he can see that it's Daniel Keller who's going to try and go down the inside through turn one. He just tries to do that first little kink in towards the corner. The gap very firmly closed there from uh, uh, Zhang Jose denying that position uh, at all. Hugendorn starting to close in now just behind as well with Lovett. Uh, as you can see, all of them just battling away for position. Now Van Langendonk is closing in on William Kalija. This will be a nice result for the both of them again, but Kit Belowski looking so strong at this part of the weekend. Yeah, definitely Kipilovsky, one of the uh, young uh, social media sensations. If you, haven't, if you haven't checked out his uh, social media activities, uh, please do, because this is quite entertaining. And uh, he keeps on proving that he's as, as skilled as a driver, as an entertainer. Kipilovsky in a P3, really stepping up his game this season with uh, the Fusion Motorsport colors. One of the new additions to the uh, FIA Garden classes this year in a Champions of the Future and in the European World Championship for Fusion Motorsport, picking up a new challenge in the junior category. And Kit Belowski, certainly one of the young standard bearers for the future. Three places gained from sixth to third, and uh, maybe some more for Kit Belowski. He keeps a close watch on uh, Dries van Lagendonk. So much dust on the uh, outside curb into uh, turn number five and six out there. You, this is a place you don't want to put your tires in, otherwise that would mean trouble. We've seen that in the past. Into the chicken once again. Kaleha finds himself uh, into a more intense pressure on his shoulders. Van Langendong, Belowski, and uh, Jen Yuzay, all three pretty much in the same picture, trying to close up as well. And there's more to come afterwards between it because uh, Daniel Kaleha, Roman Kangab are uh, close by. Archie Lova to pick up a uh, winning result earlier, but also a TNF uh, is in P7 from Ding Ongendorn, Akaogi, and Jacopo Martinez that we saw earlier uh, having a talk with the officials. So. I do hope that uh, it wasn't too severe. Oh, and a bit of a a bit of a dust on the track, and a little bit of a mistake, I'm afraid, from Kaleha. But might allow Van Langenok and the rest of the train to get close. Watch out, coming to turn number four. And this was with fresh tyres as down the inside goes Van Langenok. He retakes the lead. Boloski's going to try and go through as well. Gets denied as they go through eight and nine. Through the chicane they go, absolutely dancing through here, into the inside of turn 12. Kalija leaving the door wide open, and he doesn't just lose one, he loses three. As, Ka as Boloski, uh, Kamyab and Zhang Jose all go through. Kalija down into P5 now with that fresh set of tyres. He's really, really struggling here, and now they go three wide at the exit of turn number one. Love it goes through. Kelleher tries to go through as well. Now Hugendorn dives down the inside. Kelleher goes through. And William Kalija now is just fading. Martinese now on the attack, trying to get down the inside. Ili Christen there as well, as here comes Kambia down the inside of his teammate, not close enough, in towards turn five. And that's going to be an interesting one between the two. They have to support each other in the chase of Kitberovsky. But uh, in the meantime, William Kalija, this is the worst scenario, unfortunately, for the pole sitter on pressure set of tires, as you said. And now he won't be able to. Uh, Make it into fruition, run oh. inside again, goes Kamyab, and this time it goes through into turn number 12. Upper place for Roman Kamyab in front of his teammate. There you go, and he was gesturing to uh, Jean Rose. Stay with me, let's work together because we can still win this one if we uh, get together and keep up the pace. Of course, Jenny's driver might have uh, other plans in mind if he realized that uh, he's indeed uh, faster than Kamyab after this lap, it remains to be seen. But as we were tossing along, while well, Kipilovski took advantage to uh, build himself a bit of a gap, uh, just in the middle, in second place, as you can see the fusion driver. As uh, Archilovat might see an opportunity looming. As you can see, uh, as well, the uh, doom situation of William Kaleha started first on 12 at the moment. Certainly not the results he had, want he had wanted to pick, as Archilovat, in the meantime, has uh, been warned by the officials. And that's no good news for him, since he's uh, P5 at the moment for uh, Archilovat, the Forza racing driver. I do wonder why, but uh, we might need to see that again. Uh, 
they come again. This is lap number nine out of ten. We're getting close to a checkered flag. Dries van Langendonk in the meantime, unshaken with three tenths of a second still in front of Kipilowski. Who not only <laughs> does need to uh, get close to the Belgian as much as he can if he wants to uh, get that win, but he has to resist. And uh, going defensive by the look of it uh, from uh, Roman Kayab and Rudze just behind. Achilovat might want to get involved as well. Yeah, indeed. Well, now Boris lies in with the fastest lap of the race. Uh, 51.351. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm curious on that warning flag for uh, Archie Lovett. Now, we've not seen much of Archie Lovett throughout this race. It might have been something that was off camera that we've not seen or anything. The only thing we did see was that uh, move in towards turn one on camera. And we're going to see another move down the inside here. This time it is from Roman Kamyab and now Zhang Jose, who both get through on Kip Bolovsky. Bolovsky now down into P4 in this last lap. And the two teammates here, Kamyab and Zhang Jose, are going to go wheel to wheel for second place in this qualifying heat. Van Langendonk is clear, but can these two teammates stay calm and just finish second and third, or are they going to go and battle it out between, the cell, uh, between themselves? Yeah, they might run out of time, unfortunately. And uh, as they were making their way through Keith Belowski, there was a slight contact with the uh, front fairing, not too damaging, and, uh, fortunately, for uh, the British driver, as uh, Dries Van Langendonk, as you said, was more than happy to uh, keep up the pace and build a gap in the meantime. But uh, this will be, if it stays like that, one last kick of the throttle into the chicane. Return number 12. This will be win number three for last year's junior world champion on his way to uh, the result he had been expecting after starting from the front of the grid. This is the minimum he had been aiming at. Dries van Langenon wins in front of uh, Roman Kamyab. Keith Velovsky taking the third place from uh, Jan Wuzay. Boris Linzen picking up six places up to P5 in front of Kelleher, Drick, Jacopo Martinez, Eddie Trizan, William Kaleja, all the way down to P10, unfortunately. Well, nicely done there for Van Langendonk. That is a third qualifying heat win out of four. Uh, only that forcing place that looms over his head still puts him in a good position, though. He leads the intermediate classifications at the end of that one with 173 points from Sebastian Letamaki, who has still got another two races to do. Uh, for Van Langendonk uh, and Kalija, that uh, is their penultimate race today. They have got one more race to do later on today. Uh, and that will decide where they will start and who will get through uh, to those superheats tomorrow. Remember, uh, only 72 can go through. There was a lot more than 72 that have entered into the OK Junior category. So uh, do make sure you stay tuned for that one. Who gets through and who is eliminated? Let's have a look then at the full uh, classifications at the end of that one. Provisional, of course, Van Langendonk from Kamia, Boloski from Zhang Jose, Boris Lysen from Daniel Kelleher, Bruno Greek from Jacopo Martinezze, Eli Christian from William Kalija, unfortunately dropped down to P10 at that one. Uh, Henry Domain from Archie Lovett, Augustus Toniolo and Oliver Kinmark, and Armin Carrier Osman rounding out the top 15. 60th place, we do have uh, François Kerdol from uh, FM Derunov, 13 places gain and uh, the uh, most recovered for, uh, in the entire field for FM uh, Durinov uh, with his powering machine. Uh, is from uh, Makar Savren, down in P18 from uh, Marianetto, Meryl Peldes, Le Conde, uh, Kenny Rao, Alexander Ansnim, as well as Mariano Lopez, Matteo Rivals, Marco Gernst, Tobias Chenjing, as well as Helia Akinen. A couple of drivers that we lost throughout the course of this race, uh, Sebas Amins, as well as Benjamin Manak, uh, Michael Mago, and Dean Ogadorn, uh, unfortunately for those for drivers. You can see him, Dries van Lagendorf from Forza Racing. Certainly uh, one name to keep an eye on, not for just see the, this season, but for the years to come. Certainly so. Let's have a look at the highlights then of that one. And for Van Langendonk, it wasn't the start he wanted. There you can see him on the outside in the number two. He tries to outbreak the inside line. Wasn't going to be, had to settle for P3 as he was defending from Kelleher in those early stages. Kipolovsky just in the background there as well, all trying to file their way through. That was Kelleher going defensive in the early stages that allowed Boloski to just go down the inside a little bit there through turn five. That was the gap that was amazingly left open slightly there by Zhang Jose, allowing uh, Van Langendonk to get back down the inside. The wheel-to-wheel -wheel, uh, -wheel action there with Kamyab coming through. Really impressed with Roman Kamyab in that one. That's his best result uh, of the weekend so far. Really, really strong result. This was the dying stages of the race and, the, and where uh, Kalija started to just drop back at this point. And the real shock for me is he had those fresh tyres on there as well. Yeah, unfortunately, like uh, Sebastian Pavan that we had earlier uh, due to an incident, he won't be able to uh, 
really uh, pay this sh choice off. So uh, unfortunately for him, this uh, will take him to the next race to try to uh, take advantage of those fresh arrivals. And uh, uh, from that point on, his uh, race just uh, turned into disaster all the way down to P10. But the Roman Canyon, as you said, great pace for the number 25, taking advantage on his Chinese teammate, on Kit Belovsky as well. Belovsky going wide into turn number 12 before taking advantage back on uh, Chan Yuzei towards the end of that race. The two uh, teammates of Rugby Motorsport working well together. And uh, as you can see now, Kit Belovsky taking back third place from uh, the Chinese driver. But uh, for Roman Kamiab, it was a bit too late to try to get close to Dries van Langenhoek and prevent the Belgian driver to take the uh, win number three so far for the Forza Racing uh, driver. Definitely the uh, leader of the overall classification of the junior category so far. Dries van Langenhoek, don't forget, who uh, sits currently in second place but pretty much the first one because he's on equal points to uh, Niklas Schaufle at the lead of uh, the junior category after round one. So everything still needs to be done, but Van Langenhoek so far has been uh, absolutely impeccable. Not so much can be said of Niklas Schaufle, unfortunately, as uh, he didn't uh, pick up any win uh, so far. Uh, let me double check that, but indeed, no uh, win for Niklas Schaufle so far. So he's gonna have to pick up the pace just a tiny bit for uh, the DPK driver if he wants to get close uh, from the starting position of Dries van Legendo. We're going to take a short ad break. Do not go anywhere. We'll be back in a couple of minutes' time. Racing Spirit was born out of the need to create a clothing line that could embody the passion and the experience that OMP gathered and cultivated working alongside the most successful racing teams of the last 50 years. Racing Spirit garments are made by enthusiasts for enthusiasts. They can be worn every day in leisure time, but especially on race venues. From the paddock of the hottest Formula One races to the service parks of winter rallies in all weather conditions. Racing Spirit offers a complete range of clothing and accessories for men and women, designed and developed in Italy, combining aesthetics, comfort and functionality. Because of these features, it is the brand of choice of several prestigious motorsport outfits and organizations. Racing Spirit is the meeting point between high quality and Italian style, as well as the introduction of sustainable materials and innovations, such as the use of graphene. Racing Spirit offering comes with four options cutting edge designs and customization techniques. Lifestyle is a line of garments ideal for everyday and leisure wear with refined style and innovative materials. Crew are custom garments of the highest quality that strengthen the visual identity of the team or organization. For instance, the choice of Skoda Motorsport and Dallara. Corporate is a full custom designed clothing line for sizable organizations such as Toyota Racing Development. Finally, the team wear line for maximum creative freedom uses sublimation printing technology derived from OMP's racing experience. Similarly to the other Racing Force Group brands, Racing Spirit shares the same DNA of competing to be the first and ultimately become the reference in the market. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We are one race away before the lunch break in the first half of today for Champions of the Future round two here in France. The Val d'Argentan circuit in, well, I'd say the middle of France. So we're not too far away from the Atlantic Ocean on the, uh, the west coast of France, but uh, we're kind of in the middle a little bit. And I've got to say, weather here, absolutely superb. It is a lovely blue sky. Air temperature is around 19 degrees. The sun is shining and the grandstand uh, somewhat filling up as well. I'm, I'm going to say at one point today, I'm going to really try and see if we can get like a Mexican wave going in that grandstand all from one side straight away to the other. I don't know. We're not too sure. Uh, well, here we go then with the uh, next race. There you can see our man Lewis Francis from Australia starting this one on on pole position. Uh, second fastest in overall qualifying uh, yesterday. We'll have Jimmy Elias alongside uh, Francis. Unfortunately, uh, earlier on, he did take a race win, but on the restart, I believe got a five second time penalty. So that's not gone all of his way. We did see that investigation flag that came out. That did come, uh, it was for just hitting that low pedal a little bit too much on that restart. So a uh, big shame there, but he's focused, ready to go for this one. Jimmy Elias starting uh, alongside. 
uh, in the 253 for this race. Uh, really curious to see what Jimmy can do. Again, good races, good results. Again, just needs to keep up this momentum uh, into the second half of today. Uh, he needs a better result indeed uh, from his, the race before where he finished only P11 after turning down the order. So Jimmy Elias certainly willing to improve on his performance. You might have heard a whistle. The green flag is waving as well. This is a signal for the drivers to make their way onto the track for the last time this morning before uh, three quarter of an hour of uh, lunch time. After that, stay with us. We will be back at uh, five past two local time for 10 more races to go through. And at the end of those qualifying heats, a first classification will be established for the weekend and with points awarded for the championship. Let's take you through the starting lineup then for this one. Luis Francis and Jimmy Helias on row number one. Gabriel Gomez and Noah Wolf on row two. Emilio Coivisto and Kai Rillart round out the top six on row three with Michael Adir and Dmitry Matviev on the fourth row of the grid. Dominic Simic and Leon Brunner round out the top ten on row five with Vivek Kanthan and Jakob Mikalev on row number six. Then we have row number seven, George Avramides, as well as Anatoly Kavalkin. Row number eight, uh, Marty Rittenen and Sidanos uh, Kolovos. Andy Kansani, David Walter, row nine. Row ten, Mike Pagala and Hugo Marti. Row 11, Aaron Garcia and uh, Brody Norris. And we have Bernardo Bernaldi, as well as Peter Still on row 12. Row 13, Luis Castellini and Jensen Graham. We have a couple of drivers at the back end of the grid putting on a new uh, set of tires, half a set of tires, as always. One and a half allowed from qualifying to the superheat and a pressure set for the finals. Rui Castellini, Bernardo Bernaldi, and Jensen Graham were the three drivers uh, deciding to uh, put half of a fresher set on the left side for the three of them. That's going to be interesting. Let's see if this choice will pay off. A few drivers have decided to go early on a fresher set of tires. Uh, in the lead, William Carlier was the last one, Sebastian Bavan another one. Unfortunately for both of them, it didn't come to fruition, and there's always a risk, as we discussed, about you know getting uh, too soon on this uh, fresher rubber. This might help, this might not, depending on what happens for you in the course of the race. Uh, Lewis Francis picking up, uh, indeed, a penalty in his previous race. Still one of the strongest uh, in the class so far, with uh, one win so far. He might be willing to uh, take another strong results at the end, but Jimmy Elias is in need, certainly, of a recovery. And uh, watch out for Gabriel Gomez, who will be just behind the pole sitter. Lewis Francis on the way to turn number one. Yes, indeed. Well, I do hope at some point we don't have a race between Lewis Francis and Joe Turney at the front of the grid, because I've got to say, they don't half look very similar uh, out there. Very similar helmet design and, uh, of course, running both with the Cart Republic factory team. So they do look very similar out there. But this time around, it is Francis and Elias on the front row. We are green and racing down into towards turn number one. Wolf again sweeping to the inside. Watch him there. He's in P3. Can he hold on to P3 as they make their way round turn number one? Yes, he can is the answer. Great start to his race. There, Emily could Visto on the outside. You saw him have the huge accident earlier on in his race in towards turn 13. It's a great start for him this time as he sweeps around the outside of turn number three. In towards turn four they go. It's a little bit slow in the background. There's a yellow flag. Two cuts off in the background. We'll find out who they are. There you can see it, it is the 282 of the Paralin. It's the 299 uh, there. That is uh, Brody Norris, one of them. And the 289 as well is another one that I'll try to figure out who that is a bit later. Uh, but the race continues, and it's a great start from Francis. Wolf all over the curbs into P3, and now in towards P2. Uh, could it have been maybe uh, Jason Graham from Parolin who was involved? We get back to that, but running inside, Gabriel Gomez in turn number 13, a little bit wide. Uh, the uh, Brazilian driver is able to hold on to that line just in front of Noah Wolf. Wolf is not quite able to come to attack on the CRG driver. Up into second place. That was a beautiful tussle between the two. Great defensive Noah Wolf from Jimmy Elias once again. And as early as lap number two out of 12, those three need to work together because in the meantime, Lewis Francis couldn't ask for more. He just built up his gap 1.2 seconds in just the one lap completed as Gomez is now focusing on chasing the leader while resisting to Noah Wolf and Jimmy Elias. All three pretty much on their own with uh, either just uh, further back Michael Eide who went past uh, Emilio Visto for P5. Covisto will drop a little bit of momentum as well. He's down to P7 with Kai Renartz, uh, the uh, Sotica driver, gaining an advantage as well up to P6. And we have uh, Simic, Kalan, and Anatoly Kavalkin, former junior European champion, down in P10. Well, drivers who lost a few positions. Dimitri Matviv is one of them. Seven places dropped uh, down to P15. And the uh, two drivers coming together on the opening lap confirmation of uh, the DNF for Jensen Graham. 
and the Brody Norris, unfortunately. Yeah, big shame for those two, unfortunately, out to this one on the opening lap of the race. Uh, well, everything seems to have calmed down now as we go on to lap number three. And Francis, like I say, look at that gap, 1.1 seconds. We've not seen big gaps at the front, have we, all the way throughout these? There's been one or two, but it's not been a, a consistent feature uh, of this track. The racing's always been close at the front of the field. And, uh, for right now, well, Gomez not able to close on that gap. We'll keep an eye on it. Let's see what it is. It's 1.1 right now. They'll cross the line, exit out of turn 13. Francis crosses the line. It's 1.2. So it is extending a little bit. So Francis has the pace. On board here with Kai Rillart. This is the, uh, the second lap of the race, I believe. Uh, and you can just see there, just down the inside, very close action here. Wheel to wheel stuff. Brilliant to see the live on board back here in France. Uh, the RGMC team in the background working super, super hard over the last couple of weeks. Uh, back here with the live pictures, Michael Adir with the fastest lap of the race. And there, Noah Wolf again on the pace. It looks quick, it looks fast, but it just, it seems to be, it, it feels like it's right on the limit there, doesn't it? Yeah, definitely so. And uh, let's see if he's going to be able to catch up with uh, the uh, leaders. Not the case at the moment. We're going to have a look at the uh, respective lap times, two tenths of a second between uh, the two drivers on your picture, and we're going to go Noah Wolf so as they come across the leader first and the fastest lap in the race at 50.2 for Larry Francis. Again, extending his gap to 1.5 seconds. Gomez and Wolf battering along. And, oh dear. Uh, ooh, what just happened there? Another coming together, unfortunately, between one of the Paulins. Again, a Paulin driver involved and one of the Tony Cup machine. Could it, it be George? Yes, Xavier Avrami, this is Tony Cavalkin by the look of it. No, uh, no it's Vivek Canthan yeah. and David Volta, sorry, who've oh, gone off the track. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, Vivek Canthan was the Paralin driver, unfortunately, who's out of this one. And David Volta, again, another retirement. We saw him have a collision with his fellow teammate, Sebastian Pavan, earlier on, didn't we? And again, he's out uh, once more in this one. Uh, that is a big disaster for David Rolta. Uh, he was looking so quick. He was so quick at Valencia as well. He was right on it. And uh, yeah, that is a big, big shame. And that looks to me like that's at the exit at turn 12. And uh, confirmation that uh, Javier Ramirez and Natalie Cavalcan still very much with us in eight and nine. But uh, from the same teams in the same order as the conclusion. But it, it is indeed Vivian Kahan and David Walter, another TNF for the uh, driver from Tony Card. Certainly not his day so far in Val d'Argenton. In the meantime, someone is having a pretty good day so far is Lewis Francis, 1.6 seconds in front of Gabriel Gomez. So at this time of the race, almost halfway through, well, Lewis Francis can allow himself to, uh, I would not say go relax entirely because uh, Gomez, Wolf and Helias have uh, other ideas in mind and uh, the chase is on pretty much, but uh, you can see it coming. He still needs to lap quite efficiently, of course. He doesn't want to see uh, Gabriel Gomez uh, get back in his mirrors towards the uh, later stages of that race. And in the meantime, at the back as well, we have uh, Eider, Michael Eider in P5, coming ahead uh, and uh, distancing Kai Rillartz on board with uh, the Belgian driver and the French license. Kai Rillartz uh, still in P6 where he started this race. Fantastic to have uh, this view on board, uh, the uh, Sodica driver who is having plans to uh, leave us and to go from uh, karting to car racing uh, in the uh, next uh, couple of months. You might hear more about Kajelat's plans in uh, the uh, coming weeks, I'm sure. But uh, Kajelat has been doing wonders for the past few years in uh, different uh, categories all over Europe. He used to be uh, competing, he had this big shot actually in the CIK classes with the Sodica factory. Just to uh, put his trust in another famous karting factory, the Sodica. And uh, you could see him clipping the curb a little bit in the in the, uh, the chicane, still stays in P6. Yeah, that shot there as well, you watch it and you were seeing how little motion and movement in the steering wheel you really have to put in here. This is a tight, twisty technical circuit with some fast open swoopers as well. You saw him there, barely moving it a millimetre here and there. That chassis just set up to just dance around these corners. Uh, Real Arts looking uh, really, really strong out there, currently in P6. Uh, back here, uh, Aaron Garcia, uh, currently, uh, well, he's the fastest driver out on circuit and he is uh, dancing through the field as well. Currently in P10, he has gained 11 positions in this race. Garcia having an absolutely superb one, like the quickest times as well. Really looking strong on that DPK. Yeah, definitely so for uh, the DPK driver 296. As uh, we're back here with the CRGs of Gabriel Gomez being chased by uh, Noah Wolf, still second and third. And uh, 
You can feel that this is the last race of uh, the first part of the day. Lunchtime is ahead of us, and David Walter, who uh, was forced to retire after an incident with Vivek Hahn, under investigation, I mean, a warning flag, shall I say, uh, from the official for David Walter, whose day is going from uh, bad to even worse, unfortunately. But uh, yeah, lunchtime is looming, and for summer drivers, they're like, you know, the last race of the morning. Let's try to uh, see a checker flag in one piece, uh, back the result in, have a break, have a breather, and then uh, back for more this afternoon. Irish Francis has just extended his gap to almost two seconds now from uh, Gabriel Gomez. Now, Wolf still close to the Brazilian. And uh, the close watch of G. Elias from uh, Victory Lane. Michael Eider uh, a little bit on his own over there in P5. In the top 10, that hasn't changed that much at the moment. We have to go back uh, to go further down into the classification to uh, check for further recoveries with uh, Mike Pajala up to P12. Seven places gained for the uh, driver from Cotola Sports. Six places gained for Luis Castellini, uh, the uh, driver for Charles Leclerc Racing Team with the Pirelli machine in P15, up 10 places. And a uh, couple of strong efforts as well. Aaron Garcia, as you saw, 11 places were collected. Up to P10 for the uh, TPK uh, driver, just behind Anatoly Kamalkin for eight tenths of a second at the moment. Uh, dying stages of the race. I'm going to keep a close eye on the driver in P4, Jimmy Elias, who is looking very strong. Here's your race leader at the moment. And we've not spoken about much. Lewis Francis uh, breaking away. The gap now over two seconds, 2.1 seconds now. Uh, that gap as he tries to break away from the rest of the field, continuing to put in those quick times after quick times. Again, not deploying the fresh set of tyres yet. He's still on his original set, and they are looking uh, really good right now. Jimmy Elias, though, who is behind Noah Wolf. Wolf is not closing in on Gomez, but Elias is closing in on Wolf. There you can see visually the gap coming down as they go through turn number seven. They do have to be careful, though. Any move that they might uh, consi uh, consider pulling off, Michael Adir, just behind, will be ready to pick up the pieces, uh, I can imagine, uh, through turn 12. We go then, as we go on to, uh, I believe, the penultimate lap of the race. No, the final lap of the race. Uh, we do go through. Here's some action further behind. This is Kai Rilax and Emilio Coivisto. Absolutely bumper to bumper. That's the battle for P6. And let's see what Covisto can do into that last lap. They're close to get outside of turn number one. Kai Rilax having to go defensive. He's shutting the door into uh, turn number three. Oh, that's going to be a difficult lap, I'm afraid, for Kai Rilax going around the outside. He's defensive, defending, going left and right. Watch out not to uh, move too much on the racing line. But the uh, Falcon driver just behind, keeping up a good momentum into turn number five and six. Watch out for the uh, dust on the curb. One of these hardest spots for overtaking into turn number seven, that is on the uh, right, left of nine, the chicane. Down number 12 might be the latest chance on this lap for Covisto, <laughs> and he's not happy at all, as you could see. In the meantime, Luis Francis picking up another win this weekend for the car Republic driver in control mode until the end in front of Gabriel Gomez for two full seconds. Garwell picking up third place, Jimmy Elias, Michael Eider in P5, and Kai Rilatz was able to hold on to that uh, sixth position or well, just one-tenth of a second on Emily Covisto. I'm not too sure those two will exchange nice words once back in the Parc Fermé because the Falcon driver was definitely not happy about the defensive driving of Kai Rilatz. Who could blame him? This is the last lap of the race. He wants to hold on to that position and take the points with it. And he's going defensive in the last, uh, the last two corners. That's the way to do it. But Covisto, certainly a good pace. It's good to see him back in charge and back in good, good contention after his early uh, big incident with uh, Luna Flusha in the first qualifying heat of the day, but uh, certainly decided to uh, take his revenge and picking up the results. Yeah, not lost his racing spirit after that incident. Uh, well, drivers will make their way back into Park Ferme. Let's uh, go through the full standings at the end of that one. Uh, it certainly changes the intermediate classification. Gomez would lead those, of course, but there are still more races to go. Uh, with 188 points from Lewis Francis. Wolf from Helias uh, up there. But remember, Drummond on the maximum 150 points. He's yet to go out for his last couple of races. Lewis Francis then takes the win from Gabriel Gomez. Noah Wolf from Jimmy Elias. Michael Adir from Kai Rillart. Emilio Coivisto from Javier Ramirez. Anatoly Kavalkin from Ara Garcia. Martin Ritterin from Mike Parjala. Uh, Hugo Matti from uh, Dmitry Matviev and Louis Castellini rounds out the top 15. Biggest mover, Aaron Garcia. 11 places gained. Superb race. P16, we do have Andy Gansani in front of uh, Peter Stiller, Jakob uh, Mikalev, uh, as well as uh, Leon Brunner in P19, P20 for Stylianos uh, Kolovos, uh, Bernardo Bernaldi, 
And uh, Dominic Simic running up the top 22 positions with a couple of drivers missing. Jensen Graham and Brody Norris coming together. David Walter and Viveka Hahn, another contact between those two, missing out on that last qualifying heat of the morning. Lewis Francis, another race win in the bag for the current public driver, who uh, can be happy as well as his mechanic. Uh, Stay with us as we will be back, of course, this afternoon with more live interviews from the drivers themselves. Here's a replay about how things played out in this last race of the morning with a good start from pole position, of course, into turn number one from the uh, number 20. Uh, the Lewis Francis, of course, your leader on board with Kai Rilartz from Sodicard as he was starting P6 on the grid on the way to turn number one. Let's see how things went into turn number one. He was pushed a little bit on the outside line as you do can see him with the Sodicard machine trying to make his way out, clipping the curb quite aggressively. Uh, Kai Rilatz in Oh, actually, the, the two were with uh, Savalisto, actually. Uh, sorry, uh, Covisto, Emily Covisto. The two were already side by side. The first coming together into the race between Jensen Graham and uh, Brody Norris, unfortunately, who would no longer be part of this race. Yeah, that was a big shame in the opening stages there. That was the uh, lovely battles that we were seeing at the start. Uh, Koi Visto and uh, Rilatz. And well, Rilatz already, you know, hand up in the air, uh, unhappy uh, at the start of that one. So maybe a feud between the two of them in the early stages of that race. There you could see. Uh, the battle's happening thick and fast. Michael Adir just sending it down the inside, trying to get it done. That was the moment where, well, well yeah, thumbs up there from Vivek Canthan, I'm thinking, not of the uh, the nice kind there uh, towards David Volta. Not happy with that incident. Uh, rest of the race carried on, and the race did finish with Lewis Francis on the top spot there. Another race win, one that he will, I'm sure, definitely keep this time around. No uh, um, investigation flags out this time around for him. So that ends the first half of the day. In about 53 minutes time, we are back with the second half of the day and we are back with the juniors qualifying heat 11, which is heat 21 of the weekend. It'll be groups D and F. Then it will be groups A and C, D and E, A and F, and then B and C to round out the day. And we will find out who will be starting where for the super heats and who will be going home early and who will be staying on to those super heats and finals. Myself, Anthony Jordan and Guillaume Alvarez will be back in an hour's time with part two of day one.
Well, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to round two of the Champions of the Future here live in France at the Val d'Argenton kart track. Uh, myself, Anthony Jordan, and Guillaume Alvarez in the commentary box. That is the second half of the day that is upon us. We have already had eight qualifying heats this morning, plus the 12 that we had yesterday, uh, giving us our last 10 qualifying heats of the day coming up. Kickstarting with the OK Junior qualifying heat at D versus F. Devin Waltz and Casper Rappold starting on the front row for this one. And uh, for the American fans who are watching uh, from around the world, Devin Waltz took a race win in his previous race. A superb drive from him. Uh, a third and a sixth in his previous races as well. So looking on fine form uh, going into today as well. Kasper Reipold, who starts alongside the Polish driver, also having a relatively decent date, uh, two third places and a fourth place, looking very strong uh, throughout uh, the qualifying heat so far today. As there you can see the one minute board going up in the air. Uh, there you can see the hardworking marshals that are out in the circuit. They've had a nice long break, well-deserved break. The same as all of the uh, staff around here at the Val d'Argenton circuit. Uh, we could not go racing without uh, the Orange Army here at the track. And uh, we do thank them for their hard work out on circuit. Uh, and the same with, of course, the camera crews and all the medical crews and fire crews as well. And everyone watching from around the circuit. Uh, Guillaume. Uh, there we see the live pictures of Casper Reipold. Uh, brilliant start for him. Uh, it's been a tough weekend, though. Everyone has been on a fast level here. It's been a chopping and changing one. It has been indeed. Uh, welcome along once again, ladies and gentlemen. Bienvenue à toutes et tous on the Val d'Argenton. And the sun is once again shining for a busy afternoon of racing. We had eight qualifying heats this morning, ten to go this afternoon. And by the end of today, Friday, we will have a first classification established with a couple of points uh, rewarding the drivers for the overall classification. Tomorrow, we'll have the super heat and the finals for round two of Champions of the Future. Here we go again with the first of 10 races this afternoon. The level is as high as you can expect from what are the best karting drivers in the single speed uh, categories that you can have in both the junior and the OK class. 173 of them this weekend. Let's go to the grid. Let's do that indeed. Devin Waltz and Casper Reipold start on the front row. Nicholas Schaufler and Carrier Fairhand on row two. Matt Corby and Rocco Coronel go from row three with Scott Marsh and Bosco Adias on row four. Vladimir Ivanikov and Louis Cochet round out row number five and the top ten from Jean Matteo Rousseau and Jarrett Clark on row six. Remy Samchek and Arthur Huang round out row number seven with Georgi Zazov and Paul Andriotis on row number eight. Row number nine, we have Ariane Kraling and Ethan Lennon followed by Florenta Atemer. Noah Albaglin, as well as uh, Manuel Miguez Gayoso and Oliver Rasmussen on row 11. Row 12, Mark Brovko and uh, Yadrake de Joja. Apo Timonen and JC Phillips on row 13. Row 14, Marcel Zespo and Thomas Gender. Alexander Alström and Drew Wolves on row 15. And the grid concluded by Amir Zabirov. Uh, we are on board here with uh, Niklas Schaupler, the uh, young standard bearer from TPK Racing. One of the uh, most impressive talents of the past few years, doing wonders uh, since the start of the season. He picked up uh, two, six, and a third place so far in his qualifying heat and is one of the drivers in contention for this year's title on equal points, would you believe, uh, with Dries van Lagendonk in the class after the opening round in uh, Valencia a couple of weeks ago. So it's uh, all there for the taking for Niklas Schaufler, even though. Dries van Langenhoek, his closest rival as we speak for the title, picked up three wins. It's yet to be done for Niklas Schaufler, but once again he finds himself in a very interesting position, third on the grid, on the inside, just behind the pole sitter, Devin Walsh. Certainly so. Van Langenhoek not having the uh, best of perfect weekend. Still three race wins, like you alluded to there, but yeah, like you say, that P14 finish uh, is hanging over him like a dark cloud going into this weekend. So. Uh, hopefully uh, he can recover from that one. Like you say, though, he is leading the intermediate classifications at the moment. Uh, right then, drivers heading down into the final corner. It's nice and controlled at the front. Devon Volts on the inside. Reipold on the outside. Into the tram lines we go. It looks like a good start, and it is a good start. We are away and racing as they head down in towards turn number one. Great start for Devon Waltz. Holds on to the race lead as they all go through turn one. Nice and cleanly somewhat. There's a spin in the background, two spins in the background, and it's Rocco Coronel who has to rejoin onto the circuit there's about five six seven cuts off the track and it all started nearer the front there i think with louis cochet there you can see cochet uh, stuck with the 87 of georgie zazov uh, just ahead as well there was a spin further back uh, but i think they managed to all get restarted as well those two looking to be out of this race now 
Yeah, quite unfortunately for those two drivers. In the meantime, you can see Niklas Schraufler with uh, the DPK machine in the orange livery, now famous uh, with the young driver from DPK, taking the lead uh, just in front of the uh, Forza Racing driver. It's going to be an interesting one uh, towards the next 10 laps for the first race of this afternoon, but great start indeed for Niklas Schaufler and a great start for Devin Waltz, uh, even though he was starting ahead, but lost a place. He managed himself to uh, get Hall to the second position and he's going to take the lead, at least trying to, oh. into turn number three. That was a close call, wasn't it? As uh, Devin Waltz is forced to stay behind. He might lose another place to Matt Corby. Beautifully made, Matt Corby. The door is wide open and takes two other drivers with him, Rashball and Firand, who couldn't ask for, bo for more. And unfortunately for Devin Waltz, that's go, that goes the other way around. He was expecting to fight at the forefront and now finds himself in the middle of the pack. Yeah, it certainly does. Now, this is a result that Matt Corby would uh, take with open arms. He, uh, this would be a, a, a best finish if he could uh, hold on to it. P2, uh, he's had a, a DSQ, he's had a seventh, and he's had an 11th. So, you know, really needs to uh, hold on to this second place, fight hard for it. And in fact, quite hard he might even go for the race lead here he's not dropped off the back but he's under pressure though Rypold looking to the inside the gap is not there he has to stay there in p3 going down in towards turn three they go no changes through this section here you can see the tires squealing there under pressure uh, round on the rubbered parts of the racetrack here rubber really going down onto the circuit now nice hot racing conditions we're above 20 degrees here 21 degrees now here at Val d'Argentin in France and uh, the blue sky is shining and so is the racing here Schaufler leading the way then from Corby Reipold uh, in third place Verhand still having a good job as well Verhand again a much tighter line there looking very very strong going in towards turn 12 as here comes Reipold down the inside gets it done and Firan was trying to do the same, but Matt Corby was keen on uh, shutting that door just right away in the middle of the turn. And so, by doing so, he keeps himself in third place in the turn number one. Lap number four out of ten. Niklas Schaffler for the first time leading the pack in a qualifying heat in Val d'Argenton. Around the inside goes beautiful. The, uh, the, the uh, overtaking by Scott Marsh, indeed, with Tony Cat Machine, uh, getting ahead of both Waltz and Firan up to P4. That just happened in turn uh, number three. As we're here at the back end, the long straight, the double left, uh, double right hander, should I say, in five and six. Uh, more and more dirt on the outside of those curbs uh, with the drivers dancing around that uh, uh, further line in turn number six. This is second sector. Then that famous chicane, one of the trademarks, certainly, of that layout of Val d'Argenton. And Nicolas Schaffler, unshaken by the two pursuers, Crash Ball and Matt Corby, down in P3. Here we go, another lap to conclude it as uh, for the top 10. Marsh in P4, as we said, in front of David Waltz or Paul Sitter, dropping a bit of momentum in front of uh, Gianmato Russo, picking up the pace. It's five places gained for Gianmato Russo, driving uh, with uh, DPK as well. Then we have uh, Ara Piran, Bosco Arias, as well as Aaron Kraling and uh, Rocco Coronel. Coronel, I'm not so lucky so far, dropping in four places. Watch out into turn number five. Beautifully done. Clean, nothing to say, a bit of dust on the outside, but this is a position taken for Ashball in the lead, and Niklas Schofler fights back already. Well, is there for the win, is not here to be shaken but in this race, and Schofler dancing around his rival and taking the position back. Yep, nice chop and change there, and again, just leaving the door open. This is allowing uh, Marsh, Volts, and Rousseau to close in. Top six getting nice and compact here. Down the start, finish straight we go. We go on to lap number six, check over the shoulder. For Schaufler, you still got Reipold, you still got Corby right there. This battle far from over. Marsh losing out two places there. Volts and Rousseau have gone through. So Marsh down to P6 now, as it looks like uh, Bosco Arias and Kier Ferhand are starting to close in. Confirmation there. Arias with the fastest lap of the race. He needs a good result in this one as well. Uh, 228, he had a fifth place earlier on. If that's his best result of the weekend, he needs to gain a few more places in this one to better that one right now. Schaufler still leading, but look at this. It is now a six-cart battle for the lead. Now, that's what we like to see indeed. The yeah, lunch break has uh, been fruitful for those drivers. Uh, back in form for the afternoon. And uh, here's a look back. You have the live feed on the left and the onboard uh, for this race. Uh, great view that we have here. Coming to uh, turn number one, that is. As uh, watch out, Niklas Schaffler being under pressure from Kasper Raspold. It's going to be a close one. If Schaffler, your leader, look at the, the way he's going through the turns under the pressure. Great view inside on board 
the uh, young driver from DPK as uh, he's resisting the pressure on the back straight. This is uh, certainly one of the spots where we've seen a lot of overtakings uh, happening on the way to uh, the first of two hairpins in turn number seven. And Schaufler is uh, still very much holding that racing line. This is the moment of uh, the race where everybody keeps pursuing each other. But to conclude lap seven out of 10 and run inside. Oh, oh. just on the live feed, ladies and gentlemen. Schaufler's gonna try to resist and counterattack. In 10, number 13 is not happening. Swiss for position as Kasper Rashbold takes his Koski machine up in the lead, but Schaffler fights back, and that might open the door for Walls. The uh, pole sitter is back in contention and dives around the inside of 10, number 1, P2, and even P1 ahead of Schaffler on lap number 8. That might be the decisive move. That was absolutely superb from Devon Waltz, reading the road beautifully here, back on board with Nicholas Schaufler in P2. He's going to go to the outside here. Look how much he's fighting with the steering there, as down the inside now. Oh, they all go wrong, and on board there, it's all gone wrong for the race lead, and round goes uh, Jean-Matera Rousseau, round goes Devon Waltz. They are out of this race, and that puts right up into the lead and Bosco Arias into P2. Arias will be delighted with this one, but it's all gone terribly wrong for the top three runners. Schaufler down to eighth now. Oh my God, incredible turn of event just to get us started with in this afternoon. What were the odds of having an onboard camera on the leader at the moment when he was losing the lead and crashing with his rivals? Certainly the odds, uh, not a lot of them out of a million, but uh, we just <laughs> happened to cut it uh, live as uh, Schaufler still uh, very much uh, battling with uh, Clark just in front of him. This is uh, further back in the classification for P8 now for uh, the uh, former leader, Niklas Schaufler. Cashball in the meantime uh, couldn't, uh, of course, be thankful enough to take the lead. Half a second in front of Bosco Arias now. Matt Corby still in third. Free run taking the place in front of the VK, VDK driver in the penultimate lap of this qualifying heat. But certainly a disastrous turn of event for Niklas Schaufler who fell down in 10th position. I think there's uh, been another moment out there on circuit as well for a few others. Uh, Marcel Sebu, who we've not spoken about for a while, uh, he's out of the race. The same with uh, Apo Timonen. This is back on board then uh, during that replay of what happened at the front. You can just see, oh, wheel to wheel, rear wheel on rear wheel, unfortunately, for Volts. Uh, and Jean-Mathieu Rousseau, unfortunately, great car control for Nicolas Schaufler. Here's the off-board view of it. And yet, just the two rear wheels getting tangled and both of them uh, out of that race. And uh, yeah, heavy damage there. Side pod coming off as well uh, for uh, Jamata Rousseau. Big, scary moment there. It's so quick when it happens. It looks so violent, doesn't it? But uh, amazingly getting done. Uh, right, well, there's been more drama here. That's at the final corner. Now, who's that? That's, uh, well, that looked like Drew Waltz car, but then also Jarrett Clark, I think, of the number 41. He has also had a nightmare. He has gone backwards as the race has come to an end. All the meanwhile, it's Casper Reipold who's taken the win from it, uh, from Rocco Coronel. We almost missed that there. So much happening on those uh, last two laps uh, out on track. But Reipold takes the lead then and takes the win. That is his first win of the weekend. He will be happy with that one. Rocco Coronel, that is a second second place for him. Uh, he'll be delighted with that one as well. That certainly bumps him up. Second now in the intermediate classifications, just one point behind Dries van Langendonk. Uh, but uh, van Langendonk as well, still having another race to go. Still very close in the intermediate classifications then. It's van Langendonk who leads it. 173 from now Rocco Coronel. Rypol bumping himself up to third in the IC with 170 points uh, from Sebastian Lettermark, who's been pumped down to fourth. Uh, Devin Waltz up to fifth from Nicolas Schaufer up to sixth. Uh, Zhang Jose seventh and Kenzo Craigie eighth. But the handful of those drivers were not out in this race. We'll see them out a little bit later on. Well, drama then in the first race back after the lunch break. Uh, but it would go the way of Casper Rypold. Rocco Coronel then from Kira Fairhand. Matt Corby from Bosco Adias. Arjun Kraling from Scott Marsh. Noah Baglin from Remy Samcek. Nicholas Schaufler from Florentine Hattema. Manuel. Uh, Meguez from Paul Andriotis, Alexander Dahlstrom and Mark Brovko round out the top 15. Uh, biggest mover in that one, the 14th place finisher from Finland, Alexander Dahlstrom, 15 places gaining, uh, gained. Baglin uh, gaining 12 places, Kralin gaining 11 places in that one. 
A little further down in the field, you then have Vladimir Vanikov finishing in 16th place from Jack Rakitic Roger, uh, who gained seven positions. Then it's Tamas Gender, 10 positions gained from 28th on the grid, uh, taking advantage of those several retirements in that race. Uh, Rasmussen, Phillips, Huang and Sabrov uh, round out the 22 cart finishers in that one. The retirements, Jarrett Clark through Waltz, Ethan Lennon, uh, Devon Waltz, uh, Jean-Mattel Rousseau, Marcel Sebo, Apo Timonen, Louis Cochet and Georgi Zazov uh, all the way throughout that one. Uh, so both the, uh, the Waltz brothers there unfortunately retiring. Let's have a look at the highlights on this one. The first incident was in the background. Louis Cochet and Georgi Zazov unfortunately uh, getting tangled up with each other on the outside. There was the first initial spin there uh, just in the middle of the pack and then yes that moment there just uh, mounting the two of each other and unfortunately both out of the race. The on board from Nicholas Schaufler in this one. Great to see uh, what a driver has to go through there. And you can see there the bumps just going in as everyone's so close to each other, just trying to maintain the, the gaps between everyone getting out into second place in the early stages there. Another angle of the drivers behind. So many having to take to the grass there, amazingly staying in the race, keeping the power down uh, in those early stages. Obviously a lot of debris coming onto the, uh, the track there. Uh, back on board with Schaufler uh, on the opening laps. This is how we got the lead off the race. And it was uh, around the outside there through turn four. That's an impressive move. And uh, we've not seen many overtakes around the outside there. Then it was down the inside uh, for Matt Corby. This was a great start to his uh, race here. Uh, he's not had the best results, has Corby. And a second place, if he could have stayed there, would have been delightful. Obviously dropping down to P4. Still a good result, though, for him. Uh, and I believe actually his uh, best result uh, for Matt Corby. So uh, he'll be delighted with that one. Then down the inside was Rypold down the inside of uh, Schaufler. That was that first initial instance. Schaufler back down the inside through turn seven. The door just left open there by Rypold. And in the early stages of that race, another angle of it again, beautifully done. And I thought Matt Corby was gonna get the jump on it there. Uh, then it went wrong there just in the background for Marcel Sebo, unfortunately for DPK Racing. He was off the track and I think that was uh, with Apo Timonen uh, as well. Uh, back on board and then we saw the dramatic moments here. Again, the Koski Motorsport driver getting the lead, but then again, downing towards turn number one. These two chopping and changing all the way throughout this race. A superb drive and uh, Eilif taking full advantage of that as well. Just coming through, oh, sorry, uh, Drew, uh, Drew Voltz uh, just taking advantage of that uh, as they came through. Devin then getting into the lead. This was the moment that Devin Waltz got spat out off the track with uh, with Nicholas Schaufler, unfortunately. Uh, Schaufler able to recover. Another angle of it here, just getting tangled up between each other. And Jean-Mattel Rousseau just going off the track there with Devin Waltz. Nothing they could do. And just, oh, it's such, such a scary moment when you see it from the outside. It looks so fast and frightening, but thankfully both drivers okay at the end of that one. Corby then just losing out to the parallel of Kia Fairhand in that last one. Just gaining those positions. And again, Rocco Coronel getting those moves in the uh, dying stages of that race, getting up into second place with this beautiful double overtake uh, down the inside of turn number seven. But it would go the way of Casper Reipold at the end of that one. Coronel finishing in second place. Get a fair hand, rounding out the top three. A superb drive then from our grid. But the most retirements that we've seen in a race so far this weekend. So many drivers uh, getting kicked out of that one. Well, we're going to head down live to Park Ferme. And uh, Guillaume Alvarez is down there with one of our drivers. Guillaume, over to you. Welcome, everybody, for the first time live uh, from the Parc Fermé of the track of Val d'Argenton. We're going to try as much as we can to give you live interviews throughout the afternoon and a direct contact with the actors themselves, the drivers, starting with Casper Rashpol. Casper, congratulations. This was a strong result, P1 for you, after a string of positive results so far. So it's looking good so far for you in Val d'Argenton. A new track has to be said. Uh, yeah, uh, it was, the race was quite hard. It was messy i would say uh, especially the last lap i was uh, kind of stressed out but i finished p1 and i'm very happy with that i really like the track it's uh, fast and uh, nice it's new quite i think so 
As uh, actually, the asphalt is so nice. Uh, but yeah, I don't know what to say. <laughs> No, it's very well said already. The, the asphalt is indeed new uh, since uh, uh, two years ago, so a brand new layout. You're pulling out some good performances, so it seems like you and the Koski Motorsport team uh, found the right setup. So you keep things as they are until the end of the heats and uh, until tomorrow as well? Yeah, it depends what uh, will be the conditions, but yeah, I think so. Fantastic. Conditions should be good, so fingers crossed for you and the rest of the team for tomorrow as well. But thank you very much for coming to us and uh, best of luck uh, with the last race of today. All right? Thank you very much. Uh, it was uh, the first live interview that we had with uh, Kasper Ashbold. Uh, very nice to hear from him. Uh, one of the uh, young drivers out there picking up his first win of the weekend here in uh, Val d'Argenton. Of, of, hopefully for him, the first of uh, others' success to come today and tomorrow as well. But it was a bit of a messy race, as you heard, uh, Anthony. And uh, we still have a lot on the plate for this afternoon. Come back to you. Thank you, Guillaume, down there in Park Ferme. Yes, indeed, was a little bit of a messy one, that one, but, uh, well, you can forgive after a lunch break. They're getting back into the rhythm of things now. Uh, over to the senior category and to Groups D versus F with Mark Dubnitsky and Alexander Bondarev starting this one uh, on the front row. Mark Dubnitsky, a uh, brilliant uh, result in his previous uh, race, finishing P2, uh, much better than his uh, previous results. P5 in his first race, 25th as well in race two so that good result there coming in strong uh, for the driver of crg alexander bondarev as well 14th and 15th uh, for, uh, fourth and fifth sorry i should say in his first and second race 19th in this uh, previous race was uh, did finish at the front but after i think 10 seconds worth of time penalties unfortunately he did uh, drop back a little bit uh, there you can see a flurry of some of the uh, the team managers there watching from the uh, top of the timing tower and the commentary box there uh, you can see here at the track some fantastic little facilities that they have got available here at Vadage on Tom plus the huge grandstand uh, around turn one capacity of uh, 2500 people uh, you can fit in that grandstand. We have not reached that capacity uh, just yet, but I've got to say it's pretty full uh, actually over there. As the engines fire up, it is qualifying heat D versus F for the senior category. Let's take you through the starting lineup. It's Mark Dubnitsky and Alexander Bondarev on row number one, Yindrich Peschel and Luna Flusha going from row number two. Luna after that DNF earlier on, looking to get a good result in this one. Lewis Werrell and Ludovic Abuso round out the top six in row number three. Salim Hana and Marcus Shilkunas start on row number four. Tiziano Monza and Alpac Soy on row five from Len Nysch and Noah Montero on row six. Then it's Elliot Kaczynski and Dante Vinci on row seven. Ian Eichmanns from Joe Turney on row eight from Mies Huben and Tame Soleil on row nine. The top 20 being Ivo Bastrada and Bocek Voda. Then on row 11, it's Louis Iglesias from Hugo Rasmajets, Guy Albagino and Marius Barryberg on row 12. Aaron uh, uh, Cavillo and Nicolo Landalate round out the 26 drivers in this grid. DNF, uh, Groups D and F uh, for our grids. And for Marcus Shilkunas as well, a DNF in his previous race. He is looking to get a good result in this one after that spin uh, with uh, Alexander Bondarev. Uh, the uh, amazing thing about that is that Marius Maryberg starting at the back of the grid, Bondarev starting at the front of the grid, and yet they had a coming together on track uh, with each other in the mid-pack. So uh, both of them gaining uh, and, and losing positions uh, ultimately throughout uh, the course of these races. But right now, let's see what just happens in this one. Dimnitsky taking the lead of this one. Bondarev right there just behind him. Bremer team working very hard here. And the fact that you've got Bondarev and Flusha both starting the two teammates on the outside here. Uh, this will be a great uh, testament to see how they work together at this point in their racing careers. Uh, granted, both in two different uh, Formula One junior programs, with the Mercedes and uh, Alexander Bondarev with the Williams uh, F1 outfit. Uh, they are planning on going in different directions, but right now they are teammates, and that is the crucial thing that they do need to remember uh, going into this weekend. There you can see just a little further behind Salim Hana, also a Colombian with the Prima Racing team as well, another well-backed driver in the category. Here we go then into the tram lines looks like we are ready to go then for this qualifying heat into the tram lines lights go green and it's a great start from that inside road Dubnitsky getting away well so does Peschel Werrell follows through as well but on the outside Bondarev and Luna Flusha try to follow through oh and it's all gone wrong in the background Eichmann's went up in the air and that is the 211 that's Elliot Kaczynski for Ward Racing he is out of this race 
He is still in his cart. Looks to be in a bit of discomfort. Hopefully he is okay, but the race goes on. Down in towards uh, turn number five, and it's a side by side for the lead. It's Peschel down the inside for the race lead, and I think he's got it. No, he hasn't. He stayed there in second. It's still Dubnitsky. And that was a good try from Jerzy Spezel. He has a win under his name already, don't forget, but uh, he fell just back into B2 under the pressure of uh, Alexander Bondarev into that opening lap. 12 to go in total as uh, the Italica driver. Unfortunately, Elliot Kaczynski is out of his car, so that's good news indeed from uh, world racing, should I say, as uh, we complete the opening lap under the leadership of Mark Nudinsky, back where he belonged at the start. Jiri Spezel keeping the pressure on. Bandarev down in third. Lewis Wuerl picking a place up to fourth from Salim Hanna. Into the turn three they go. Tijana Manza up to P6, and three places gain in front of Len Neisner, Montero, Marcus Silcunas, and Luna Flusha, not the best of start. Uh, look at the uh, pressure driving. This is uh, Tijana Manza uh, actually shutting the door, trying to resist to Salim Hanna. I think he did go through. Yes, indeed, he was a uh, quite aggressive defensive driving halfway through that uh, back uh, straight line on the other side of the circuit. So Salim Hanna in a bit of a uh, discomfort as well when it comes to uh, resisting to the charge of uh, <laughs> Salim Hanna, Stella Manza was, uh, I must say. And now look at how tight the battle is and we're within the midfield into uh, the turn number 12, the second half of the track. Here they go at full speed, kicking the throttle on the fast straight, on the way to turn number one, back with the leaders, Dubinsky, Bezel, Bandarev for the back, uh, losing a bit more of momentum as we're here with uh, Salim Hanna for the back. Noah Montero now with the Carburic machine trying to go around the inside with that yellow crash helmet of his. He's not quite able to make his way past. Uh, Noam Montero is going to have to wait for that. Maybe the next turn in five and six not happening quite yet as uh, Arka Silkunas is watching closely as well and is about to lose a place while doing that. Luna Flusha around the outside, the inside of the turn in seven. Beautifully made by Luna Flusha. She needs a revenge. She needs the results after that heavy crash in the uh, early part of the day. And uh, she seemed to have found a base back. Exactly so. Rhythm certainly seems to be kicking in for our drivers here. There's your top five. Nice gap between them. Then Salimina, Montero, Flusha. Back into that field there. There you can see uh, Busso, Kuban and Tiziano Monza. This is the battle further down in the field now. This is Vocek Voda, uh, Bertrand Eichmanns and Lananate who are also trying to get involved. Guy Albag uh, just behind. He's having to deal with some, uh, some drama as well. A big look down there for the 220 of Lewis Werrell. Uh, having a look at his uh, cart there, just seeing what's going on. He's still there, uh, having a good job. He's just lost out to Len Nysch. And Nysch now up into uh, P4. As they make their way down in towards turn number 12. Again, nice calm section of the race here as we go on to lap four. Uh, everyone just slotting in at two position. We'll keep an eye on the sector times now as they go through. Dimnitsky, though, is looking strong. Purple sector three, but that gets taken away. Len Nysch. Uh, I would say is your fastest driver on circuit and confirmation of that. He has got the fastest lap of the race. Uh, that last lap, though, was two tenths of a lap slower uh, than what his fastest lap is. So he's got the pace. He knows uh, how to get around the lap. But right now he's just struggling to get the lap together uh, at this part of the race. It is this man here, Dmitsky, who was fastest on that last lap and is continuing to open up that gap now. Eight tenths of a second. Peschel, after that uh, attempt to get the lead earlier on, not able to close in. Now, what are we looking at here? Ah, now that uh, is why there is a lot of damage to a CRG. Uh, I think is that Louis Iglesias with the damage. I believe it is. Uh, but who do you have the contact with? It was 245. That was Dante Vinci had the contact with. And then we went three wide through that chicane. And drivers having to take to the curb there. You can see uh, just in the background, uh, Eichmann's coming through around the outside there of all of it. Uh, I think he gained like four places there. And the Saudi car uh, driver getting across the uh, curb in the chicane was uh, uh, Nico uh, Lanalani by the look of it uh, as he tumbled down the order in 24th. Unfortunately for him, Luis Iglesias having uh, all sorts of trouble and uh, is on his way to retirement. That's, that would be his second DNF, unfortunately, for Luis Iglesias because he's unfit. At least his, his chassis, his uh, nose cone is uh, misplaced as a result of that incident. So the mechanical flag has been uh, shown to him, or at least he just made his way back uh, to the pits. Uh, Remains to be uh, confirmed, but it's still with us actually on track. Louis Iglesias, yeah, right. Confirmation of the uh, mechanical problem flag being shown to the young Frenchman. And uh, once this is done, he has uh, within the next three laps to make his way back to the pits to the risk, uh, avoiding the risk of losing his uh, 
from Kona onto the track. Len on your leader, gap to the leader. 1.5 seconds. And, the, and there he comes, uh, Louis Iglesias, second DNF. Unfortunately for uh, the nephew of Jeremy Iglesias, the 2020 KZ World Champion, who's also a part of his uh, inner circle. The son of uh, Yannick Iglesias, uh, former karting champion as well. This is in the blood, this is in the family line, but this weekend hasn't been going the way of uh, Louis Iglesias so far. No, it certainly hasn't, so hopefully can pick that one up later on in the day and going in towards tomorrow as well. Uh, I don't think he'll be in a danger zone, but I think he'll be uh, quite far down the order, but I don't think it's too much uh, to fully worry about. Uh, I think Bodorev might have something to worry about here, though, because Len Nice has closed in uh, and is proceeding to just pile on that pressure. He's not gone for the move just yet. He has stayed behind. He's just, I think, assessing the situation. Uh, right now and he can see the Bondrev not going defensive he's not compromising his racing line he's doing exactly what he needs to do he is having his own race he's having a good race as well uh, only down the one place but still in a good fighting position here Peschel's not too far ahead as well so he is uh, in a position to be able to attack as well as defend is Bondarev. just be a case of who goes first right now I suspect it could be Len Nice who goes first he's using all that track and more available to him round turn 13 they go back onto the start finish straight gaps are identical they're not really changing right now uh, but the race just calming down in the midfield no overtakes then between the top 14 no overtakes between the top 18 but there is a change uh, further down guy albergino getting up into p19 now four places gained the same as marius baribo gaining position now i heard tire squeals uh, in the camera there. Now, is there a cart that's gone round? Uh, I don't see anything, so uh, I think we're all good, but definitely heard some tire squeal there in the background of that microphone. Yeah, there was definitely something, unless uh, a very big bug just entered the box, <laughs> but I don't think it was the case. <laughs> but uh, yeah, certainly something uh, going wrong for one of the drivers, but nothing uh, to be concerned about. As uh, battle is still raging with uh, Alexander Bonner of Lennay's 220. Lewis Werwell actually trying to uh, make his bit around Lennay's as well. Watch out! Uh, wave, this is further back, my apologies. Is it 288? Uh, yes, indeed. Salim Hanna, same uh, chassis and teammate of uh, Alexander Bondarev. So, this is the battle raging with Werwell and Norman Montero for P5. But Darev is still very much in P3 on the inside. There he goes, yes. Norman Montero. And this is beautifully made around the inside of that turn number four. We have seen so many good maneuvers uh, happening ever since uh, yesterday. And uh, Noam Montero uh, picking another place. This is uh, place number six by the look of it. Up into uh, the top six indeed. Forza Racing driver just behind. Winner of last year's uh, international karting ranking. Lewis Wirral trying to pick up the pace. And uh, stay within reach of uh, an overtaking maybe for him to uh, apply on Montero. Salim Hanna in the meantime is uh, pulling away trying to fill on his gap. But we're back here with Salim Hanna's teammate, Alexander Bandarev, who is still close to Jedrich Pezel. Bandarev, no, uh, just, uh, the, uh, no, I was going to say one win, but no, not indeed not. No win so far for Alexander Bandarev. One win for Jedrich Pezel uh, at the end of uh, the uh, morning today. So that's going to be an interesting battle. Bandarev wants to pick up the results as uh, we had the fastest lap now in the bag of Magnubdinsky, so the uh, leader is confirming his space. How much uh, is willing to take his hands on the final trophy this weekend? Yeah, certainly so, and this would be Mark Dubnitsky's best result of the weekend as well, yet to take a qualifying heat win, and it's certainly after that P25 finish earlier on in the weekend, a race win here would certainly uh, help him out in gaining those positions uh, further down. Yindrich Peschel, though, uh, with another second place would certainly help him out as well. He would go up to third in the IC uh, on the charge towards uh, Luis Francis and Gomez. Remember, they've already had uh, their previous race. This is uh, the end of the full rotation again for them. Uh, but Dubnitsky here, I think, fine form. I mean, look at the gap there. 1.7 seconds from this battle here. Bondarev, though, possibly could go for a move here into turn 12, but I don't think he's close enough. That's going to be a tight one, especially in that last lap. Just a few corners into turn number nine. A dushy cane when we haven't seen anyone really pulling a move. Into turn number 12. He's going around the outside. Oh, cool to see a move around the outside. Putting two wheels on the grass. Alexander Bondarev might actually make it. And now it was a very close call, but Bondarev went large, went wide on the outside of turn number 12. 
putting two wheels on the grass that killed his momentum and uh, Jerry Sprezel was able to get himself still in P2 and to stay ahead. But that was an heroic sort of attempt from uh, Alexander Bondarev that we haven't seen yet. He was trying to switch uh, racing line as you do out on the exit of uh, turn number 12 that happened. But it went a little bit too wide and otherwise that could have worked maybe on the outside back on the throttle in turn number 13. Interesting display of uh, racing skills there from uh, both Jesus Bezel and Alexander Bondarev uh, finishing in second and third. Oh, far from uh, the winner for the first time this weekend, Mark Dubinsky taking his first qualifying heat of uh, the weekend. 2.4 seconds in front of both Bezel and Bondarev with Len Nace and Salim Hanna running up the top five. Uh, strong results for Mark Dubinsky as we said with the CRG colors as uh, all the drivers make their way back to the uh, Parc Fermé where we'll uh, get to uh, hear a few words from some of the protagonists of that qualifying heat. D versus F. Uh, Mark Dundinsky taking his first win of the weekend in front of Jedrush Pezel. Bandarev third from uh, Len Nace. Salim Hanna fifth from Noah Montero picking up six places within the top six from Lewis Montero, Lewis Wero, Miss Hoban, Luna Krusha. Not the best of outcome, unfortunately, for the young Mercedes. A junior driver dropping five places down to nine from Marcus uh, Silkunas, Titano Monza just outside the top ten, followed by Ludovico Busso, Alb Axoy, Dante Vici, and P15 for Joe Turney. Unlike some of his previous races, Joe wasn't able to climb through the field uh, after that difficult qualifying of his. So next time around, certainly for Joe, uh, who finished ahead of uh, Hugo Ramage, Stem Saleh, Guy, Guy Albag, Ayanek Mans, another big name with a difficult result at the end, dropping four places down to 19 from Ivo Besterda, Mus Barryberg, Roche Jwoda, and Aaron Kivilo. Here's a replay of how things unfolded into this qualifying heat with a strong start for Magnum Dinsky from pole position. She had to drive in front of uh, Jedrush Pezel on the inside line. Alexander Bondarev a little bit on the outside and a couple of drivers coming together. And unfortunately for Helmut Kaczynski from Ward Racing, he was uh, done and dusted uh, as early as turn number one. The other drivers involved were able to continue but with damage uh, for some of them. Apart from that, it was a pretty clean opening lap with Dietrich Pezel making his move on the inside of Dumdinsky as soon as uh, turn number five. A well executed move there as uh, with Kaczynski, the pain could be felt after this early DNF. Uh, big contact here that will cost his race result to Louis Iglesias, uh, another driver from the CRJ getting into trouble. And Louis Iglesias saw his nose cone flying in the air, almost at least it was misplaced. And a mechanical flag put a nearly end to his run. The second DNF for the young Frenchman as uh, some of the uh, drivers over there, over there going a bit aggressive into uh, the uh, chicane. When they saw the cards, it was uh, Nico Lanalati uh, picking up the curb on the, the passage of turn number one. 225, making his bit around the inside, battling along before uh, dropping a bit of uh, momentum towards the end of the race. It was Washish Boda that we lost uh, as we, go, we got near the checkered flag. And then it was down to Noah Montero to make his bit around the inside of uh, the 220 of Lewis Warrow, where we would finish uh, P7, Montero P6. And in the lead, the battle for P2 raged until the, the last few meters as Bondero was trying to make his bit around the outside. Bezel saw it coming. A little bit of a, little bit of a squeeze, but uh, I think that would have uh, been uh, some sort of an exploit for Alexander Bondarev to try to make his bit around the outside after putting two wheels on the grass at that speed. In the end, the uh, Monster K factory team was able to uh, prevail in second place from Alexander Bondarev. Uh, let's take a short break and let's get down back to uh, the Parc Fermé in the scrutiny area with you, Anthony. Let's hear what uh, some of the drivers have to say after this race. Well, thank you very much, Guillaume. Well, down here in Park Ferme with our race winner, Mark Dubnitsky. Mark, fabulous result there for you. Your first win of the weekend, and by some way as well, 2.4 seconds. Uh, how's the track feeling? It's, uh, it's looking pretty quick out there. Uh, thank you. Um, race was quite hard for me because uh, after like for, uh, after a second lap, I was trying to, to manage the tires, to save it, to keep it for the next hit and for the also pre-final. And the track is quite good. 
Track's nice. Obviously, weather is absolutely superb. Uh, nicer conditions that we've got. Talk us about the racing, because it's not been all plain sailing. You've had some tough results out there as well. It's been an up and down weekend. Do you think with this win now, you feel confident that you can maintain that going into your last one later on? Uh, yesterday was a hard day after after a good quality. We had uh, two hard, uh, two not so good, not so not so well hits. Like it didn't well so well, so good, and. Uh, Today, after this win, I, ho I hope it will go much, much better, and probably, yeah. We'll, we'll see how it gets on. Fingers crossed for you, uh, Mark, but congratulations uh, with the race run on that one. We'll see you out there later on today. Well done. Thank you. Excellent. Well, uh, there we go. We've got plenty more racing coming up soon. Guillaume, we'll head back up to you uh, with the juniors coming up next. Thank you very much indeed, uh, Anthony. Jordan Dunn in Park family with Mark Nubdinski. Good to hear from uh, the young CRG uh, driver picking up his first win of the weekend in those uh, beautiful conditions. And uh, it's fair to say that he had uh, a relatively nice time picking that result after the uh, battles between uh, Tietje Spezel and Alexander Butler behind in second and third. Next race coming up in uh, a bit less than two minutes time. This uh, will be uh, time already for the uh, next uh, A versus E a junior uh, class uh, coming up as well, as uh, this will be uh, eat number 23 for the uh, junior uh, category coming up uh, with uh, Sebastian Letimaki and Filippo Sala uh, sharing the front row of the grid. It's gonna be a busy afternoon as uh, we've had so far eight races this morning, 10 this afternoon. And uh, let me remind you that by the end of this second day of racing, a first classification will be established with points awarded uh, for the championship, but it's not over yet. The uh, biggest of all three days comes tomorrow with the super heat in the morning and the finals in the afternoon. So in a bit less than one minute, we'll be good to go for the A versus C uh, junior uh, qualifying heat, uh, opposing Sebastian Letimaki and Filippo Sala. Letimaki picking up some strong results so far as uh, in uh, the junior class, uh, we have uh, three wins for Dries van Langendong, two wins uh, for uh, as well, some of the drivers is the one leading uh, the path for the uh, young Forza racing uh, driver. Other wins uh, since yesterday uh, went to the likes of Jake Heilif, uh, Filippo uh, Sala Archilovat, twice for Sebastian Letimaki, who has not yet uh, won another race uh, today. That might be a good occasion for him. And other winners include uh, Devin Waltz and Kasper Rashball, the last one that you saw. Uh, and the first uh, driver that we got a chance to interview this afternoon. Here we go again. The whistle is blown and the, the uh, green flag is out. Um, Sebastian Letimaki with two wins under his name yesterday. Can he make it uh, three? That remains to be seen. He's gonna have Filippo Sala by his side, uh, Kenzo Krenji and uh, Jake Heilif on the row number two. And we have Asher Ostein and Kosei Woguma. Uh, row four, Alfred Slater and Christian Kostoya. Row five, Alex Martinez and Mats Van Royen. Row six, Ju uh, Zhao and Sky Parker. Row seven, Joel Pohola and Alex Molotta. Row 8, Alois Girardet and Andrea Mani. Justin Burnett and Ancel Zon. Row 10, Scott, Scott Lindblom and Thomas Pratier. Row 11, Gustavo Marquez da Silva and uh, James Ananio Stiaris. Row 12, Travis Theo and Iskander Sulfikari. Nikita Nikishov and Bogdan Kosma Christopher on row number 13. Row 14, Arsa Maki and Clara Kovalcic. Nicole Danold and Alexander Kortenov on row 15. And row 16, we have Philip Reis and Theo Battisti. 32 drivers onto the grid. And interesting information with Thomas Pradier, who uh, chose this race to put on a half of a new set of fresh tires. And Thomas Pradier, who is supposed to get started from 20 on the grid. It's a uh, common business to uh, get started with uh, some fresh tires for your drivers at the back end of the grid in need of a strong result. So Thomas Pradier will be one of them, including as well other names at the back end, like uh, James Ananiostiadis. We have also Clara Kovalcic, as well as Alexander Kortenov, Travis uh, Theo, Arson Maki, and uh, Kole Denholm. They all have one new half set of fresh tires to get uh, going in this race. They certainly do. Well, again, this is that last ditch attempt, isn't it, to try and get from the back of the grid some. Uh, drivers uh, really struggling out there this weekend. Uh, temperatures kicking in, obviously, uh, 
Max's tyres will be collecting a lot of data out of this weekend just to see what they can take, because obviously different tracks mean different uh, conditions. As the lights go green, we are racing, and it's a great getaway for Lettermarki, but it's a better getaway from Salah. On the outside, he takes the lead of the race. It's all gone wrong in the background. It's James Adagnostiadis, one. I think that's the 74 there that's gone off the track as well at the back of the grid. Uh, that is Scott Lindblom in his first weekend with Fusion, and there's another one off there as well. There's several carts off. Uh, Alex Malota, one of them. Jensen Burnett, one of them. Uh, Scott Lindblom, James Ignatiadis. Then Harrison Mackey, I think, is one of them as well. Clara Kowalczyk and Carl Denham. Everyone who's gone for a brand new set of tyres is out. Yeah, disaster indeed. It's not the first time that we've seen this coming, actually, for some of the unfortunate drivers switching to fresher rubber. And uh, again and again, this uh, turn number one proved to be very, very difficult. Watch out with uh, the uh, Marshall, actually. It was uh, almost run over uh, by the young driver there. Number 80, who was uh, very keen on getting back onto the track very fast. And uh, please do watch out for uh, the marshals as they work onto the track while the racing is still going. And uh, Filippo Sala is still very much in the lead with uh, Sebastian Letimaki certainly must fuming under the uh, helmet uh, of having this leadership stolen from him. He's going to try to take it back as soon as uh, lap number two. Then number four, that might be. And not quite yet in uh, five and six. Uh, under the pressure of Jack Heilif, uh, Heilif is going to go first for the move and taking P2 run inside. Beautifully made by the Forza Racing driver. As uh, Letimaki has nothing else to do but to back off a little bit, having to stay in P3. Oguma and Krengi just behind. But not to go too wide into turn number 12 because that could be a wide open door for the drivers to uh, take advantage of. But uh, everybody stays in line at the end of lap number two. Sebastian Letamaki is looking a bit racy there. He was trying to get down the inside of Jack Eilif in towards turn number one, thought against it uh, just at the last second there. He's choosing to stay behind. Like you were saying, Aguma just there in P4. Uh, Craigie in fifth. Zhao there as well in sixth place. Austin looking strong as well, just in the background. The CRG driver wanting to gain those positions here. All the drivers in line astern sort of formation right now. No one going for the lunge yet, but we are going to see a lunge. It's Letamaki who goes through it. Oh, and Eilif tumbles down the order. Uh, Craigie goes through. Aguma goes through. Eilif now down into P5. Well, that's not what uh, Eilif would have wanted. Now Aguma goes for second place. Blupo Sala, all the meanwhile, is starting to now break away from the rest of the field. That gap was half a second. It's now seven tenths of a second. It's Sala from Aguma. Letamaki back in third place, Craigie in fourth from Eilif in fifth. Lap, lap number four, sorry, that is out of ten. Filippo Sala, half, half of a second. Kosi Oguma, very, very close uh, from uh, the close of Sebastian Letimaki. Watching over his shoulder with the uh, white crash helmet to see where the rest is. Uh, Kenzo Krengi not far behind. Theo Battisti, the fastest on track in 51.4. Where does he stand the solid car driver all the way down to P21st? There's a good reason why he's the fastest. He's pulling off a beautiful recovery move. 11 places gained so far. Only 32 on uh, the grid after difficult qualifying for a driver that uh, knows very little about this track, but it uh, doesn't prevent him from getting pace and better pace race after race. Uh, Alex Molotta, the number 80, being investigated and he's at the back end of the classification. One of the drivers who got involved into that uh, first turn incident. And unfortunately, his race is already over. And maybe with penalty, will come to it at the end. Has uh, Jose Aguma got a brand new set of tyres on his car? Uh, the answer to that is no, I can tell you. Uh, but he is driving like he does. He has closed that gap up tremendously. And he's bringing the rest of the field along with him. Salah, uh, oh, I say that now, he's just lost a position. He just lost a position to Letamark. He was on that rear bumper a second ago. And I thought it just outbraked himself uh, there in towards turn seven. He thought against it uh, last second. Craigie uh, right on the rear bumper still. Uh, I'm not sure what just happened. I was praising there Kose Aguma for closing up the gap. He was right on the rear bumper going into turn one with Filippo Sala. And now he finds himself in P3. Uh, I don't know how on earth that happened, but uh, certainly shows that the track evolving uh, second and corner by corner, uh, I would say, in this midway point. We're still side by side in the background here. Costoya trying to get down the inside. That's not going to happen. Zhao uh, Zijun tries to follow suits as well. They stay behind. Jack Eilif holding on to... Uh, the fifth place position. Uh, Jörg Pockler closing in now as well on the number 76. He's looking very strong in this latter half of the race. 
Uh, Nikita Nikishov, though, is a driver who is impressing. He's up to P11, 14 places gained. The same could be said for Theo Battisti. He is up into 19th place in the top 20, 13 positions gained for the young driver. Impressive performance indeed, as uh, in the meantime, Rojel Pohola got, uh, got ahead of Yun Zhao for P7, by the look of it. Here's a replay I of uh, Okuma. Now, oh, I think fast. that was maybe a mistake there. I don't know if he just run wide or he just didn't have the power out the corner, because look, yeah. he just run wide. Yeah, he just run wide. Yeah, very strange. You know, I have another theory about that. You know, he might have heard you, and this is the uh, commented curse, actually, that just went against him just uh, in the space of one corner there. Are you trying to throw shade on me here, Guillaume? No, it's definitely not my fault. It possibly could be my fault. Uh, now it's Letamaki on the rear bumper of Salah. I won't say more than that, other than he's looking quick. You know, with experience, it comes to us that uh, sometimes too much praise to the drivers <laughs> get to their head and it goes the other way around. So, but uh, less than two tenths of a second between, between Filippo Sala and Sebastian Letimaki at the end of uh, lap number seven. So nothing is done yet in the battle for the win into that uh, qualifying heat for the juniors. Ever to see around the inside, as I say that. Letimaki takes back the, the lead. Potentially the win is going to have still a lot of work to do to prevent Filippo Sala to switch the positions back. Watch out because we have indeed Kosei Oguma for the back who wants to join that party. That's going to give us a three driver battle, the sort of thing that we like very much, even though Krengi is not far behind. A little bit of a nudge into turn number three. No one dares to move a muscle, but look at the face of the Japanese driver on the inside. And as a result, he takes the second position on the inside of turn number three. Beautifully made, nothing to worry about there. Now he's going to have to go defensive and shut all the doors while uh, trying to uh, catch up as well with Letimaki. Always easier said than done. As Pohola is uh, picking up another fastest lap in his recovery, up to P7, six places gain already for the uh, Finnish driver. Into the chicane goes the uh, little train of four drivers in the lead. Can uh, can the Krenge maybe uh, get himself into that battle? Gonna have to push a little bit harder than that, and uh, time will run run against him, I'm afraid. As Letimaki look over his shoulder, three tenths of a second. Could it be enough in that penultimate lap? Still having a strong pace at the moment, quite a regular one corner after the other for Sebastian Letimaki. He has two wins already, uh, Sebastian, on the Koski Motorsport team. Is still currently uh, your leader in the classification as we speak. That might be a win number three. It's going to have to resist because Oguma might have other ambitions in mind. Yeah, he certainly might. Well, not long left to go in this race. The gap's continuing to stay roughly the same. Aguma not able to close in just yet. Sala, though, under immense pressure from Kenzo Craigie. The battle for third place is on. Craigie looking maybe to the inside and towards turn 12. It's against it on the exit as they go through. Now, Alex Malota has just received a black flag. Now, I suspect that's through not adhering to the technical flag that he received earlier on, maybe. I'm not sure. No, he didn't get a, uh, a technical flag earlier on. No, he got an in uh, investigation flag earlier on. Uh, so, in then receives a straight black flag. So, that's uh, quite an unusual one. We've not seen many of those in previous races. So, uh, he'll have to see the stewards, I suspect, after this one. But on the final lap, it is Letamaki who leads the way. And the gap opening up to six tenths of a second now. Uh, between himself and Kose Aguma, who continues to hold on to third place. Sala still under pressure from Craigie. One more overtake opportunity, and that'll be in towards the hairpin of turn 12. Is he going to go for the move just in the background? It looked like there he was going to go for the move, but eyes on this man here, Sebastian Letamaki. Well, he's going to get his third win out of four races, and he takes it across the line, clear by eight tenths of a second from Kose Aguma, who finishes in P2. Sala held on to third place despite the last uh, ditch attack there from Kenzo Craigie into turn 12. Eilif holds on to a top five finish from Joel Pokola in sixth. Uh, Zhao Zijun finishing in seventh place from Christian Kostoy. Nikita Nikishov from Alex Latinez uh, finishing in the top 10. Nikita Nikishov 16 places gained in that one. Uh, gaining so many places just to finish inside the top 10. A superb run uh, for him. Let's see if he can maintain that later on in the race. But your race leader there, Sebastian Letamaki, that is three wins then out of four races and looks very strong going into the second half of the day. They've only got one more heat to go. It'll be later on that we see these groups out.
Whether or not who will be starting on pole position for the Super Heats tomorrow. At the moment, it's Sebastian Lettermarki who leads the intermediate classifications uh, with 194 points. There you can see who the top results are going up from uh, Salah, Craigie from Ireland, Pokola from Zhao, uh, Kostroy from uh, Nikshov, Martinez from Manny, Slater, Oshdin, uh, Girardet and Parker who rounds out the top 15. Uh, 16th place downwards sees uh, Matsan Ruin from Philippe, uh, Philippe Rice who gained 14 places in that one to finish P17. Thomas Fladeer from Iskander Silvacari. Travis Teo and Thea Battisti, 11 positions gained, finishing in 21st place from Gustavo da Silva. Cole Denham from Clara Kowalczyk. Uh, Alexander Kortanov from Bogdan Kosma. Uh, Sun Z and Alex Malota round out the 28 carts that finished that one for retirements. Jensen Burnett, Scott Lindblom, James Anagnostiadis and Harrison Mackey, unfortunately all not getting restarted. Well, let's take a look at the highlights from that race. Great start from Filippo Stala. Watch the 20 on the outside there, getting into the lead off the bat. Brilliant getaway uh, off the line there. That superb drive. Uh, later on, though, that would be the incident in the background there. Three drivers off at turn one. Jens Burnett uh, there, Scott Lindblom, and, of course, James Anagnostiadis. This was the uh, scary moment there. Wow, that, well, there you go. The investigation flag for the number 80 of Alex Malota and then the black flag that came out. I'm not saying it's for that moment there, but um, obviously it's probably highly likely. Uh, there we go, nearly clipping a marshal there. Uh, race continuing though, and uh, unfortunately dropping down the order at that point was the number 10 uh, all the way near to the, uh, the back of the grid there. But uh, I lift just holding on to P5 at the end of that race. Certainly not the results he will have wanted, but only dropping one position from his original starting spot. Uh, Let the marquee fighting back, though, in the early stages there. Because Aguma with uh, a rare mistake here. Not sure what happened there. Just giving the, uh, the, the position there away. Held on to uh, P2 at the end, though, as down the inside went Let the marquee in towards turn 12. That was on lap seven. Uh, Aguma getting up to second place as well. Salah. Uh, just dropping back, uh, just allowing the space there. Nice, uh, clean overtake for Kosei Aguma there from Japan. But it would go the way of Sebastian Lettermarki then clear by uh, just under eight tenths of a second from Kosei Aguma and Filippo Sala rounding out the top three. Uh, clean up job will be underway there. You can see many carts getting recovered, but we are going to head down to Park Ferme. Guillaume Alvarez, it's over to you. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Parc Fermé with uh, Sebastian Letimaki. Sebastian, the last time we spoke uh, yesterday, uh, the pace was very strong for you and you translated that into, uh, you know, on-track performance, a win number three for you. So still very much pumped up for what's to come tomorrow as well? Yeah, we have, uh, in the test days, we test already a lot of things and now everything is working well. And yeah, in the start, I lost a bit, but then I just came back because uh, I'm much faster and... Uh, yeah, then I took the win. What's interesting, this is the sort of story that myself I like to see, you know, with Cosimo Motorsport, a smaller team compared to other big factories, of course, in partnership, but it's like, you know, Devig against Goliath, and can this play to your advantage? I mean, yeah, I get uh, a good, like, support from Jan Koski, and uh, also the engines are good, and, uh, yeah, uh, of course, it's... Uh, like difficult for Koski to fight against bigger teams, but it's good that uh, now we see that we actually can fight against the factory teams and so. And you've shown that uh, beautifully indeed. And uh, let's keep it that way up until tomorrow. Thank you very much for talking to us. Uh, good luck. Thank you. Sebastian Timaki, very nice indeed. Three wins so far for him with the Koski Motorsport team. A good uh, pace so far ever since uh, yesterday that is shown on track. The confidence is there. And uh, David against Goliath, the private team against the factories, the sort of story that we like. And the last chapter will be on for tomorrow. Well, thank you very much, uh, Guillaume, down there in Park Ferme. Yes, indeed, good to see uh, Sebastian Letomaki nice and happy after that race. There you can see the schedule of what you can expect coming up uh, soon. We've got about three minutes before the next race gets underway. That is the OK qualifying heat A versus C due to start at five minutes past. So we are bang on schedule here at Val d'Argentan for round two for the Champions of the Future. Uh, then we head for groups D and E for the Junior and OK, then groups A and F. 
Uh, and that nears us to the end of the day, because then after that, it's just groups B versus C that round out the day. The last race due to start at five past uh, five uh, this afternoon, local time here in France. Well, there you can see uh, the grid just behind uh, that graphic, getting themselves ready, qualifying group uh, A versus C. And uh, David uh, Cosma Christopher uh, selling this one on pole position. Uh, there you can see as well the uh, recovery operation getting underway as well. So, uh, so many incidents on that one. Uh, while we wait for this next race, we are going to take a short break. Do not go anywhere. We'll be... Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, as you can see, sun still shining and uh, race still about to get underway for the senior category. Qualifying heat A versus C. 12 laps, these ones, 15.5 kilometer race distance around this 1.2 slash 1.3 kilometer circuit, 1,280 meters. I'll let you decide which one you would prefer to call it. Uh, there you can see the grid uh, all ready to get going for this one. David Cosma from uh, the Cart Republic Motorsport team starting this one on pole position. We'll have Zach Drummond alongside, both of them having some very good uh, races. Remember, Drummond is on an unbeatable scale here right now. He is three qualifying heat wins in. This will be his fourth qualifying heat that he's going on to now. Uh, and again, he is just uh, waiting to see what he can do. Can he come away with maximum 200 points at the end of this one? That is going to be the biggest test. And uh, crucially, starting on the outside row, that's going to be a tough one, isn't it? Well, the green flag, uh, or the green light waves, green, green light flashes, there we go. That's the words I was looking for, uh, gets underway. And uh, let's take you through the starting lineup for this one. Uh, David Cosmo Christmas uh, uh, starts on the front row of the grid with uh, Zach Drummond alongside. Timo Ramikas and Matej Giacardi on row two. David Bataro and Kasper Henriksen round out row three from Guillaume Buzar and Mat uh, Matez Morgato on row four. Santino Panetta and Joseph Smith on row five from Finn McLaughlin and Tom Dussel on row number six. Row number seven, uh, we'll see Jerzy Skulanov and Stepan Antonov. Uh, row eight, uh, Murilo La Rocha and uh, Leon Nelson. Miguel Costa and uh, Yaju Chan on row nine. Row ten, uh, Blake Nash and Freddie Lloyd. Row 11, Alphonse Mitinen and Holland Kuklein. Row 12, Tom Akinze and Sebastian Pavan. Row 13, Kat Farin and Vegar Clemetsen. Uh, for a total of 26 drivers, ever see for the OK senior category. And don't forget, uh, this one is uh, the latest race before the last revolution of races so to speak so after this one all the uh, groups and drivers will have one race left before the conclusion of today's uh, schedule of qualifying heats after that no more it's down to the super heat with pretty much half of the field left on uh, the side we have about 173 drivers 72 of them kept for the super heat of, uh, of uh, Saturday morning, I was going to say Sunday, but again, different schedule for champions. And uh, from that, we only take 36 for the final in the afternoon. So it's going to be a good uh, crunch of drivers who won't make it to uh, the uh, super heat uh, tomorrow. We'll uh, get uh, down to the classification uh, just after, at the end of the day. But for now, what counts for the drivers is to uh, pile up the results, uh, get the points in the bag. And Timo Rackers is uh, one of them, starting from third on the grid on the inside line. It will be uh, more than willing to uh, take a bit of uh, aspiration, take a bit of toe from uh, David Cosma Christopher just in front of him. I'm sure he will. He'll have that optimal starting spot. Uh, doesn't have to worry about getting the start. All he has to do is worry about just sticking to that rear bumper of uh, David Cosma uh, Christopher, who starts just ahead. Uh, well, drivers have made their way uh, out of their uh, outlap. They finished their formation lap. They're now heading into the final corner to start this race. 12 laps is upon us. Who's going to come out on top on this one? Could it be David Cosmo Christopher? Could it be Zach Drummond? Drummond looking for his fourth win out of four. Lights go green. Here we go. Down towards turn one. It's a good start from Drummond. He slots into second place. That's the best start he could possibly have. The Constantino effect kicks in. He almost gets sandwiches there between Cosmo and Ramakers. Ramakers holding on to third place. The rest of the pack is coming in towards turn three, about three, four carts wide. Uh, looks like they've all made it through, but it's a clean start there for David Cosmo Christopher who breaks away at the front from Drummond and Ramakers in second and third. Good opening lap indeed, a good start for the contenders here in this field. Watch out for Ramakers, going to try to uh, get ahead of Zach Drummond as soon as lap one. He knows how fast Drummond has been. He don't want to let uh, David Cosma Christopher uh, get away with the win in the back just too soon. Lap number 12, he won't make it through just yet as uh, with the pressure for the back of uh, Matteo Giacardi. 
lap one is a down beautiful uh, view on the inside of turn number 13 taken flat out and between the out, out the uh, exit of turn number 12 on the way to turn number one we uh, actually approach fast speed top speeds of about 130 km an hour so an impressive impressive pace uh, by those uh, senior drivers here in Val d'Argenton three turns of a second and on board with Thibaut Ramakers from VTK Racing down in P3 closing in on Zach Drummond you can see him on the back of his uh, racing suit on the way to turn number four and live ladies and gentlemen oh. on the inside he dives through switching off position is Zach Drummond beautifully made that's what I call the karting ballet at its best between uh, two of the strongest names of the OK class and for now still advantage Zach Drummond two of the newest drivers into the OK class as well uh, for Drummond and Ramakers. Uh, well, all the meanwhile, while they did that move, they opened up the gap even more between themselves and David Cosma, who uh, has broken away now four tenths of a second clear. Jean Mateo, um, uh, sorry, uh, Matteo Giacardi uh, is there in fourth place at the moment. Matthias Morgato up into P5. He's up three places so far. We saw him earlier on in the weekend, gaining those positions. His lunges down the inside are second to none, which is why he is a former world champion. Uh, you know, really getting those moves down on the inside, but right now, just edging his way up ahead again. Really closing in now is Ramakers. And I suspect uh, Matteo Giacardi is right there, ready to pick up any pieces uh, that may come from this one. Hopefully not, we'll keep fingers crossed and we'll knock on wood. Uh, but these two certainly going wheel to wheel all the way throughout these laps. So it's Cosmo, oh dear, and off the track. That's two cuts who are no, going no further. Now that is Blake Nash and Alphonse Mittenen, unfortunately, who are in 21st and 22nd. Uh, they are off the track. Uh, and that is at the exit of turn number seven through the hairpin. Yeah, quite important uh, for uh, those two coming together, as it means, uh, yeah, race it. Done and run inside. Oh, the battle keeps on raging between uh, Zach Drummond and Thibaut Ramakos. Oh. Ramakos being pushed a little bit on the side, on the back straight. And uh, Matteo Giacardi was there for the taking and uh, getting ahead of the Belgian. Oh, we might need to see that again. Ramakos still very much in contention. Didn't let uh, Ericsson come close. But the 273 of uh, Matteo Giacardi took advantage of that situation to uh, get past Ramakos uh, again on board of. Uh, with the Belgian driver coming close on the exit of the number 12. One kick of the throttle, one wheel on the curb, flat out through 13, just in front of our position on the fast start finish line. On the way to the number one, the kick to the right, breaking point. And turn number one, long right hander before going left straight on. How amazing is that uh, to, to be on board at full time with Thibaut Ramaker, is still struggling a little bit to uh, translate his qualifying pace into the result he had been expecting. So far, Ramakus picked up a win, but uh, he struggled a little bit to stay within the top three. Managed to pick up another third place, finished six, another uh, race uh, before. But uh, as long as uh, you keep the consistency, all that matters is uh, coming down to the speed and the final tomorrow. And those uh, favorites know that. Run inside, there he goes. The pace is there. The door was open, and the Machado Cardi didn't resist, knowing that uh, if the gap was there, Ramakus would go to take it. There's still plenty of time to try to uh, come to attack. And uh, Matteo Giacardi, that's for sure. As long as he keeps uh, Otaro and both uh, Fionn McAuchlin just behind. It's good to see Fionn McAuchlin back uh, in the upper part of the uh, classification. We haven't seen much of uh, the Irish driver from VDK so far. And there he goes around the inside of turn number four with the fastest lap in the bag. Up into a P5, uh, that is. With Matteo Morgato not far behind. I mean, leading the other train of drivers outside of turn number five. Certainly some good racing there again. Goes Timo Ramakers. We dive on board, and this time he holds on to it. Ramakers up into P2 now, and he's got plenty of time to try and close that gap. It's only nine tenths of a second. So now it's Ramakers from Drummond. Uh, Giacardi still there in P4 as the train starts to form now. Back onto the start finish straight they go. New gap. It is over a second now. Can Ramakers? close that gap in the last few laps of this race. A look further back in the field. Who's our biggest mover? Well, there's not many. Finn McLaughlin up six places. Uh, Sebastiana Pavan uh, up seven places. Now, Pavan really needs a good result on this one. I would be amazed if we see Sebastiana Pavan not making the cut uh, into the superheats. Uh, that is a name that, you know, you see at the front end uh, of these grids and a big lunge there down the inside from Bataro and they get past uh, Giacardi. So McLaughlin got through 
and Bataro Giacardi down to P6 now. McLaughlin is on a charge here, and now he closes in on Zach Drummond. Well, let's see what happens here as uh, Morgato now is on that rear bumper of Giacardi. Are we going to see a move down in towards turn number one? No, the door is closed by Giacardi. He says, no, thank you, that's not happening. This is on board with Ramakers of how we got into P3 earlier on. And then this was uh, McLaughlin getting down the inside of Pataro earlier on. This was Ramakers on Drummond as well. We saw that only a few laps ago. Brilliant, brilliant move there. Block passing as well, not allowing Drummond to get back down the inside like he did earlier on. Uh, he didn't want to get that uh, drama, that switch through. Uh, back with the live pictures now, and there you can see, well, McLaughlin is closing in on Drummond here. Gap uh, two tenths of a second, or just under three tenths. And I suspect that's coming down just that little bit more here through turn 13. I'm sure it will update, and uh, yes, it does update, but for the worse here, because it goes up a little bit more. Ramakers, though, all over the rear bumper of Cosma. He has closed in, and this is the battle for the race lead. Thibaut Ramakers has closed it down to one tenth of a second. He's going for it straight away, wasting no time whatsoever, down the inside in towards turn at number four, and he gets it done. And now Cosma will have to try and fight back in these last few stages. He cannot allow uh, Ramakers to break away because this would be a superb result for Thibaut Ramakers. He would help himself out in the IC as well. He would get up to fourth uh, with 173 uh, classification points. Drummond would still lead it though, but not with the maximum 200 points as he's down into P3 now and is under pressure from McLaughlin who is starting to close in here, Guillaume. Uh, let's see what uh, the uh, VDK driver will be able to do. As two VDKs up in the uh, upper echelon with uh, Ramakers and uh, Fionn McCarklin. It's going to be an interesting one for Fionn as uh, he's uh, battling for the championship. Uh, let me remind you, after a strong result in uh, the opening round in uh, Valencia, didn't go according to plan so far for him, but uh, watch out for the slipping water. And uh, Fionn McCarklin has been uh, building his charge race after race, and now the pace seems to be. Uh, back again and run inside he goes on Zach Drummond for P3 beautifully made by uh, Leon McCoughlin now all he needs to do is to, is to resist from uh, the Paulin driver always easier said than done as Thibaut Ramaker is, uh, is extending his lead for more than half of a second on the Cosma Christopher at the moment so is it gone and dusted that means that uh, Zach Drummond as it stands will still be in the lead of the classification uh, falling down into fourth place but on equal points on the with uh, Gabriel Gomez, who we need to uh, see uh, competing in the next race. That means also that Thibaut Ramakers, with that win in the back, if it stays like that, would come very, very close, less than uh, nine points, uh, nine points actually, uh, from Drummond from third in the classification. Yeah, certainly so. It will make it very, very close going into the final races that they'll have today. Uh, Drummond, though, like you say, with that uh, out qualifying Gomez earlier on in the weekend, would mean that he stays up there. Uh, in that uh, sector, but uh, right now Drummond with an absolutely superb uh, positioning here. Yes, okay, he's dropped down positions, but he's still in fine form in the IC. Final lap time is out then, and Thibaut Ramakers leads the way, clear by one second. McLaughlin still there in third place, uh, not able to close in on David Cosma, but Ramakers here has just broken away. 1.1 seconds clear. He's just put in a fastest time, 49.908. That is a superb time. We're reaching qualifying time here for Thibaut Ramakers. That is a driver who I think is fully dialed in, focused, tunnel vision, kicking in here. I think he's absolutely on it for a beautiful race win. Yeah, absolutely impressive from uh, Thibaut Ramakers, who has found his grip on this track, 49.9 indeed, the fastest lap in the bag towards the end of that race and uh, the lap record as uh, we have now that was uh, achieved earlier this week by uh, Bill Ramaker's uh, teammate Pierre McCaughlin himself in 49.2 and uh, impressive pace indeed in the very ideal conditions for Thibaut Ramaker's picking up race win number two for the young Belgian driver in the A versus C uh, okay qualifying heat so well done to uh, Thibault Ramakers, David Cosma, Christopher in second place, 1.2 seconds down from Fionn McCaughlin, Zach Drummond and Matthias Morgato, who made uh, an unexpected return in the latest stages of that race to pick up his best result to date uh, this weekend.
for round two of Champions of the Future. The Dramakers was the strongest of them all once again. The second win that puts him, as we said, provisionally speaking, of course, in third place in the overall classification with 179 points to 188 for Zach Drummond. We made it before. Then 188, same result, same number of points for Gabriel Gomez. With uh, still one race to go. Now, ladies and gentlemen, the next race will be D versus in the junior class. And this is an interesting point in the day as we head towards the last rotation of qualifying heats. After those, there will be no more possibilities before the super heat to grab the results that you need. Here's the official classification, at least for now. Thibaut Ramakus, David Cosma, Christopher, Phil McCulkin in your top three from the Zach Drummond, Matthias Morgato, David Bottaro, Matteo Gicardi, Guillaume Buzard, Jarzim Skolanov, climbing four places up to nine. Miguel Costa, 10th. P11 for Tom Dussol from Freddy Lloyd, Stepan Antonov, Kasper Eriksson, Sebastiano Pavan down in P15. P16 is uh, Ranchu Sun. Then we have Joseph Smith, Leon Nelson, uh, Fabian Kian Padin, Vega Clemetson, P20. 21st is Tom Kinsey from Murillo da Rocha, Roland Cochlein, and Santiago Santino Panetta. Vic Nash and Alfon Mitinen are the two drivers missing out at the end of this race. And Thibaut Ramacher is on your picture. And hopefully we get uh, a chance to chat with him or some of the uh, protagonists in just a moment with Anthony Jordan. Here's the replay of uh, how the race played out. Uh, Ramaker is in the middle, as you can see, from third place on board with the young Belgian driver and the Chetula racing car Republic machine into turn number one on the opening lap uh, behind Zach Drummond and uh, David Cosma Christopher, the battle of three in the opening stages with uh, Switching positions towards the end, but uh, Belgian driver very close indeed. It was a clean opening lap for most of the drivers, even though one of the Tony Card machines uh, went across the grass over there on the outside of the uh, airplane of turn number one. Turn number two is, has been a very, very tricky uh, corner to manage. Here's the first switch of positions into turn number uh, seven at Wars. The Ramaker is going for the attack. The inside line was wide open. It's like Drummond uh, saw it coming, obviously, and the switch the position to take P2. It was uh, at this point where he thought that maybe he would have the upper hand on the Belgian driver. Two drivers coming together, one of the Koskis, uh, Alphonse uh, Mitinen, who will not be able to 286 to uh, get back on track, as well as Blake Nash from the Tony Kart racing team. The battle was still raging between uh, Zach Drummond and uh, Thibaut Ramakus, and the Belgian was pushed a little bit wide onto the grass before the breaking point of turn number five. But he would get his revenge on Zach Drummond first by taking second place with... Uh, that's uh, actually the action from a different angle. You can see that the Belgian driver kept control of his machine. And hello, actually, uh, one of the uh, Forza Racing driver, Mattia, Matteo Giacardi, uh, to uh, dive past the Belgian. But uh, before that, after that, Matteo Giacardi would uh, hold down the order, down to P7. Uh, Here's Fionn McCoughlin, the 274 from VDK, doing a great job as well. And climbing up to P3, eight places gained for Fian, the uh, rec lab record holder so far here in Val d'Argenton this week. But uh, it wasn't over for Thibaut Ramakus halfway through this qualifying heat, getting ahead of Zach Drummond once again. And uh, after that, there was uh, no one able to catch him. Fian McCoughlin doing the same on the 273 of uh, Matteo Giacardi. And that was the start of uh, things going wrong for uh, Giacardi as he uh, lost momentum all the way down to P7. Ramakers on the 248 of David Cosma Christopher. That was a decisive move on their way to a final victory for the young Belgian. For his first season in the Oka class. In the meantime, as well, Fiona McCoughlin keeping your pace and climbing through the ranks. That was the move on Zach Drummond for his final result as V3. Checker flag flies, and Thibaut Ramakers takes a win number two in the qualifying heat, securing what is, as for now, a provisional third spot in the overall classification behind Zach Drummond and Gabriel Gomez. We head down to the Parc Fermé with you, Anthony Jordan. Thank you very much, uh, Guillaume. Yeah, down here with our, not our race winner, but our driver who is leading the intermediate classification at the moment, Zach Drummond, joint now on points with Gabriel Gomez at the end of the, uh, I think, third or fourth ro rotation of uh, heats. One more round of heats to go. It's going to be a tough one. Are you feeling ready? It's all down to who's going to be signing on pole for that super heat tomorrow. Yeah, I feel confident. I mean, all the other heats, I was very, very fast. That one, I just struggled a little bit. I'm not sure why, but we'll see after in the tent. 
But yeah, I'm feeling very confident going into the last one. Obviously, lots can happen over a race weekend. You know, weather conditions, they, you know, they get better, track heats up, rubber goes down, you know, lots of things change. And uh, with those uh, variables, do you think you and the team, have, you, you, you've got it kind of dialed in and, and ready for this one? Like you were saying, you, you feel like you're confident, but, you know, is everything just coming into play for you? Yeah, I mean, I think the team have a good setup now. We changed quite a lot of things from Valencia. Um, yeah, I think the setup's really good, and hopefully it stays good, I guess. Yeah. That's what we need, isn't it? But uh, it's a long way to go still in this weekend. Tyres has been the main focus, of course, for many people. A completely different track, a much smoother surface as well. Uh, how, how are the tyres feeling for you? Are they still feeling good? Yeah, I'm saving my tyres mostly when the last three heats, I've been saving them a lot. Um, try to use them a little bit there, but sliding a little bit. It's a, it's a tough old track, isn't it? Lots of corners, lots of uh, fast sweeping sections as well. Uh, but we'll see how you get on. You've got one more race today. We'll see how you get on with that one. But right now, you lead in with Gabriel Gomez. That's going to be an interesting fight later on, isn't it? Yep, we'll see who wins. We'll see who wins. Best of luck with that one, uh, Zach. Well, plenty more races coming up. Guillaume, let's head back over to you for the next race coming up soon. Thank you very much, uh, Andy, John, and thank you to Zach Drummond for talking to us uh, live from the uh, Parc Fermé. Zach Drummond, your current uh, leader on points, in the OK class uh, on equal points with Gabriel Gomez. Uh, we have one race to go for each of those drivers. As you heard, the last rotation, we're starting with the junior class, as you see, with D versus E qualifying heat coming up our way. 10 laps to go through, and uh, the uh, green flag is waving, the whistle has been blown. Here we go again, and this is, this is a phase of day two here at Val d'Argenton. After this last rotation of races, there's no more possibilities, as we said, to grab any, uh, any headlines so to grab maybe one last positive result. This is the last chance of those drivers to be able to make a difference uh, in those set of qualifying heats. After that, everybody goes through the super heat and we get a good chunk of uh, drivers, fortunately for them, on the side because half of the 72 drivers going into the super heat, so 36 will make it into tomorrow's afternoon, afternoon's final. Here's the grid in full with Devin Waltz starting from pole position, Dries van Lagendonk by his side, Niklas Schaufler and Roman Kamiab uh, from row number two. Round number three, Matt Corby and Kit Belowski, Matt Scott Marsh and Tristan uh, Krizen, Ily Krizen, shall I say, on row number four. Row five, Vladimir Ivanikov and Michael McCorgie. Row six, Giamato Russo and Bruno Grieg. Remigius Samsic and Oliver Kinmark, row 7. Row 8, George Zazov and Jacopo Martinezzi. Row 9, Arjen Kraling and Makar Savelev. Row 10, Florentin Atemer and Henri Domain. Row 11, uh, Manuel Miguez Gayoso and Augustus Tognolo. Mark Brovkov and El Akinen. Row 12, Row 13, Apo Timonen and Beryl Peldes. Marcel Zebo and uh, Tobias Tenzi. On row 14, 15 is Alexander Wallström and Evan Derunov and Amir Zabirov and Marco Gast sharing row 16. 32 drivers making their way onto the track and still those fantastic weather conditions. 22 degrees Celsius in the air. Still very much dry, sunny and hot out there as uh, you can certainly feel. If you uh, happen to be in the region, please pay us a visit and uh, join us for the last few races of today in Val d'Argenton. Tomorrow the big one with uh, the uh, super heat in the morning, two super heat by class, and uh, one final each in the afternoon. So the six more important races heading uh, tomorrow. But as we said, Anthony, we head into the last phase of the day, the most important ones for all the drivers to secure well, it's been a long day to secure maybe one last good result to try to maybe get themselves into the mix uh, to uh, go through the super heat. From this point on to the super heat tomorrow, we're going to lose a couple of drivers in each of the classes, but still some hopes certainly alive. Some of them at the back end. And here we go. Not just yet, actually. And uh, <laughs> this, this will give us time to finish our convention. Thank you very much indeed, guys. Uh, no, on all seriousness, they go again for one extra formation lap. Martin Bean, our race director, deemed the uh, formation not good enough. And we go again. Let's try on the second attempt. Yes, indeed. Well, like you say, temperatures uh, climbing out there. It's, uh, it's really, really nice out there. It's not burning hot. It's a lovely 22 degrees. And uh, yeah, I think perfect for our drivers. They are, you know, speaking to them when they come in. Or are they covered in sweat? It looks like it's been raining out there. It certainly is a workout for our drivers out there. Because you can lose so much fluid. Keeping hydrated over 
uh, you know, a weekend like this is so, so important. We're only at 22 degrees. Imagine when we get into the summer, when we start reaching things like 35 or uh, maybe even 40 degrees in some parts of the world. So, you know, it really is uh, a really difficult uh, set of conditions these drivers have to deal with. But right now, so it's spring. It's spring right now. We're not in summer just yet. They can have some nice, cooler racing conditions. Here we go, then. We look like we are ready to go for this one. Devin Waltz and Dries van Langendonk. Van Langendonk, who is second in the intermediate classifications, needs a good result in this one. Into the tram lines. Lights go green. Here we go. Down and towards turn one. Great start, then, for the two Fusion uh, Forza drivers who break away well at the front. Keep it nice and steady between the two of them. But Schaufler gets up into second place. One, two cuts off of the background. Jakob Martinez there was one of them. It looked like a Koski uh, was the other. Possible Michael McGow, uh, who was off the track there. But they all rejoin uh, nice and cleanly as they dive down into the braking zone of turn number four and onto the back straight. It is uh, the number 40 of Devin Waltz, who leads from Nicholas Schaufler in P2. Yeah, pretty clean, clean opening lap so far for all the drivers in this uh, class. And uh, once again, as uh, the two teammates from Forza, you want to work together in the lead, even though Nicholas Schaufler was able to uh, get himself in between David Walsh and uh, Dries van Lagenlong as for now. They're coming to turn number 12, 10 laps to go through. As uh, a second train of drivers for the back with uh, Roman Kamiat and the likes of uh, Matt Corby indeed in P5 with uh, the VDK machine. Here they come, one tenth of a second, Niklas Schaffler sniffing around the rear bumper of uh, David Walls on that one. And he knows that the pressure will keep growing for the back as well in his mirrors of Dries van Lagenlong. Dries in third place has three wins to his name so far and uh, he has a good shot at finishing today as leader of uh, the junior classification currently at 214 points to 194 to Sebastian Letimaki we'll see how this all plays out naturally as uh, we're on the inside oh clipping the curb what a move that was Niklas Schoffler takes the lead we felt it coming and uh, look who actually went ahead as well of his uh, teammate Dries van Langenonk the door was open and that's all the Belgian needed. And he keeps on going at this rate, around the inside and takes the lead. That might open the gap as well to his teammate as well to uh, switch the positions back again with a uh, shuffle. That was a bit short on the way to 10.13. As for the back, uh, Kit Belowski is making his attack and uh, actually achieves his attack on Mark Corby, the VTK driver. So Belowski up into P5 and uh, we have Schaufler back into P2. Certainly do. Well, the uh, action really kicking off here. Kamyab under pressure, though. Bolovsky now looking to the inside on the exit of turn four. He's against it as uh, Kamyab gets the drive out of the corner. Schaufler now closing in on Van Langendonk, those two breaking away. But we'll keep an eye on as many battles as we can through the inside. Here comes Scott Marsh on Matt Corby. That didn't work. He stays behind. Very close there. Wheel-to-wheel -wheel action out of turn number seven. Superb stuff here as Van Langendok now actually looks like he's broken away from Schaufler. Volts is closing in on uh, Schaufler now. So it's going a bit of a topsy-turvy race now as the top five have broken away. Uh, Corby leading the next train, followed by Marsh, Kusin, then it's Rousseau, Greek, Ivanikov, uh, Zazov, Krailing, Magau, Sanchek and Hatama all the way down to 16th place. Martinezze just there as well from Kinmark and Toniolo, who's up into 19th. Uh, Savalev rounds out the top 20, crailing with the fastest lap of the race as we watch the top five now breaking away from the rest of the field. The German, the fastest on track indeed. Two tenths of a second still. Oh, and a beautiful move. Roman Kabiab on the waltz indeed. Devin Waltz didn't see this coming, certainly. As Roman Kabiab put, putting up on a really interesting pace in lap number four, taking P3. Two of the Forza drivers surrounding him as Kipilowski is uh, trying as well to take his uh, fusion machine up the Enchelon. And he might want to go for the move uh, on uh, Devin Waltz. Watch out, but it's certainly not... Oh! oh! I was going to say there's no space at all for him to dive through. Uh, I guess he just kicked the door wide open. A bit of a contact there between uh, Belowski and uh, Devin Waltz. I'm sure that the Forza driver won't be too happy about what just happened. But uh, as part of racing, we might need to see that again. And fastest lap in the race for Kitbilovsky. The base is there, and he wants to show it. I would like to say that again, because only because I think that maybe Volts was slightly pinched there between uh, between Bolovsky and Kamya. But I'm not too sure. I need to watch it again. And I think that we can watch it here. So into the corner there, you can see it coming in. And yeah, oh no, no, no! It just lifted that rear up, and the, the rear just rotated around. And 
and yeah, he went through. So mm -mm, well, there, may go. I'm sure race control is probably looking at that one now. And uh, yeah, I don't think uh, that. Yeah, I think you're right there. Drew, uh, Devin Waltz not will uh, will not be happy with that one down into P5. Uh, change again. Can we have now to second place? Schaufler down to third. Now, how did that happen? This will tell us down the inside through turn number 12. Schaufler didn't even defend that one. Just let the position go through. That was uh, nice and clearly done. Kipolovsky seeing a warning flag uh, there for that move down in towards turn one then. So you could see from that replay, race control has seen that and gone, yeah, that's uh, not uh, not what we like to see. Yeah, he felt a little bit of a nudge on the rear bumper. That's uh, what actually put him uh, on the outside line and Devin Waltz allowing Kipolovsky through. Something that uh, the officials indeed won't like to see that again. But, uh, in the meantime, Van Langenong, still three tenths of a second. Roman Kabiab, you know what, is in a prime position to pick up his first win of the weekend if he keeps going at that pace. Van Langenong is in the position where he needs to secure that final fourth and final win out of five attempts. That could make him the uh, one of the two pole sitters for tomorrow. Let me remind you that uh, the one who stays, who finish, finishes ahead as the leader of the classification at this stand is uh, the pole sitter for the first super heat and the driver in second goes on pole position for the uh, super heat number two. So we're going to keep a close watch on uh, how things evolve here. But uh, Dries van Langenhoek, if he stays where he is and win that one, has all the chances to uh, pick up the first pole position available for the super heat of tomorrow. But Roman Kamiab wants to uh, prevent that from happening, oh. certainly. And oh. run inside he goes. Uh, beautifully made from uh, the young British driver. Up in the lead. First time of asking for Roman Kamiab. Now, that's going to be interesting to see the response of, uh, of uh, Dries van Lagendonck. He's uh, been used to uh, have confrontation from uh, in front and behind. And Niklas Schlaufer is there as well to give him a hard time. Don't forget that those two as well are very close on contention for uh, the uh, title as well. Schaufler and van Lagendonck came to uh, France leading both on equal points at 88. Things will change, of course, with the uh, first batch of points rewarded at, at the end of the qualifying heats. But we have the two title contenders close by. Nicely done. And uh, there you can see from Kamia, but also uh, Bolovsky trying to get down the inside of Schaufler as well. Just the background, that door very firmly closed by uh, Schaufler, not wanting to let Bolovsky get ahead. Obviously, all of these drivers will have seen that Bolovsky's got that warning flag, uh, which comes with that penalty. So they'll all be knowing that, OK, we can't allow him ahead because if he can break away and gain those five seconds, you know, we lose out on these positions. So if we can keep them behind us, we know that we're secure and we have these top, uh, top spots. So uh, Pelosi is going to do everything that he can in his power to try and gain these positions. Uh, the rest of them are going to do everything in their power to try and defend these positions. So that uh, certainly leads to a very exciting uh, last couple of laps. Kamiab, though, now with the fastest lap of the race, now he's been given the clean air, uh, starting to break away here. Six tenths of a second is the gap. Uh, certainly looking very strong here. And I'm going to uh, have it a guess. Did he uh, gain new tyres? No, I don't think he did. I don't think he's got new tyres on. So, again, he's just sheer pace out there. Sheer pace, indeed. Not all the drivers needed the, the minority of those. Actually, oh, what a contact there as uh, Kipilowski was uh, diving through. That was an interesting one. Kipilowski is still behind. And those two Ford Racing drivers are going to try to help each other. Into the final lap we go. Van Langenhoek in front of Devin Waltz. That's an interesting piece of action. Kipilovsky has still something to send this race. This is round number two between the two. We had Nutsch before. There was a warning flag for Kipilovsky. He might want to try to do things nicely this time around, but he stays behind the Forza drivers as for now. Yeah, well, they stay in position. They've dropped off the back, though, of Kamiab and Schaufler. They've been uh, led on ahead, but there's a half a second between those two, so eyes will stay on the battle for third place here. Van Langendonk, Volts and Boloski still there. Boloski, though, with that five-second time penalty, will drop backwards uh, at the end of this one, but is still taking a P5 on track. Uh, down the inside, then, just in the background, they stay the same, but at the front here, it is Roman Kamiab uh, for his first win of the weekend. He takes it. A nice victory, then, for Roman Kamiab across the line. Nicholas Schaufler will take second place. A superb, superb drive from the top two in that one, clear by about a second from Van Langendonk in third place. Boloski did get up into P4 uh, in that last corner, uh, but obviously will drop back some way, 6.9 he will have, so he will drop uh, probably all the way down to about P11 
uh, on track. Uh, that will promote everyone else up. So uh, big shame for Polovsky. Drew Voltz then finishing in fifth place from Rousseau. Greek from Ivanikov. Corby from Marsh. The top ten at the end of that one. But uh, Roman Kamyab uh, certainly helps himself out. He doesn't move um, up into the top eight of the intermediate classifications. Van Langendonk holds on to the lead of the intermediate classifications, but he is only clear by 20 points from Sebastian Lettermarki. Remember, it is 50 points for a race win, and Sebastian Lettermarki has been absolutely on it so far this weekend. He's not, uh, well, he has lost only one race, uh, but it wasn't a bad result. Well, there's a look then at the provisional results. We've gone through the top 10. Remy Samcek finishes in 11th place, Martin Kraling. Ili Christian from Augustus Toniolo and Efim Durinov, who rounds out the top 15. Uh, 15 positions gained for the driver of the number 98 uh, for Parallel and Motorsport. Superb run. 16th place downwards sees Kinbach from Savalev. Domain from Dalstrom. Dalstrom gaining 10 places. Uh, Florentine Hatima from Meripeldis rounding out the top 21. Uh, Tobias Lecheny uh, finishing in 22nd place from Marco Gas. Ella Hakkinen finishing in 24th place. Uh, from Manuel Miguez, Mark Brovko from Apo Timonen, Marcel Sebu from Amir Sabrov, Jacopo Mantanese unfortunately dropping down to 30th, not having a good run in that one. Uh, the two retirements, Georgi Zazov and Michael McGow, unfortunately not seeing the end of that race. There is your race uh, winner, though, Roman Kamia, but it is Dresan Langendonk who finished in third place who is your intermediate classifications leader at the end of that one. Takes nothing away from this young man, though, who's had a superb race in that one. And let's see how he did it. He started on the second row of the grid in P4. Stays on the outside, does Kamiab, at the start of this one. You can see him there just trying to slot into the inside. He tucks in behind um, uh, Nicholas Schaufler. Uh, doesn't get the best getaway out of the corner, though. Has to settle for P5 in the early stages. Drama in the background, Martinezze. Uh, going off the track, uh, including one of the Koskis there as well, uh, as they went round turn number four. In towards turn seven, this is where Schaufler got the lead of the race, getting down the inside of Devin Waltz. And Langendonk up into P2. He thought it was going to be a two-horse race that from this point on, as uh, down the inside would go Van Langendonk, he would get the lead. Waltz would try to follow through as well, but Schaufler would hold it round the outside going round turn 13, very brave move here. Later, this was uh, Bolowski going down the inside, uh, getting the move done on the 86 of Matt Corby. Corby finishing that race in ninth place at the end. Kamiab then started to come through, uh, got up into third place. This was the moment uh, that resulted in a, uh, a black and white warning flag to uh, Kip Boloski just getting that nose cone underneath the rear bumper, just unfortunately lifting that rear bumper by millimetres, uh, causing uh, Devon Waltz to go out wide. This was Kamiab taking the lead on lap seven. Nicely done down the inside through turn uh, number four. Oh, that, sorry, into towards turn 12. Then into the final corner, was able to defend it. Schaufler with the attempt in towards turn seven. Got it done and up into second place would hold on to that one uh, for the remainder. And that last moment there, Kamyab trying his best to gain those positions just in the background between the two uh, teammates. Onto the final lap though and checkered flag. It would be Roman Kamyab who would take the checkered, clear by six tenths of a second from Nicholas Schaufler. A superb run at the end of it. Dresan Langendonk rounding out the top three and now taking the lead of the intermediate classifications. Well, they will head back to Park Ferme and we'll head down to Park Ferme with Guillaume Alvarez, who's down there. Over to you. Welcome back, uh, ladies and gentlemen, into the Parc Fermé. Thank you, Anthony. I'm here with Driss van Langendong. Driss, you came to Val d'Argenton as uh, the uh, co-leader of the competition with uh, Nicolas Schaffler. At the end of today, you know, you're one of the leaders, one of the contenders with uh, four wins in the bag. A good day at the office for you? Um, yeah, definitely a good day. I mean, yesterday was a little bit of a struggle, but I think we did quite a good job today. Um, we're still trying to find something, but yeah, I think it's okay for now. Um, I think maybe super eight people, but um, yeah, from, for now it's okay. We, uh, we got some solid points in the bag, so um, yeah, we'll just see how, how tomorrow goes. 
solid points in the bag, a lot of confidence, obviously, with uh, those beautiful results. Uh, you should be starting tomorrow ahead of the pack for the super heats. The hardest part is yet to come, so the confidence after a good night of sleep will be again there tomorrow. Um, yes, uh, the confidence will be high. I mean, I think we have a very good chance of winning. Obviously, there's a lot of strong other drivers like Letty Mackey, Nicholas, uh, and my teammates. Um, yeah, like I said, we're going to see how it goes and uh, just let it come to us. Uh, one final thought. What have you learned about the track that you didn't know coming to Val d'Argenton? Because this is a new layout, a new challenge for everybody. New uh, overtaking spots, certainly, that we've seen happening race after race. But uh, any other new trick in the book? Um, yeah, there's definitely a lot of overtaking spots. Uh, um, yeah, I quite like the track. It's a, it's a good track, quite technical in the second sector and the third. So, yeah, I mean, we'll s I quite like the track, how it goes now. And uh, there's definitely a lot of overtaking spots. And yeah, definitely we'll bring some action for tomorrow. Fantastic, good words. Atal bedankt and Atal Proficiat. We'll see. Uh how things go tomorrow, but uh, best of luck to you, Dries van Langendonke, uh, one of your leaders in uh, the uh, category junior class at the end of uh, the day, with four wins in the bag out of uh, five attempts for Dries van Langendonke. You can feel uh, through his thoughts that the confidence is there. He doesn't want, of course, to uh, fall into overjoy waiting for tomorrow to fall out and see how things go for the Super 8 and the uh, final. But certainly the pace is strong for Forza Racing and Dries van Langendonke. Certainly is out there. Thank you, Guillaume. Down there in uh, Park Ferme. Uh, well, that uh, brings the end of the uh, juniors for Group D and E. Uh, that is the last time we see them out on track today. Uh, and, of course, it all falls down to what happens later on. The next race is coming up very soon. It is the OK category, uh, Groups D and E. And for this one, it is Mark Dubnitsky and Jimmy Elias who start this one on the front row. Now, we uh, spoke to Mark Dubnitsky earlier on after he took a... Uh, a lovely race win as the engines start up and we get ready to go racing for this one. Let's take you through the full starting lineup then for qualifying heat D versus E for the OK category. It's Mark Dubnitsky and Jimmy Elias who start on the front row of the grid. Yindrich Peschel and Noah Wolf on row number two. Lewis Werrell and Kai Rillart round out row three from Salim Hana and Dmitry Matviev on row four. Tiziana Monza and Leon Brunner round out the top ten on row five from Len Nijs and Jacob Mikulev. And it's Elliot Kaczynski and Anatoly Kavalkin. Ian Eichmanns from Stylianos Kolovos on row eight. Then it's Mies Hoopen and David Volta on row nine. Ivo Prastada and Hugo Matti round out the top 20 on row five. Louis Iglesias and Brody Norris round out row 11. Guy Albergino and Peter Stiller go from row 12. Uh, Aaron Cavillo and Jensen Graham round out the 26 cart grid. Drivers head out for their outlap before their formation, getting everything up to temperature. So, reminder of the intermediate classification. Right now, it's dr between Drummond and Gomez. Uh, Ramakas is third, uh, just about nine points behind Gomez and Drummond. Both of them equal on 188 points. Ramakas on 179. Uh, Lewis Francis with 176 from Yindrich Peschel's 168 pressure in this race can he uh, gain those positions to uh, gain up those positions as well no wolf from david cosma jimmy elias is eighth in the ic now he's got 156 points if he can get a race win on this one it puts him up to 206 uh, but that would mean that drummond and gomez in their race later on today would have to score absolutely nothing uh, really for them to really be uh, affecting them so uh, let's see what happens in this one as drivers have got themselves sorted out now they're heading into the chicane for the final time of this formation lap it is mark dimnitsky and jimmy elias on the front row of the grid as you can see the smoke will start to clear now as these engines get up to temperature and sorted out it's going to be a close one now it's the final rotation of qualifying heats for our drivers we are starting to see who is going to come out on top here and we are going to see a big change in the intermediate classification. It is whether or not the drivers later on today, the likes of Drummond, Gomez, Ramakas, Francis, Noah Wolf, and Cosma can hold on to it. Lights go green. Here we go. Dubnitsky to the inside. Holds on the inside row. Peschel holds on as well. 
round the outside. Jimmy Elias, can he hold on to second place? The answer to that is no. He's down into third place as uh, Karts off in the background. One of the DPKs is rejoining. That looks like Glacim Skulinov who gets back onto the circuit. Leon Brunner also having a uh, tough one as well. I think it was actually Leon Brunner that we were seeing out there. Elliot Kaczynski doesn't look like he's come out onto the track. He did have an accident earlier on where he looked to be in a bit of discomfort. I do hope he is okay. The driver reward racing from Sweden, not out on track. Action here though, as Jimmy Elias is getting squeezed down the order. Now he's into P5. A good getaway for pretty much everybody into the field. Let's uh, see how things plays out at the end of this opening lap. Uh, watch out, we might see a move coming up very, very soon. As uh, touching the engine and uh, the uh, carburetion are over there at the end of the uh, fast finish straight. Magdalinski, Hazel, uh, Wolf, uh, Salim Hanna, Elias Kajelach actually having a good one around the inside. Goes Pezel taking the lead inside of uh, turn number three. Beautifully made as uh, Minsky was uh, yeah, indeed uh, busy trying to uh, modify some things uh, with his uh, machinery. And dropping a bit of momentum, watch out for any move. Oh, and Dublinski is being pushed a little bit wide into uh, the double kick uh, of five and six. And that's no good news for him as uh, Noah Wolf, Salim Hanna, Jimmy Elias all went through. And uh, Kajelas was trying to uh, get ahead as well of Noah Dublinski, but Dublinski was able to hold on to that fifth position. Oh, ooh, that was a late move, a late attempt at least, but it didn't go through for Salim Hanna or Noah Wolf. And as a result, it uh, actually dropped him a little bit of momentum. He lost a little bit of touch to uh, Noah Wolf in second place. And that uh, actually brings him to the close of Jimmy Elias, who was uh, keen on trying to go for the overtake. And there he goes into number three. The door was open. And it's unforgiving in those conditions. It certainly is. I thought Silimina's brakes had faded there, because the way he was coming in, you saw him to jerk at the steering wheel. It looked like he completely missed the braking zone uh, for turn 12. I thought it was going straight into the, uh, the rear pumper there of uh, Dimi Elias, but uh, not going to happen. Uh, right, well, as they go through, Wolf uh, holding on to second place. Peschel's breaking away. He's clear by seven tenths of a second now at this stage. Can he hold on to that one? Uh, we will find out as uh, Wolf has just set a purple sector two. So he's looking like he is going to try and close in here. We'll keep an eye on the gaps as the race progresses. It goes up to seven tenths. It was a purple sector three from Jimmy Elias, though. So they're all sort of closing in a little bit on each other. Back here, though, uh, all kicking off uh, just in the background. Now, this is Kai Rillarts from Lewis Werrell. Matviev uh, just there, just behind them. Volta is there as well. Now, David Volta needs a good result here. He does not want to get stuck in a big battle with other drivers. He's had two DNFs earlier on. He needs a good result here. Yeah, definitely. So for David Walter, who has been uh, through an unfortunate a set of uh, turn of events, unfortunately, to DNF, as you said. And uh, as for now, he's uh, climbing as much as possible from 18 on the grid up to P9. Now, look at how close that is, just outside of your picture, coming to turn number 12. There's uh, a lot of drivers and uh, one out, actually. You didn't get to see that just yet, but uh, we lost Anatoly Kavalkin by the look of it, yeah. which is quite unfortunate for uh, the uh, Berlin Motorsport. He was down to 13 place, trying to uh, fight his way through the field, but he won't go any further than lap number five for Anatoly Kavalkin, unfortunately. Uh, there you can see him at 284 already uh, on the sideline of the marshals. Now that is into the entrance of turn number 12, yet uh, he did not come through sector two, which is on the exit of turn seven. So something tells me that incident happened at turn number five, and he's gone clean over the grass there, and his cart's gone on to the other side. So very lucky that the front group there didn't get involved, uh, but uh, still, uh, a very close shave there, and unfortunately for Kavalkin, out of this race. Uh, eyes back here, though, and, well, there you can see Peschel still breaking away. Wolf under pressure now. Jimmy Elias is starting to close in. Salim Hanna also starting to close in. Uh, now, Wolf wasn't able to, to break away. Uh, it's always been a, a tough race for Wolf. He gets himself into second really has great pace here and then just manages it and uh, i don't know if this is the strategy that he's going for uh, this weekend because he's just trying to you know maintain the ties wait for tomorrow but he's been consistently been in that second place spot hasn't he or a little further down not being able to really fight for the front has he no certainly no our wolf has been uh, very consistent indeed and uh, it will pay off in the end as it stands in a second place as for now secured by uh Currently, his second position into that race. Uh, halfway through that uh, D versus E qualifying heat of the senior class. Uh, 
getting towards the end of the day almost a couple of races left the last rotation as we said the most decisive uh, phase of the day and uh, there's uh, no room for mistakes certainly for any of the drivers waiting to uh, secure uh, a place as high as possible on one or two grids for the heats tomorrow the super heat tomorrow as we call them for the past few seasons with half of a ten, half of a second now between Pezel and Noah Wolf under the pressure of Jimmy Elias uh, back into a much better uh, form than uh, we've seen previously Jimmy Elias uh, who's uh, one of the, one of the results actually uh, hurt him a little bit in his uh, search for better performance but look at the pace as well for Tiziano Manza another driver that uh, we're more than happy to see uh, fighting at the front after his trouble earlier at the DNF on a fresh set of flyers as well Tiziano Manza and now he just climbed four places up to a fifth trying to catch up with uh, Salim Hanna Although it's easier said than done at this pace. And some of the drivers are waiting until at the end of uh, those qualifying heats to try to make a difference. Let's not forget as well that uh, those tires, the Maxxis tires, have been put in, under intense work ever since yesterday in qualifying practice. There were two qualifying heats yesterday after the qualifying, three more qualifying heats today, and the super heat of tomorrow. So one and a half set that you want to uh, preserve as much as possible as long as possible to be able to be able to sh extract performance but towards the end of those qualifying heats it's usual to see a drop of performance or at least drivers trying to cool them off a little bit not to go to uh, too much risky situations and uh, they might think they might think actually twice before making a move or at least trying to uh, demand too much of the tires and one of the dpk drivers leon Brunner, Brunner, yeah unfortunately 237 has dropped out of this race unfortunately he was at the back end of the grid but uh, still that's not what you want to see yeah, it certainly isn't well uh the race progressing on now on to lap nine of 12 and oh, well peschel leading the way but the gap is coming down uh no wolf has closed back in now with helias hannah and uh monza who is just behind now monza's in a bit of a no man's land here he's uh he, he's not with the group behind which is real arts where old uh, well, Rilatz just lost out. Werrell's got up into P6 now. Matviev, Walter, uh, Rilatz and Mikulev are still there in the top 10. Uh, but, uh, yeah, they're all just trying to close in on each other now. Eyes on Salim Hanar there. You can see the whole grid going through. But Wolf is closing in on Yindrich Peschel. Now, Peschel's doing exactly what he needs to do here, which is, well, lead the way and try and gain as many IC points as he can. Wolf is doing exactly the same. Wolf is second in the IC uh, with 203 points. That puts him ahead of uh, Drummond and Gomez, but they are out in the last race of today and they are in complete competition with each other. It is a dead heat between those two, both on 188 points. The only question that remains is, if they both don't finish that race, we'll knock on wood later on today. We don't want to see that. Um, you know, that would put these guys in a prime position to potentially lead and maybe go for pole for those finals later on. It's such a fine line in Carton. You can't make a call on it, can you, Dion? No, absolutely not indeed. As uh, as we talked to Dries van Langenhoek in the Chino class, you know, he said the confidence was there, but he's not too sure yet yeah. uh, about starting uh, on pole, at least for the first or the second super heat, depending on the Sebastian Timaki's results in his last race. We'll come back to that uh, once we go with the genius, obviously. But uh, as you said, Drummond and Gomez on equal points from fourth and fifth, respectively. That's going to be a uh, one last showdown, absolutely fantastic to follow uh, between the two. And uh, that will take us to the last race of the day, the B versus C, uh, to decide which of the drivers Ooh. in the senior class will go uh, from pole as a switch of positions in uh, the meantime. Noah Wolf uh, making his bid for P1. Just happened in the, the hairpin of turn number seven. Certainly the hardest of all spots for overtaking maneuvers. And on the penultimate lap, that might be the right time unless and unless any of the three drivers following is said to go for a very late move, Oof. he's going to go defensive as we get into the last lap. That's going to be a hard one for Wolf and the diving around the outside, sliding a little bit too far. Salim Hanna is dropping third place to the profit of Jimmy Elias. Yeah, that was again just getting pinched into that breaking zone of turn number one. Uh, was not able to hold on to it. Hanna down into P4 now. Well, it was a clear, decisive move to go defensive there from Noah Wolf, and you can see there, not fully happy as Helias goes back down the inside, goes wheel to wheel with Peschel. Peschel now under pressure. Werrell gets a warning flag. Uh, now he's in the battle that's just further behind. In fact, actually, he's dropped down to P14 now, but it looks to be like this could go the way of Noah Wolf, and this would be his first win of the weekend. 
Yeah, watch out as well for the return of Titan Manza. Potentially is uh, queuing the train. This will be too late, and I'm afraid for him. The checkered flag is waving and bending on his wheel, as you saw him doing. Noah Wolf trying to pick up the pace a little bit to secure that win. And as a sign of rage and confidence, taking his first qualifying hit of the weekend. Well done to Noah Wolf at the wheel of his Pirelat machine. And the colors of Van Amersfoort, the first ever driver picked up by this newly created junior program by the uh, famous Dutch team involved in single-seater racing. Noah Wolf uh, takes the win, six tenths of a second from Jimmy Elias and Jedris Pezel saving P3 just in front of Salim Hanna, Jedda Monza in the top five. Uh, what a good result it was for uh, Noah Wolf uh, that we've seen indeed battling at the forefront uh, ever since the start of the weekend, uh, piling up the good results, but in the end, uh, the patience uh, proved to be uh, paying off for him as he was rewarded with one last winning results to conclude today's schedule for him. That was uh, D versus E, the OK uh, category qualifying heat uh, concluded now as drivers make their way back to the Parc Fermé. We'll switch our attention in a few moments to the junior category with the A versus F. Uh, in the meantime, here's the uh, classification in full. Noah Wolf uh, picking his first victory of the weekend from Jimmy Elias. Uh, Pedro Spezel, Salim Hanna, Tijan Monza, Dimitri Madviv. A sixth place result certainly being his best so far. David Walter picking up 11 positions up to P7 from Kai Reilartz. Jakob Mikalev, Ian Aikmans, Hugo Marti, Lewis Squirrel, Miss Oben, Mark Ludinski, and uh, Louis Iglesias down in P16, climbing six uh, places for the young driver from CRG. P16 is Ivo Besterda from Guy Albag, Peter Stiller, and Len Nace, uh, Stylianos Kolovos, Kolo Jason Graham, uh, Brody Norris, and Aaron Kivilo. Three drivers uh, that uh, missed out in this race. Elliot Kaczynski did not start this qualifying heat, and we lost Anatoly Kavalkin and Leo O'Brunner. Well done to uh, Noah Wolf, uh, young British driver from uh, the uh, Pirelacht factory team, supported by Van Amersfoort. Here's a look back at how things unfolded into this race with a good start on the left side of your picture from Mark Dumdinsky with uh, the CRG colors. Dumdinsky who uh, handed up all the way down to P14 in the end, the pole sitter. So disastrous turn of events as the race progressed. They all started well, resisting the pressure from Jedrich Pezel and the 247 of uh, Leon Brunner ran into trouble as early as the turn number one that led to his uh, DNF, unfortunately, later on into this race. Apart from that, it was a pretty clean opening lap for uh, some of the uh, other drivers as a uh, first attack around the inside from Noah Wolf picking, picking up the pace and that's the moment when Mark Dudinski started to fall down the order after that slight contact that uh, pushed him on the uh, outer side of the track you can see a better angle here onto the curb and uh, above from that point on the door was open and it was flowing from uh, left and right as from the inside making his bit as well to uh, 32 of, uh, trying to uh, resist as well, Van Dubinsky trying to uh, climb back as well. This was uh, done and over for Leon Brunner, unfortunately, as uh, Noah Wolf kept on fighting, picking up the pace uh, one after one. The door was open, uh, Jitu Spezel trying to resist as well and uh, keeping Salim Hanna behind him. Salim Hanna being uh, a little bit violated and uh, pushed on the other side of the track here in turn number one to uh, the advantage of Jimmy Elias. And Salah uh, would not be able to uh, keep up and catch up with uh, the uh, driver in the end. Uh, Noah Wolf picking up his first win of uh, the day and of the weekend in front of Jimmy Elias, Jiren Pezel, Salim Hanna, and Tijana Manza, and the rest of the classification. Uh, we go back to the Parc Fermé with you, Anthony Jordan. Let's hear for, from uh, one of the contenders of this qualifying heat. Well, thank you very much, Guillaume. Down here in Parc Fermé with our race winner for that one, Noah Wolf, race winner and Technically, intermediate classification uh, leader as well. You're leading, uh, or joint leading with Ginger's Pressure with uh, 209 points. This is a good thing uh, going into the, the later after the day. That's your last race of the day. And it seems to be going all well. This weekend, it seems to be uh, sorting you out. Well, uh, it's going well, isn't it? Yeah, very well. <laughs> the experience I've had from the start of the year is paying off. Every race we've been improving, and now look where we have ended up. Exactly that. You're, you're fighting at the front here. Talks about, uh, you know, what can happen tomorrow. Obviously, it's going to be a tough old day. Um, I don't know what the weather's going to be like, you know, hopefully like this, because it's, uh, it's been lovely, hasn't it? But uh, tell us about the track out there. I'm seeing cars, they're sliding around quite a bit. How are you feeling? Uh, they're sliding just because of the age of the tyre. The track is really grippy, actually. 
Um, but we'll see what tomorrow brings. Yep, exactly. You've still got some more races to go a little bit here. You've got uh, Gomez and Drummond who are going to go up for their final one. Obviously, we wish them all the best for their race, but you're battling them now to, to lead the IC. Uh, what are you hoping to happen? Who would you prefer to be joint with uh, in the Super Heat? I mean, I wouldn't really want to be joint with anyone. I'd like to be leading, but yeah, I would want to be leading. We'll see how it goes. Well, congratulations. Well done. We'll see what you can get up to tomorrow. Congratulations. Thank you very much, Anthony. Excellent stuff there. Well, more races to go again. We'll head back over to you in the commentary box. Thank you very much indeed, Anthony Jordan. And, and thank you to you and Noah Wall for talking to us in uh, the Parc Fermé. As uh, the British driver was uh, the first one to uh, reach the uh, Chica flag in this race, picking up his first win and joining in the uh, circle of winners in uh, the uh, OK class. The likes of... Uh, yeah, other uh, drivers indeed in that uh, category picking up the race one band one in the uh, okay category for uh, Zach for uh, Noah Wolf. Sorry, it was a uh, good overall results uh, joining the likes of uh, Thibaut Ramakers as well as uh, Louis uh, Francis, uh, Madublinski, Zach uh, Drummond, among other winners in the uh, okay uh, category so far. Now we're going to turn our attention to the junior class, if you will, as uh, the uh, Qualifying heat opposing group A and F is coming up and the sun is still very much with us. Here's what's left on the schedule this afternoon. A versus F in the junior category, the same group in the OK. And then, then we uh, go to the last two races of the afternoon, B versus C for uh, the juniors and then the OK seniors to run things up at about uh, half past five local time here in Val d'Argenton. A few seconds left on the clock and the uh, green flag will be waved, allowing the drivers to make their way onto the track. Uh, we're going to go uh, through the grid in a moment with uh, Sebastian Timaki and Casper Rashbald sharing the front row of the grid. Here's a look on that famous grandstand of uh, the uh, Karting de Val d'Argenton, the biggest grandstand you'll ever find in the world of karting, not only in France, in all over Europe and beyond, certainly. Sebastian Timaki will be the driver starting on pole position. The Koski Motorsport representant is uh, one of those to keep an eye on uh, with uh, strong results uh, to his name so far, Martin Glinski. He picked up his, uh, uh, Sebastian Timaki, shall I say. He picked up uh, a couple of wins on the way, three wins so far on equal results as uh, Dries van Lagendonk. Now, the question remains, can Sebastian Timaki go for a fourth win in this uh, fifth and last qualifying race? And uh, with that, taking the overall leadership in the classification. As for now, is missing uh, 20 points on Dries van Langendonk, your current leader after his last race, picking up three races out of five attempts. Now it's time to Letimaki to try to do better than the Belgian. Sebastian Letimaki on uh, pole position for this race with Kasper Rashpold by his side, uh, Kenzo Kwengi and uh, Kara Finrand on uh, row number two, Asper Kostein and Rocco Cornell row number three, row four, Alfie Slater and Bosco Aria, then Al Alex Martinez and Louis Cochet. Uh, Jun Zhao and uh, Jerry Clark, row six, row seven, uh, Joel Pohola and Arthur Wong, row eight, uh, Alois Girardi and Paul Andriotis, row nine, uh, Jensen Burnett and Ethan Lennon, row ten, Scott Lindblom and Noah Baglin, Gustavo Marquez da Silva and Oliver Rasmussen, row eleven, row twelve, uh, Travis Theo and Yadra Detroja, row thirteen, Nikita uh, Nikishov and GC Phillips, row fourteen, Arson Mackey and Thomas Gender, Colin Nehon and Drew Waltz on row fifteen, and sixteen and last, uh, Philip Reyes. We saw in the races earlier on drivers making positions thick and fast. Nikita Nikshov being one of those drivers starting this one on the 13th row of the grid. Uh, can we see a repeat of that one for many others? For Sebastian Lettermarki, this is an important one. He sits second in the IC. He needs to get past Van Langendonk. This is his race to get that one done. With him only being 20 points behind and 50 points up for grabs for a win, it is highly probable that that will be the case, but nothing is set in stone just yet. We have seen drivers go from the front to the back very quickly in these qualifying heats. And at the Val d'Argenton circuit, where the racing can be fast but fierce, we just don't know who is going to come away at the end of this one. We're down to the last few races here in France for Saturday before we go into, or on Sunday, Friday, I should say, before we go into the finals of Superheats on 
Saturday. There we go. Always make sure I get that one right for champions. Here we go then into the tram lines. Lights go green. We are away and racing. And it is a great start for the two Koski drivers, Letomaki and Reipold, at the front of this grid as they go through. It's Craigie down the inside as they hold on to it. One of the CRGs runs wide. And that was Rocco Coronel, I think, who's got caught out in a lot of that in the background. It's the 57 and 31 that have come off the worst. And that's uh, Asher Oshdeen. Uh, who I think was the first driver who went off, but it was Bosco Arias and Arthur Huang, the two drivers who are stuck at turn one and tangled with each other. I think both are going to try and get it restarted. No, both have failed to get it restarted. They are both out of this race. That is a big shame. Now, that all started with, I think, Asher Oshtin going wide uh, at turn number one. I'd be curious if we could see a replay of that one. Both drivers on their feet is good to see, uh, but how on earth did that all unfold? Yeah, we're going to need maybe to see that again. And that's a shame for Arthur Wong. It's not the first time that they went, ran into trouble on this track. As uh, lap one is completed under the uh, leadership of Sebastian Netimaki. He does what he needs to do, building up the gap, uh, trying not to get caught again by Kenzo Krangi. And as it stands, he's uh, taking the lead of the overall classification of things. Sebastian Netimaki to a uh, 2.44, with uh, Dries van Langenong dropping to second place. Uh, close on points with uh, Rashpol and Krangi. So maybe it's not over yet for Ken, uh, Kenzo Krangi. If he can actually make it to P1, that could put him ahead of Dries van Langenhoek as one of the two pole sitters. Around inside goes uh, Bohola on the rush pole, beautifully made on the Koski Motorsport driver for P3. And this is the second train of driver, the first one with Leti Martin Krangi battling along for supremacy Ooh. into this junior class and around the outside of turn number 12. One of them is going to go side by side into turn number 13. That was an impressive set indeed as uh, Bohala and Netimaki uh, just switched position. It was one of the premiers, Kenzo Krenge, taking the lead of that race. We're back here on board with Rocco Coronel sitting uh, currently further back in P10, dropping four positions, as you can see, for the uh, young uh, Dutchman. So change of leadership. Kenzo Krenge in the lead in front of uh, Joel Bohala. Sebastian Netimaki dropping from first to third. And Rocco Coronel, you can see him gesturing live behind the wheel. He's not happy at all, the young Dutchman. And a contact! Unfortunately, Sebastian Letimaki, this is a big drama for him. He drops momentum, which seemed to be pushed a little bit on the grass. But the momentum has been killed right in there in turn number seven for Letimaki. Now he finds himself under pressure from Alfie Slater. And he might lose another position by the look of it. Oh, disaster certainly for uh, Sebastian Letimaki, who saw himself in the lead, certainly winning that one already. And now he's going to have to fight his way back through. He is certainly going to have to fight his way back through. He did do that earlier on as well. He dropped out down into the field. He did claw it back, though, but that was earlier on when the tyres were fresher. This is later on. The tyres are worse off now. We were talking about it. You're talking about drivers who start at the front. It's not all plain sailing. You can see your Bokola there just saying to uh, Kenzo Craigie, uh, just keep going, just keep going. Uh, but this is the highest Bokola has been. He's gained 11 places. Scratch that. Make it 12. He's in the race lead. Your Bokola out of nowhere for Tony Kart is leading this qualifying heat. Uh, I, would, I would think that maybe baby Bohola decided to go with a uh, half a set of fresher tires. Uh, looking at the base, he's been going with 12 places gained up to first. That uh, is a position on my side, but Bohola has been showing great pace into that qualifying heat as we enter lap number five out of 10. Bohola, cranky, Kasper Harshpol in third, Alois Girard in P4, P5 for Zao from Slater, Leti Marke down in P7 from Finra Coronel and backlane as it stands sebastian Letimaki is still your overall leader so nothing is uh, completely done uh, for him he still leads the way with one race to go in the junior class but if it stays like that he might still have a chance to start from pole in one of the two super heat Dries van lagenonk in the meantime still second overall due to uh, rashball and craigie uh, running into some trouble they are on equal points uh, those two split by just three points to address van lagenonk so at this point it's a wide open for supremacy in the junior class in the overall ranking uh, before the superheat of tomorrow. And it's down to Pahala to maybe make a difference and prevent the Cranky from winning that one. Certainly so. We well, can see there Kenzo Cranky going back to his uh, cadet days there in that uh, car, hopping up and down in the seat, trying to get as much as he can out of that Bremer car down the main straight. Uh, and that's just something a racing driver will never forget what to do. You see it in the in the top tier of uh, motorsport. You've seen F1 drivers do it in the past, where they exit out of a corner and they push their head forward. They go, 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 go. And that's exactly what uh, Kenzo Craigie's doing right there. Uh, 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 well, I mean, 
The downside to that is every uh, reaction has an equal and opposite reaction, so he may go forward, it will go backwards again. Uh, but right now, he's staying there in P2, doing what he needs to do. He did close in quite a bit in that previous lap, really looking quite strong there, but Pocola looking much, much stronger uh, in that Tony Kart as it tries to break away now. Reinpold still there, off the track. Now, that is a disaster for the number 42 off the circuit. That is Forza Racing, Drew Roltz. Unfortunately, the American is out of another race here. That is a disaster. He will tumble down the intermediate classifications now. Yeah, that's too bad for him indeed, as he joins Louis Cochert, Wong and Colin then home in uh, those uh, drivers missing out on uh, the race. So far, Arison Mackey putting on the fastest lap from uh, P10 on the grid. 17 places gained for Arison Mackey with uh, certainly a fresher rubber put on as uh, he's going to try to keep on climbing this field. He only has a six tenths of a second uh, splitting him from uh, Rocco Cornell to enter uh, the top nine as we speak. We're going to keep an eye on that. In the meantime, three tenths only between uh, your leader, Orhel Pohola, and uh, Kenzo Krenge. That's important for Krenge because uh, there's a place up at the forefront of uh, the starting grid for the superheat at stake. As for now, Leti Mark is still very much your leader in front of Dries van Langendonck, who concluded his run of heats. Rashbold is down in P3 on equal points still with Krenge. So Krenge needs to get ahead, keep Kasper Rashbold behind and get ahead of Pohola, win that one to uh, get ahead and uh, put himself in second place potentially. Remains to be seen uh, towards the end of that race. Uh, of course, those results will be made official towards the end of the day with the first point awarded uh, this weekend uh, for the overall championship. Uh, look at Halfie Slater uh, in a bit of a trouble there with Rocco Coronel and Ferran indeed making his way past with the Pauline machine up into P7 for uh, Ferrari. Well done to him. Now it's down to Slater and maybe Coronel try to fight back. Coronel run inside of the young British men and watch out as well for Harrison Mackey. We told you he's on the base. 18 place gain up into uh, one more in front of Alfie Slater as we enter lap number nine. Arsenal Mackey is on a charge with the fusion machine. There's no one stopping oh. and Coronel is in trouble. Coronel is in trouble. And I think he went wide into turn number one. He actually was able to get going onto the track. But uh, was there maybe contact slightly between the two or was it a mistake from the Dutchman? We might need to see that again. Yeah, we might need to. But uh, Ethan Lennon now with the fastest lap of the race is trying to make his way. Uh, through the field currently in P12 up six places Harrison Mackey is on a run here uh, he is up 18 positions now remember he deployed the fresh tires earlier on but crashed out in the opening lap didn't get the result he wanted this is the result that he wanted this is his Hail Mary really to try and make sure he gets through into those super heats tomorrow it's been a dismal weekend for Harrison Mackey but this race has certainly been the one he needs off the track there goes uh, I think that's Noah Baglin uh, battling away just in that uh, sharp section there. Uh, yeah, he does. Uh, Limblom and Oshtin go through. Bagling down to 15th place on the final lap then. Uh, back to Jörg Pokola, who is now set the fastest lap of the race. 51.364 on that last lap. Found some pace here uh, and has opened up the gap to three tenths per second between himself and Craigie. This fight here, though, uh, is back with the race lead. Uh, as you can see, yeah, that gap is opened up for Jörg Pokola, though. This is a superb uh, drive for him. Craigie, uh, it helps him out, but isn't helping out fully. Uh, he stays uh, fourth in the intermediate classifications from Rypold. Sebastian Lettermarki would now lead the intermediate classifications, despite the fact that he's down there in P6. Uh, he has lost a full advantage, which means Van Langendonk has less to do later on. But it is Joel Pokola for Tony Kart, who takes the win from Kenzo Craigie across the line. Rypold will finish third from uh, Zhao Zizun finishing in fourth place, seven places gained from Sebastian Lettermarki. Alois Girier finishes in sixth place, nine places gained for the Frenchman. Get a fair hand finishing in seventh place. Harrison Mackey, 19 positions gained, finishing in P8 from Alfie Slater. Paul Andriotis rounding out the top 10 after gaining six places. But they're your race winner at the end of the OK Junior qualifying heat A versus F. Make his way back to Park Verme. Joel Pokola on top spot now here. Craigie, second, like I say, up into fourth. Rypold, with that third place finish, bumps himself up third in the intermediate classification, joint on points with Kenzo Craigie. Uh, Rypold uh, beating uh, Craigie. Uh, on track will make sure that he stays above there. So Dresan Langendok down to second 
in the IC, but is only down by 15 points. So the ball very much in Van Langendonk's side of the court. There is a look at the uh, classifications at the end of that one. Ethan Lennon in 11th place from Rocket Coronel. Scott Lindblom, Noah Baglin from Alex Martinez, who rounds out the top uh, 15. So many positions gained. Anthony Otis, six places gained. Lennon, seven places. Lindblom, six. And Baglin, six as well. So. Uh, big positions gained uh, in that one. 16th place down sees Asher Austin and Jensen Burnett. Nikita Nikshoff, who was up seven places, uh, also having another good race there. Just got, uh, Gustavo de Silva uh, finishing in 19th place. Travis Taylor rounds out the top 20, uh, up three places from Oliver Rasmussen, Jared Troja from Felipe Reis, uh, Jesse Phillips from Jarrett Clark. Thomas Gender rounds out the 26 carts that finished that race. Uh, the drivers who retired or did not start. Drew Volt's retirement, Bosco Arias, Louis Cochet, Arthur Huang, and the non-starter, Cole Denham, unfortunately uh, not starting that race. Big smiles, though, on the face of Joel Pokula, who takes the win at the end of qualifying heat A versus F. And as you can imagine, with the heat bearing down, 22 degrees out there, you can imagine that was a tough race. Let's have a look at the highlights from that one. For Rai Pol and Lettermark, it was a good start to the race. Now, what happened further behind? Because I believe it all started with Asher Oshting, the number 51. Watch him, he's on the inside line here, loses the back end a lot there, and then really causes the concertina effect, and then the whole pack just bunches into each other. So yeah, we are right, and unfortunately, the two drivers who lost out the most on that one, Arthur Huang and uh, Bosco Alias, unfortunately, is on board uh, further back in the field. This is with... Um, uh, I believe Rocco Coronel, who are on board with, yeah, who got caught out a little bit in that, but are managing to get through it. And uh, there you can see a lot of dust on the tyres. Another angle of it here, yeah, just out wide, and then boom, Constantino effect kicks in. Drivers having to take to the uh, the runoff there. Yeah, uh, you can see Rocco Coronel was actually very lucky in that one, just getting through, but everyone else parting like the Red Sea uh, to get around that. Uh, back on board with uh, Rocco Coronel as he went wheel to wheel with Gary Fairhand. And uh, Perhan trying to go defensive there, almost trying to get his cart down the inside. He would then send it down the inside of the number 78, Alex Martinez. Martinez would have to drop down. And there was the frustration from Rocco Coronel, just saying, come on, don't, don't look behind you. Focus on driving ahead. Uh, so you can imagine frustration kicking in, especially after the opening lap like that. Uh, Sebastian Letzemaki, unfortunately him, dropping down the order. The driver who started on pole position. Uh, finishing in P5, so still not the end of the world. It's still a good result. And he still leads the intermediate classification, but only uh, by a handful of points. Only 16 points separates him and Dries van Langendonk, who has still got another race uh, later on today. The same uh, with uh, Blue Schaufler and Devon Waltz as well. They will be out later on today as well for their last qualifying heat. Uh, Salah out there as well. Uh, love it, Christian Costoro. No, actually, they are done for the day, aren't they? So they are stuck in that position. Uh, well, the race continued onto that one, onto lap number eight. And again, Coronel just trying to get his wagon down the inside. This was him going wheel to wheel uh, with the uh, seven, uh, 27 of uh, Alfie Slater, just getting that nose down the inside later on, closing in. Uh, to Ethan Lennon for the Beyond Racing team. The South Africans still having a good race in that one. Seven positions gained uh, in that race. Uh, but it would go to Joel Pokola after gaining 12 places uh, in that qualifying heat. He would take his first win of the weekend. And a thumbs up there from Kenzo Craigie supporting that race win. Well, a superb run. But Sebastian Lettermarki leads the intermediate classification. But in the meantime, we're going to head down to Park Ferme. Guillaume Alvarez, it is over to you. Thank you, Anthony. We're here in the Park Ferme once again with Sebastian Lettermarki. Sebastian, congratulations are in order. The end of the day, and you did the job. You finish ahead in the junior class. That's P1 and pole position for the first Super Heat tomorrow. How do you feel? Well, of course, it feels amazing. Like, uh, first time with the new team and uh, it's going really good um yeah three wins the last heat what i did now we were a bit struggling with the pace but uh, it was enough for paul it was enough indeed a lot of competition out there what uh, what can you tell us that you've learned so far in terms of uh, learning the track and uh, about the competitiveness of the field because uh, this hasn't been an easy job and uh, the rest is, uh, is going to be even harder tomorrow 
Well, I mean, uh, I think we have a good setup with the car for tomorrow, and uh, yeah, I will just uh, stay calm and uh, see what I can do. When it comes to uh, you know the night before the last day, the, the most important one, do you have any rituals? Do you have like any tradition that you like to do? Do you go for a long night of sleep? Do you like to take your mind off things and uh, do something entirely different? Uh, do you have any mojo about that to stay focused and to uh, you know get back up to speed tomorrow? I mean, I just eat good and sleep good. I don't really have any rituals for it, but yeah, good sleep is always best. Fantastic. Thanks very much for talking to us and uh, best of luck tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks very much, Sebastian Letimaki, who did a job indeed with uh, three wins out of five. It was enough for him to finish ahead in the uh, classification ahead of uh, Dries van Lagendong. It was a close call and the great racing into the category all throughout the day. One last race for the junior class, as well as uh, towards the end of the day for the OK senior category to decide who will start on pole position for the Super Hit tomorrow. Thank you very much, Guillaume. Down there, there you can see the recovery vehicle just uh, pulling off the circuit after uh, the well, four cuts stricken out onto the track. There you can see the next race coming out onto the circuit. It is the OK qualifying heat A versus F. Back to the seniors now, David Cosma. Uh, Alexander Bondarev starting that one on the front row. A reminder of the intermediate classifications. Uh, it is a little bit interesting. Uh, Yindrich Peschel leads that one at the moment. Uh, now, uh, David Cosmo Christopher is not within the top eight, but after this race, I suspect Will uh, choose he wants to push himself up. Uh, Bondarev also does not sit within the top eight, but again, that may change. Now, you can see from that picture there, there has been a switch. It looks like David Cosma Christopher has decided he would like to start from the outside of row one. Now, uh, that's quite a peculiar one uh, because we have not seen that work from the outside many times today. Uh, but he's going for it. So let's see what happens uh, in this race because that's the first time we've seen that uh, rule deployed uh, this weekend so far. Uh, Tiba Ramakers and Luna Flusha will be starting just behind as well. Uh, Ramakers, who is in that top eight, currently sits sixth. Now, if he was to gain 50 points in this one, he would get himself up to, uh, quick mass on the top of my head, uh, 229 points. So he would lead uh, ahead of that one. Uh, so he's in a position to knock down Peschel, Wolf, uh, Elias as well. Uh, but again, he's, he's got to make sure that he can win that one. And obviously, if he, he's dropped down too far or anything like that, it's uh, not likely that he would. But uh, again, the same for uh, Luna Flusher, who has had some good results, but also did have that DNF. Unfortunately, doesn't sit in the top eight. But uh, the whistle blows. Let's see what happens then as the racing is about to get underway. It is qualifying heat A versus F. For the OK category, it's David Cosma Christopher who leads this one from the front row of the grid with Alexander Bondarev alongside. Tiba Ramakas and Luna Flusha go from the second row of the grid. Davide Batara and Ludovico Busso round out row three from Guillaume Buzar and Marcus Shilkunis on row four. Santino Panetta and Alpac Soy round out the top ten on row five with Finn McLaughlin and Noam Montero on row six. Grayson Skulinov and Dante Vinci go from row seven. Marilla De Rocca and Joe Turney round out row eight from Miguel Costa and Tame Soleil on row nine. The top 20 being Blake Nash and Vodcek Voda. Row 11, Alphonse Mittenen and Hugo Rasmajets. Then it's row 12 of Thomas Kinsey and Marius Badiberg. Row 13 is Kian Farden and Nico Juanalate from Finland. Well, 12 laps is upon us for qualifying heat A versus F. We could go over the maths uh, to our heart's content. There's uh, nine times out of 10 possibility that we will not get it right uh, and we will mess it up. So me and Guillaume uh, in the commentary box will uh, not try and do live maths. Uh, it is not our forte. We will let the uh, wonderful guys in timekeeping do all that for us uh, with the Apex system, uh, which will show live intermediate classification points. And you too, again, uh, the viewer at home, if you've got a spare screen, a mobile, a tablet, a laptop, if you're watching this on the TV, which you should be, uh, you can also check out the live time. You can head to the Chapters of the Future webpage, click on the live timing link, and you can see exactly what we see in the commentary box. You can see all of the live data, the sector times, absolutely everything that you see out there. So make sure you do check onto that one. Uh, right, uh, going into this one, uh, again, uh, we talk about the match. It's Peschel who leads the way. Wolf, Helias, they're the top three. They've just been out. They're not out again at all today. Uh, drivers who are out in this one. Obviously, Ramakers, who is uh, there, sixth in the IC. 
Uh, then you've got uh, Salim Hala, who is not out in this one, I don't believe, no. Uh, and then you've got Lewis Francis, who is also not out in this one. They will be out in the last race of the day. Lewis Francis, Gabriel Gomez and Zach Drummond, who are all three of those drivers in that top three. We will see them battling out later on to finally decide who will be on pole for that one. Uh, but we are not far away from finding out who's going to be on pole for the juniors. But right now, we're going to focus on the seniors. And it is going to be a front row start for David Cosma and Alexander Bondarev choosing to switch sides. Uh, now, is that green flag? Yes, it is. It is green flag. We are away and racing, and it's a great start from Cosma. And Flusha is up into second place. That has massively benefited her as she had the race leader starting on the outside row. That's a great start. Yeah, great start indeed. And uh, oh, and a bit of a contact in turn number three. And a 218 by Dirk got tangled over there. And then uh, let's try to see who that I was. It, it was a 278 maybe of Alpac Shoy yeah. from uh, Bowen Motorsport indeed. Yeah, it was uh, in the middle of the pack. It got tangled over there. I was trying to get back, but uh, unfortunately, there's DNF already for Alpac. So 278 that is, unfortunately, for the driver from Turkey. Now, getting back into the uh, upper part of the field, into the chicane. The driver is trying to uh, find the appropriate racing line. Thibaut Ranaker is doing his bit on the inside already. A well done to him just in front of, uh, I think it was Luna Flusha, the Alexander Bondarev, my apologies, that he went ahead. Bondarev being taken in sandwich with Mar Marcas Kunas just behind. It was to had a bit of a history, uh, I remember, if you were with us earlier today. And uh, a little bit of a contact between Bondarev and Silkunas, uh, leading to uh, the DNF for the Seattle driver and a 10 second penalty for. Uh, Alexander Bondarev, who uh, told me actually earlier when I caught, I caught him in the paddock that he actually didn't see uh, his rival uh, coming just behind and he wanted to uh, dive slightly a little bit while breaking onto the turn and that led to uh, them to coming together, unfortunately. David Cosma Christopher is your leader, three tenths of a second in front of Luna Felucia, indeed, who uh, keeps going at a great pace as run inside, diving through. That was beautifully made by uh, the 220 by the look of it with the sun actually coming down onto the track is uh, becoming tricky and trickier i think it might be uh, one of the vdk drivers further back uh, maybe phil mccoughlin we'll get back to that it was a great move uh, pulled by one of the drivers in the middle as tibu ramakus is keeping himself close there you can see him the belgian run inside the door was open and he takes full advantage of it and get ahead on Busso for P3. Certainly so. Alpac Soy receives a warning flag as well, so a bit of insult to injury. Takes a spin, he's out of the race, and also gets a five-second uh, in-race time penalty as well. Not what you want to see. Uh, Cosmo leading the way then. Flusha holding on to second place. Like the same, Ramaka's there, uh, just getting ahead of Busso. Uh, Shokunis up ahead of Bondarev now. They've changed position, and uh, while Blake Nash has had a bad one, he has tumbled down uh, the order. Uh, now he's just gone down all the way, uh, well, right down the field actually, to 24th place on that lap. So he's certainly not had a good sector. Race continuing then, and well, the top four with a nice clean breakaway. Uh, as we look a little further down in the field here, there you can see uh, Guillaume Buzar, Finn McLaughlin, uh, Santino Panetta, and Davide Bataro. Uh, so that is a uh, lonely uh, Cup Republic in a sea of. Uh, 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 CRGs, or the VDK racing driver, I should say, are on the Cut Republic chassis, uh, surrounded by CRGs. And, uh, yeah, that's probably not the most comfortable of places to be right now. Uh, would you agree, Yeah, Absolutely, definitely so, as uh, Guillaume Buzar is making his bait as well. Phil McAuchlin is the one at the, at the wheel of the VDK machine with Panetta, Botaro, and uh, Buzar just in front. As uh, we're back here with uh, Thibaut Remakers wearing the Chateau Racing Colors into turn number three, 13. He just made his way past... Uh, Luna Flusha for P2. So once again, a good run for Thibaut Ramakers, whose pace has been uh, really, really getting better and better race by race. He only has two wins to his name, uh, Thibaut Ramakers. And uh, currently, according to the math, he's leading the uh, classification, but it's still very much provisional because we have one race to go in the Oka class. And two drivers, as we said before, Zach Drummond and, and Gabriel Gomez, will be uh, going into this race head to head pretty much with uh, all the hopes open uh, to steal pole position. But whatever. Anything can still happen, of course, at this point. Thibaut Ramakers has one job, win this one as much as uh, David Cosma Christopher because it's, he stands at the moment in fourth overall as run in, sign in turn number 12, uh, goes the drive for B4. Oh. That, that was a battle for P3 between the Busso and Luna Flusha, but the look of it, Flusha uh, stays ahead. And that was a close call with uh, the 214 of Busso making his way through for P3. Luna Flusha was trying to uh, counter-attack 
with Marcassi Kunas as well trying to get involved, but there was a bit of a contact, wasn't there? Talk about elbows out uh, in fine form and sharpening them as well uh, for Luna Flusha, uh, not allowing Ludovic Obuso to get away too easily uh, with that overtake, but uh, holds on to it as they make their way uh, down the infield straight in towards the hairpin of turn seven. Here's a replay of that one, so they can see Obuso down the inside, Flusha back down the inside. Oh, just tangling. Well, that is so lucky that they kept going there. Smoke off the tyres. Here's another angle of it. And whew, again, heart and mouth moment there. Yeah, actually, um, this, uh, oh, and Timo Rakas in the meantime, uh, making his bid to P1 and getting ahead of the David Cosma Christopher. Here, here we go to Karabovic Machines. One and two at the moment. I was going to pick up on the, the incident that just occurred. And uh, I do wonder, again, what the officials will, will make out of it because, uh, you know, in the case of uh, Luna Fusha, she was on the inside. In the case of uh, opponent, well, there was not much place for him to go uh, for Busso, indeed. And Ludovic Busso was between her and between the grass. So a little bit of a squeezing over there, but uh, nothing to worry about as they were both able to uh, carry on two tenths of a second between uh, the two leaders, as you see, Ramakos and David Cosma Christopher. Busso still very much in this race down in P3, but I do not think, even though there's still a little bit less than six laps remaining, he will have time to uh, reach for the leading duet, and we might have seen one driver indeed on the outside of turn number 12 in trouble. Let's try to identify who that is, but maybe a two drivers, I think, coming together outside of the picture on the uh, exit of turn number 12 it might have been Oshie Jouwoda and uh, Marius Barryberg, by the look of it, coming together uh, to be confirmed, but uh, they're certainly out of this race and that the cars are being pushed on the sideline. Yeah, I would agree with you on that one. It does look like uh, a, a kind of a, a, an Alonso uh, colored cart there, the Marius Berryberg uh, cart, and then uh, the Ricky Flynn of Vojtek Voda. Yeah, so they've not had a good one. Here's your man Joe Turney up into P4, 12 places gained. I don't know what happened on the second half of this weekend, but he certainly managed to found the rhythm of this circuit, and he's able to gain those positions after the bad qualifying uh, again. So uh, earlier yesterday, didn't able to get those positions done that easily and uh, yeah kind of struggled only gaining like five places or six places now he's getting into the double digit digits of uh, places gained and he's up into p4 so we'll keep a very close eye on joe turney ludovic abuso just ahead bondarev now has got ahead of flusha as well so flusha there you can see on your screen uh, she is down uh, into uh, P6. Now, Flusha has got Marcus Shulkunas uh, alongside. Uh, now, the last time those two got together was Cremona in one of the finals, and that ended in a very bad moment for Marcus Shulkunas. Thankfully, it was OK uh, after that one, but uh, certainly no fault of any driver on that one, just a racing incident, or incident, uh, as I should say. Uh, but uh, certainly for both of them, let's see what they can do this time around. Well, Timo Ramakas and David Cosma uh, lead the way. The gap only about eight tenths of a second. There are the two framers coming through there, Bondarev and Flusha. You see the gap there, Shilkunas starting to close in just that little bit. Not close enough for the move. Ludovic Abuso, though, under pressure from Joe Turney. Uh, this is for a top three spot here, and Turney will certainly self him, uh, help himself out in the, uh, the IC, but uh, I suspect it's not going to help him out that much, only because, well, he's not had the best results all the way throughout this, has he? No, definitely not, as uh, Britain's still splitting Ludovico Busso and uh, the Englishman for three. Let's try to see what uh, Joe Tony can achieve at the end. He still has a bit of time, even though Checker Flag is getting near two laps after this one. Uh, Joe Tony didn't have the best uh, of outcome throughout the uh, qualifying hits before, as uh, he had been uh, struggling a little bit from qualifying, fighting his way through. But again, I would not be surprised to uh, see him topping the tally and when it comes to recovery 12 places gained once again for him uh, in this race as uh, we just entered the penultimate lap Thibaut Ramacher is on his way to potentially win number three for the Belgian 12 places gained as you see for uh, Joe Tony maybe another one in the bag but uh, Ludovico Busso has other ideas in mind one full second in the meantime between Ramacher and Cosma Christopher as for now as we said Still fully open when it comes to uh, the pole sitters and the super heat uh, for tomorrow because uh, we have one more race to go in the senior class. Uh, and uh, Zach Drummond and uh, Gabriel Gomez are the two contenders with the most chances to uh, snatch that pole position from uh, both Ramakos and Jedrush Pezel, provisionally second at the moment. And watch out for the move here. 
Tierney is uh, sniffing around at the rear bumper. It's trying to go left and right. Maybe kick that door right open. Turn number three, not quite happening. Watch out into turn number four at the start of the uh, long back oh. straight. And there he goes. Uh, that's the way we want to see it. Jordan, he makes his way up to P3. And uh, it actually goes the way as well of Alexander Bondarev and Lunar Fusha still battling along those two. Watch out not to uh, end up in a contact between the 214. Busso and Bondarev, my apologies, Fusha is further back behind, but she might actually join the party. That might give us a three driver battle towards the end of that race. Certainly might. Well, uh, the driver's uh, getting ready, and uh, it's going to be a checkered flag there for Thibaut Ramakas. What a drive for him. He secures the intermediate classification lead, uh, but only by a handful of points. It's down to the drivers later on. Let's see what they can do. Yeah, beautiful results in the end for the uh, Belgian. As for now, Thibaut Ramakus finishes this uh, set of uh, qualifying races with uh, 229 points and uh, 212 for Jerry Spezel, 209 for Noah Wolf. And uh, thanks to his second place result, well, David Cosma Christopher is currently in B4 overall at the end of these qualifying heats for the two groups A versus F. Uh, one race to go for the seniors, B versus C. We have one last for the juniors in the meantime, as Thomas Kinsey actually just uh, parked his car in just in front of our position at the South Minute straight, just below the bridge where Martin Bean, our race director, finds himself. So a technical problem by the look of it for Thomas Kinsey. We're going to go through uh, the full classification, the time for the drivers to make their way past the uh, new Saudi uh, bridge, one of the uh, many novelties of the Val d'Argenton karting track. Uh, and uh, look at that facility. One of the uh, most celebrated in the world of uh, French carding back in the 90s. Uh, here's the classification in full. Thibaut Ramakers picking up win number three. David Cosma Christopher uh, putting himself fourth overall thanks to his P2 from Joe Turney climbing 13 uh, places. Another uh, 13 places added to his tally for Joe Turney in front of Ludovico Busso, Alexander Pondarev, Luna Fusha, P6 from uh, Marca Silcunas, Tim Sale, Guillaume Buzard. Santino Panetta, Fiona Cochlin in P11 from Miguel Costa and Muriel La Rocha, the two Brazilians. Gerasim Skulanov P14 and Juan Montero P15. P16 is uh, Dante Vinci from Alphonse Mitinen, Tom McKinsey, Hugo uh, Rajame, uh, Kian Padin, Davide Botaro, Nico Lanalati, and Blake Nash. Uh, three drivers missing out with uh, Alt Akshoy, Marius Barryberg and Ochej Wood are coming together, and Tom McKinsey, as we said, still classified in P18 but uh, had to park his car at the end of the race once coming across the checkered flag. This young man keep a close watch on Thibaut Ramakers, who will be definitely until the end of this weekend one of the contenders for the final victory. Here's how things played out with a good start from pole position from David Cosma Christopher. It went a little bit uh, squeezy into the uh, turn number one, pretty much clean for the totality of the drivers on the way to turn number three. And it was uh, at that moment that uh, David Cosma Christopher actually extended this gap a little bit. One of them, Alt Axoy from Parolin, was uh, unfortunate, kicked out of the race and unable to uh, get going again. Thibaut Ramekers, in the meantime, making his bit at the end of lap number one and uh, on his way to uh, what will be a victory as uh, one of the uh, drivers out there, Fiona McCocklin, was fighting his way through as well with the VDK callers. It would end up 11 in the end. Ramaker is making his bait on 214 of Ludovico Busso, the Birela driver. Nothing could have done there. We were trying to resist on the attack of uh, the Belgian driver. Battles have been aplenty into this field as uh, David Cosma Christopher would resist up until at some point where he tumbled on the order before getting back into P2. Ramaker is making his bait as well on uh, Bondarev and Luna Flusha, the two uh, Prema teammates. At that moment between uh, Flusha and Busso. Remains to be seen what will be decided. Both were able to continue. A little bit of a squeeze, wheel banging, but uh, Ludovico Busso was able to keep control of his Birelad machine. And no harm done after this incident as uh, Bandarev and Fulcha kept on uh, uh, fighting their way through, finishing in P5 and 6 respectively. George Ernie in the final lap, uh, giving us one last overtake up to P3. His best results for the British man as uh, he climbed 13 places, quite far from uh, the uh, winner of this last junior qualifying heat for those two groups, A versus uh, F. Okay, Clash, shall I say. And Thibaut Ramakers is picking up a win number three. Let's hear from one of the contenders of this race with Anthony Jordan down in the Parc Fermé. 
Thank you very much, Guillaume, down here in Park Fermi with our race winner for that one, Thibaut Ramikers. Thibaut, it's been a while since we've had a chat, uh, but leading the points now, fantastic race on that one. Everything looking, uh, looking really strong. How are you finding the track here this weekend? Uh, yeah, I feel good because we have the speed. Uh, I like the track. It's a really fast track, but, uh, but yeah, I like it. Like so many drivers here, uh, there's uh, not lots of experience around this track. Uh, how was testing for you getting ready for this? Uh, I have testing one week uh, ago. It was good. And uh, yeah, it's uh, not, not uh, some guy I have really experienced. So, yeah. Well, it's all come together now, hasn't it? Uh, let's think the next race, you've got uh, Drummond and Gomez and Lewis Francis, who all are going to be racing in the final race. There's points up for grabs. Do you feel confident that you've done enough to maybe hold on to a top spot? Yeah, I hope uh, all the, the top because uh, we have the speed. I'm confident for the final. And yeah, I hope, uh, I hope the best. Yeah. Well, uh, congratulations. Well done. We'll see you out there tomorrow for the Super Heats and uh, we'll see where you finish in the final. Congratulations. Well done. Thank you. Excellent stuff. Well, Timo Ramakers there. Brilliant stuff. He's going to go off uh, and chat with his mechanic, make sure everything is ready. Uh, just two more races uh, to go, I believe. Uh, Guillaume, let's head back over to you. Thank you very much, uh, Anthony. And uh, thanks to uh, Thibaut Ramakers, uh, uh, always uh, giving us the pleasure of uh, improving his English uh, while uh, we uh, talk to him. And uh, that's uh, something that uh, we always try to encourage. And uh, we're very, of course, grateful to uh, as many drivers as we have the pleasure to talk to. And it's not always easy to uh, switch from one language to the other. But uh, what better school than the uh, world of karting and motorsport to uh, become a multilingual by the age of 15, pretty much. So thanks again to uh, Thibaut Ramakers, as uh, he's indeed leading the pack as for now. 229 points for Thibaut Ramakers. As uh, David Cosma Christopher uh, put himself in P4 in the overall classification. Now we're done with the G, the uh, yeah uh, the classification as for now. We're done with the OK for now. Uh, it's been a long day for everybody, but we'll find the seniors in just a moment. Let's switch our attention back to the OK Junior class for the last race of the day. When it comes to the juniors, as we said. We've had Sebastian Letimaki and uh, Dries van Langenong pulling on the results uh, at the end of the day. Three wins each uh, for the uh, driver from Forza Racing. There's been a good day at the office for the British team. And uh, as for now, uh, Sebastian Letimaki will, uh, will get started on pole position and uh, Dries van Langenong as well. But still, there's uh, a few uh, good places on the starting grid to grab in the B versus C uh, junior Qualifying heat, William Kaleha and Filippo Sala will be sharing the front row of the grid. A couple of contenders with a few last hopes of points up for grab into this last race of the junior class. And then we'll get back to the seniors for the final showdown and to decide who will get their hands on pole positions for the superheat of tomorrow morning. The whistle is blowing, the green flag is waving into the blue skies of Val d'Argenton. And uh, thanks ever so much again for joining us for that conclusion of day two in uh, France. Here's the uh, starting grid in full. William Kaleha from Australia will be starting from pole position with Filippo Sala by his side. Uh, Ho Jae Chiang and Jack Hailey on the row number two. Row number three, Daniel Kelleher and uh, Kose Oguma. Row number four, Archie Lovat and Christian Costoya. Row five, Dean Organoen and Mats van Hoyen. Row number six, uh, Boris Nielsen and Sky Parker. François Cardal and Alex Molota, row seven, row eight, uh, I mean, uh, Osman and Andrea Mani, row nine, uh, Kanish Rao and Hansi Sun, row ten, uh, Benjamin Manak and uh, Thomas Pradier, row eleven, Sebastian Mins and uh, James Anandustiadis, uh, row twelve, uh, Mariano Lopez and Iskander Zulfikari, Alexander Hans Niem and uh, Bogdan Kosma Christopher, row uh, thirteen, row fourteen, Luke Kornberg and Clara Kowalcic, Marianetto and Alexander Kortinov, row fifteen and row sixteen, Matteo Rivals and Theo Battisti. 32 competitors uh, once again as uh, we get, uh, we're going to get ourselves uh, ready for the last 10 laps of the day in the qualifying heat for the junior category. And we do have one missing driver, Alex Molota from uh, Hagerman Racing, who uh, was due to start from 14 on the grid and uh, chose not to take part in this last race. I do hope that everything is uh, okay for him. Mechanical trouble, physical trouble, uh, that could be either reasons for not taking part in this last race of the day. 
Formation lap is underway as uh, all the waste drivers will have to come down to the red line, face themselves down, and here we go again for the penultimate rolling start of the day. And so, well, it's all down to what will happen in the points in this one. I don't think there's much that can affect uh, the top runners in this, apart from uh, maybe Zhang Jose, who was up in that top section earlier on. Uh, but now this is the last time the juniors go out. We might be signed, sealed and done. But let's see what happens in the junior category. William Collegia on the front row with Filippo Sala alongside, I should say alongside, he's about two cars behind. Now he's becoming alongside. Uh, he's jumped early, it's a false start. We're not going, as I thought there was a bit of spin in the background there. I saw one of the cars probably die from one side to the other. I think it was Bogdan Cosma uh, maybe who had done that. But uh, well, hopefully they get them all squared away. Uh, and another formation that begins now. Well, uh, certainly not what you want to see. So. Reminder then of the intermediate classifications, uh, Letamaki 230, Van Langendonk 214, Rypold 211, joint Kenzo Craigie. Uh, for Letamaki though, uh, I don't think anything can happen on this one to really beat. Now if 50 points happen, no, I don't think anyone can. Theoretically, it's not possible, is it? Am I right there, Gil? I do think that on paper, uh Sebastian Letimaki and Dries Van Langenhoek are pretty much secure uh, based on the, the gaps that uh, we have from the, the rest of the drivers. At least in the top eight, none of the drivers uh, in the top eight actually are on in this race about to get the start. So that might, that might mean that uh, none of them on the grid uh, will be able to shake things up when it comes to uh, the uh, top uh, positions for the grid tomorrow. We'll see after, at the end of the uh, opening lap, obviously, some of the drivers for the back just outside of the top eight might still be able to... Uh, reach the uh, top position remains to be seen uh, behind we have uh, Letimaki, Van Langenong, Rashpol, Kwengi, Coronel, Waltz, Schofler and Pohola all of them in top eight uh, uh, having concluded the program so it is done to this last race and green 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 we go on the way to turn number one yep nice start then from the outside and Filippo Sala takes the lead of the race from that outside row brilliantly done everyone gets around turn one cleanly can they get round two yes they can nicely done in towards the hairpin of turn three they go and it's a clean getaway for Filippo Sala at the front of this field as they head down the back straight for the first time the Paralin uh, there of Kalija is in second place as they try to close back in now but everyone just slotting in it's a good start from everyone and it looks like Jack Iliff has got up into third place as well oh and two drivers coming together just on the corner of your picture out there between uh the turn number six and seven, and uh, let's try to identify who that is. That's James Anagnostiaitis, and I believe Amin Karia Osman also off the track. It's been a disaster for James Anagnostiaitis this weekend. So many DNFs, he's going to try and get that restarted. And I think the answer to that is no, he doesn't get it restarted. That's all off camera, unfortunately, uh, away from you. Uh, you're wagging your finger at me. Yeah, because uh, there's uh, one driver that uh, was indeed outside of the top eight as for now, and uh, by leading this race, has a good chance to start on pole position for the super hit number two, and his name is Filippo Sala, because he, ju he just jumped in front of Dries van Lagendonk for four single points, four tiny points ahead of the Belgian. So van Lagendonk at this point might have done enough to uh, secure one of the two pole positions, but Filippo Sala is indeed still very much in the mix. Uh, Oguma. Uh, picks himself up to P6 overall. So Philip Osala indeed, as he was starting from second, now picks himself up to P1. Well, a young Italian could be one of two positives for tomorrow. Certainly could be. Well, uh, there's a long way to go in this race before we find that one out. So it's here down the inside. Costa Aguma on Zhang Jose down the inside, and he gets up into P4. That will again help him out a little bit in the IC. He'll gain a couple more points there, but it won't affect him too much though but still every little helps as they make their way out of turn number four, down the back straight in towards turn five. The top three have a clean breakaway uh, from the uh, rest of the top six. Their next three also have a clean breakaway and then a huge train starts from seventh place down. That starts with Lovett uh, from Mats van Ruin. Lies in there as well from Parker. I think Boris leisen has got up uh, a place or two as well. Uh, in that one as a change down the inside. Daniel Kelleher into P2, gets down the inside of Jack Eilif. And here we go, Jack Eilif uh, under the pressure. Kelleher ahead in second place, and that gives all the time in a row in the world for Filippo Sala to keep extending his gap on uh, lap number four out of ten. 
And Filippo almost seven tenths of a second now on Daniel Callagher. Run the inside, he goes. That's the battle for P2 raging with Jack Hanliff taking it. Oh, and a contact, unfortunately. Is it Daniel Callagher, the 62? Yes, it is. Callagher in the battle for second place, forced outside of the turn just between three and four. And unfortunately, dropping a lot of momentum and places into this race. Nightmare scenario for Daniel Callagher. No, not for himself under the pressure of the 66 of uh, Zulfikari all the way down in P13 by oh. the it And contact once again with one of the DPKs and maybe one of the Forza Racing drivers. Yeah, well, that's the 54 of Sky Parker off the track there with heavy front-end damage. Uh, now, who was she racing with? Uh, now, that is possibly uh, Daniel Kelleher, that, or I think it was Archie Lovett, because Archie Lovett is tumbling down the order as well in the number 44. Uh, so I couldn't quite see that. I wasn't looking at my timing screen, so I didn't actually see who the contact was made with, but it was heavy contact uh, and a lot of front-end damage there to Sky Parker's cart. So, yeah, hopefully she is okay. Yellow flags out uh, in the sector, and there's more comings together. There's carts off left, right, and center uh, everywhere on this lap, but crucially, Filippo Sala doesn't care about any of it as he leads the way. And uh, we've lost another drive in Christian Costoya. Unfortunately, in the meantime, uh, Oguma indeed uh, the uh, Japanese driver taking the second place uh, out of Jake Eilif. And a good operation for Kosei Oguma that might actually put him even further up in the classification. As uh, for now, Rashbold, Krengi and Oguma are all on equal points at 2.11. And now, thanks to his overtaking, well, Oguma is P4. There. Christian Kostoya, unfortunately. Oh, sorry, my apologies. Benjamin Manak. As we just lost Christian Costoya, and now we do lose Benjamin Manak. So they're dropping like flies in this last junior race. Ah, right. Confirmation. It was contact with Archie Lovett there, uh, with Sky Parker. Uh, yeah, from that angle, no idea uh, what happened there. Ah, that angle says a little bit more. Well, they're side by side through a corner where uh, not many people are side by side. It was um, Sky Parker on the outside there. So uh, not sure if that was a turn in or someone losing the back end and stepping out. So uh, the accent. Uh, the uh, oh, what's the word angle I'm looking for the angle uh, wasn't a good one there for us uh, for that uh, for that accident uh, well Salah leads the way seven tenths clear from Aguma who is battling away here here is another replay uh, of uh, ah that's the same incident oh well again that, that, that shows us a little bit more um, well, that's a hard one to call that I think they both just tried to go for that same piece of track at the same time and unfortunately it ended up in tears yeah, we led the final decisions to uh, the officials and the uh, race control. And uh, they have uh, tens of screens all around the track with all angles possible, believe me, to uh, make uh, to be able to make uh, the right assessment about who did what and in what way. And uh, we'll let you know, of course, all the results, as always, available on the official website of the series, championscarting.com, if you want to keep, keep yourself up to date with all the latest decisions and results. Run the inside goes... In the turn number 12, that's uh, the 121 of uh, Lysen. Beautifully made on Kosei Oguma for P2, that is. And the Sodica driver flying uh, through the field. Nine places gained for uh, Boris uh, Linsen. And now he finds himself in second place under the pressure of the Japanese. Jack Alif dropping down to P4. And that's not the sort of results that the American will be expecting since he is out of the top eight as for now for the uh, overall classification. The two drivers progressing at the moment, so to keep you up to date are first, Filippo Sala. He holds on the lead. Seven tenths is uh, pretty much on his own planet. If he wins, well, he will get pole position for superheat number two tomorrow. And uh, Kosei Oguma, currently in P3, is six at the moment, which means that he will get to start on the second row on one of the heats tomorrow. So it's looking pretty good for Kosei Oguma if he can stay where he is. And uh, that might actually be even a P2 up for grab because uh, in the meantime, Boris Linsen wasn't able to really uh, build enough of a gap. He's still up for grab. And uh, look at the gap on the other way, uh, decreasing between Salah and Linsen. So things can still change even though the checker flag is getting near. Exactly that. For Van Langendonk, there still could be an opportunity for him to start on pole for one of the superheats. If Salah gets caught by Boris Linsen, uh, that would spell disaster for Salah. He would tumble down the order, and if anything, he would start, well, he would still start on the front row, but he'd be on the outside in Super Heat 1. Uh, so, uh, again, it's okay, but uh, you still want to start on pole. You want to have that inside line if you can uh, in these uh, Super Heats later on in the weekend. Uh, so, on lap number nine now, it's uh, last lap board is the last board that they will see before the checkered flag, and it is Filippo Salah from Boris Lysen. 
Uh, Kosa Guma in third place. They're broken away from the rest of the field. But can Boris Lysen close in on Salah? Salah going defensive slightly in towards turn one. Holds a slightly tighter line. It's not overly defensive, but just showing to Lysen that I'm ready to hold on to this position. I want to start on pole position for one of these super heats. And all he needs to do is to go defensive again for half a lap. This won't be an easy job at all. And uh, behind, Linsen and Aguma have less to lose. And when it comes to a pole position, of course, uh, it all comes down to Filippo Sella. The pressure is immense on the shoulders of the young Italian. With uh, Solica driver and further back, uh, the representative of AKM. One last kick of the chicane. Turn number 12. And that might be it for Filippo Sala if he gets uh, right on the throttle into turn number 13, leaving the others uh, buttoning along. That will be the win and the pole position in Super Heat number two if it doesn't change for Filippo Sala. It certainly will. Well, with that result there, Filippo Sala will start on pole for Super Heat two tomorrow. Sebastian Lettemarki has secured pole position for Super Heat one for finals day tomorrow for round two of the champions of the future. Doris van Langendonk, despite his best efforts, can only start on the outside of row one for Super Heat 1. It's still a fantastic result for him. Uh, and Kasper Reipold will start on the outside of row one for Super Heat 2 tomorrow. Well, there it is. That is all provisional, of course, pending any post-race scrutineering, of course, or any post-race penalties that may come to any drivers. But for Filippo Sala, he's done everything he can, and he secures a pole position start for tomorrow's Super Heat. He sits only a handful of points, 12 points in total, behind uh, Sebastian Lettemarki going into tomorrow, meaning that it'll all be down to who finishes where in those Super Heats determine who gets what championship points as well. With that, Filippo Sala takes the win from Boris Lysen, Kosa Guma from Jack Eilif, Zhang Jose from William Kalija, uh, Dean Hugendorn from Andrea Mani, Mats van Ruen and Sonna Z finish in the top 10. Thomas Poladier from Francois Kernel, Iskander Sorfakari from Kanish Grau and Alexander Uznim round out the top 15. Positions gained all the way throughout that. Uh, so of car regaining 11 positions and uh, Usneen gaining 10. Uh, in 16th place is Maria Neto, who gained 13 places. Bogdan Cosmo finishing in 17th after gaining 9. Uh, Theo Battisti from France for the Sodicart team uh, gaining 14 positions in that one, finishing in 18th place. Uh, Sebastian Mins finishing in 19th with Mariano Lopez running out the top 20. Uh, Clara Kowalczyk, seven places gained, finishes in 21st from Luke Kornda, Alexander Kortanov from Daniel Kelleher, the Terra Rivals from Christian Kostoya, the top 26. Uh, several retirements in that one, but let's go through the highlights in the early stages of this race. Great start from Filippo Sala, breaking away uh, in the early stages of that one. There were some uh, turmoil, some dramas uh, a little further back, but everyone got through the first few corners relatively unscathed. It was a clean start for the entirety of the grid. It would only get a little bit uh, uh, elbows out later on, uh, where you would see this dramatic moment here. James Anagnostiadis and Armin Karia Osman unfortunately sliding off the circuit. Uh, then you would start to see the moves coming in thick and fast down the inside. Kose Aguma getting those positions up. Uh, let's say three positions gained in that race. Uh, moved well up into the order. Uh, backwards would go the 54 in the early stages of the race, unfortunately for Sky Parker, not getting the uh, initial getaway she would have liked. She would have then unfortunately got tangled up with Archie Lovett later on in the race as Osa Aguma continued to gain those overtakes left, right and centre back down the inside here of Zhang Jose and really getting a fabulous start there uh, of the race. Uh, race continuing and again just down the inside there for second place in the early stages Kalija trying to get back through uh, Unfortunately, he would uh, drop down at the order just that little bit more as uh, Aguma would come through Eilif would come through Kalija at this moment here off the track would tumble down to P6 But would hold on to P6 at the end of that one still a very good race nonetheless and uh, yeah Big scary moment there and I have to be careful that he didn't come away with a nose cone at the end of that one big dip into that uh, uh, exit curb and as well onto the grass uh, very easily done there uh, this was the moment then between Lovett and Sky Parker from that angle can't see really what happens the two of them trying to go for the uh, 
same part of the track at the same time. I think the marshal's reaction there sums it up perfectly. Uh, hands up in the air and going, oh, what happened there? But uh, clearly for Sky Parker, heavy damage and out of the race. Love it. Uh, later on would also retire from the race. And this was only at the uh, less than the halfway mark of the race. We're on lap five of this point of 10. Uh, and then we see, unfortunately, uh, Benjamin Maniak uh, for the Viral Arts racing team out of the race, unsure what happened, uh, but that was at the exit of turn number four for the back straight. Uh, last few changes for positions, but it would be Filippo Sala who would take the win from Boris Lysin. Garcia Guma would narrowly round out the top three after a very close fight with Lysen and Jack Eilif. Well, we know who's going to be starting on pole for Superheat 1. Let's chat to the man who's starting on pole for Superheat 2. Let's go down to Park Ferme with Guillaume Alvarez. Thank you very much, Anthony. I'm here with Filippo Sala, the uh, late return of the hero, Filippo. Well done to you. This is a win number two for you at the very end of the qualifying heats of the class. We thought for a moment that maybe the pole position was secured, but you came at the last second, picking that second win. That was enough for you, and you're posted for Super Heat number two tomorrow. Well done. Yeah, I'm happy about all the results that we've done in these two days. Uh, pole position and two hit win, always in the top three. So I'm very happy, I'm very happy and we was very consistent and let's see tomorrow how it will go. The racing has been quite fierce in the classification, you know, in, the, in this class. Every race was another battle for you, yet the two biggest battles are yet to come tomorrow. Uh, any other new tricks in your book that you've learned on this track uh, that can help you tomorrow to make a, an even bigger difference? Yeah, we know that we can make better. Um, we know where, where I'm not very good and so we can solve it for tomorrow. And tomorrow we will see. I'm not. I'm not feeling. I'm feeling. How to say? Trustable. Absolutely. Consistency has been the key of your success today. Tomorrow you're ready to unleash the beast that uh, sleeps inside it to give your extra uh, best and uh, maybe seal the deal with the victory. Yeah, of course. Tonight we will work a lot for for take our best tomorrow in pre-final and final. Fantastic. A good night of sleep on that, and uh, best of uh, best of luck to you tomorrow. Thank you, Filippo. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good day. Grazie, uh, Filippo Sala, the uh, pole setter of uh, Super Heat number two for tomorrow, ladies and gents. That was a late return, but that second win and a string of very competitive results for Filippo Sala were enough for him to start at the forefront of the grid tomorrow. Thank you very much, Guillaume Alvarez, down there in Park Ferme. Uh, down to the last race of the day, back to the senior category. It's groups B versus C, and this is the one that we have been waiting for. So many drivers in this one, well, three in total, who are fighting to start on pole position for Superheat 1 tomorrow. In the likes of Lewis uh, Francis, you've got Zach Drummond, and you've got Gabriel Gomez out there as well, all of them in that top section of the IC, wanting to get to the top. Going into this one, you've got Zach Drummond and Gomez, who are joint on 188 intermediate classification points together. They currently sit fifth and sixth in the IC, but they, I'm sure, will bounce to the top as soon as this race gets underway. Air temperature is still 22 degrees. It's been a beautiful day for racing as the green flag waves and we get going for our final race of the day. It is the OK qualifying heat B versus C. Let's take you through the full starting lineup. It's Lewis Francis and Zach Drummond on row number one. Gabriel Gomez and Matteo Giacardi on row two. Emilio Coivisto and Casper Henriksen round out row number three from Michael Adir and Matthias Morgato on row four. Dominic Simic and Joseph Smith round out the top 10 on row five with Vivek Canton and Tom Dussel on row six. Avri Avramides and Stepan Antonov round out row number seven from Matti Ritanen and Leo Nilsson on row eight. Row nine is Andy Consani and Sun Zhao Yu with the top 20 being rounded out by Mike Pargara and Freddie Lloyd. Row 11 is Alan Garcia from Roland Cook Lane with row 12 being Bernardo Bernaldi and Sebastiano Pavan. Louis Casolini and Vanguard Clemenson round out the 26 cart grid are going into the final race of the day. So much has happened to get us to this point. We're 29 qualifying heats in uh, to the weekend. This one makes it 30. And we're about to find out who is going to be starting on pole for Super Heat 1 tomorrow. And two, of course. We don't know who's going to be on pole yet. This race will decide those top spots. Well, for Lewis Francis, he's done all he's needed. It's been a 
relatively decent day. Uh, he did come away with a penalty after one race, uh, after uh, hitting on that loud pedal a little bit too hard uh, during the yellow flag period. Uh, but uh, the rest of his races have been superb. Uh, for Zach Drummond, also a superb amount of races, and the same for Gomez. But no one, and this is crucial because we have this usually every single weekend, no one has had a dominant set of wins throughout this weekend. We are live on board with Gabriel Gomez, the Brazilian giving us these fantastic pictures right now. And, uh, of course, where he could possibly start on pole position, but he has got a tough fight here. Francis Drummond, Giacardi around him. Uh, Coy Visto, uh, Kasper Henriksen as well, Matez Morgato, Michael Adair, all there in that top section. It's really down to what's going to happen in this race. The grid is slowed down to a calm momentum as the smoke starts to clear. Final qualifying heat of the day. It is Lewis Francis on the inside. It is Zach Drummond on the outside. Green flag goes and we are away and racing. Gomez dives to the inside. He holds on to second place. The driver who started in third is already up one position. The rest of the field get through the first couple of corners unscathed as they go into the braking zone at turn three for the first time. It is a good start for Francis. It's a good start for Gomez. It's a good start for Drummond. But where will they be in the IC at the end? End of lap one. And they have 12 laps to decide. The battle is on between the last protagonist of the senior class and a bit of a tangle oh. coming to the turn. And a couple of drivers indeed into the gravel already. And uh, I see might be one of the Victory Lane's drivers. Yes, indeed. It's 290. Joseph Smith. Joseph Smith, unfortunately. And the other one from CRG was able to rejoin, but cutting the track in half pretty much as he will be lapped. This is one of CRGs who actually uh, is coming across just in front of the leaders as they complete lap number one. This was Michael Eider indeed that uh, got tangled into the incident. So you will see him uh, in front of the classification due to uh, his transponder and that disaster for Joseph Smith. And, and uh, we can easily understand why. And look at Michael Hyde, unfortunately, finds himself in the middle of the pack, having to let everybody through. The blue flags are being waved. And that's his last race of the day completely destroyed before he even gets started. Yeah, that reaction from Michael Adir is a reaction of that could be the weekend over sort of thing. You know, if you don't have those points, you will tumble down the order and you won't be in the position that you want to be. Right. So with that position, oh, I tell you what, Gomez might need to work a little bit harder here because Ramakers leads the intermediate classification and he's already raced right now. Gomez is joint with him, but crossing the line now, he now updates and now he leads the IC. So now Gomez in P2, that's all he needs to do to take pole for the Super Heat 1 tomorrow. Drummond in third place, that's all he needs to do to get pole for Super Heat 2. But it's really now down to between Drummond and Gomez. Who wants to start in Super Heat 1 and who crucially wants to get them championship points? That's the ultimate question. For Gomez, he does because he leads, but can Drummond start to close in in the championship standings? There's always double reward at the end of uh, day number two, indeed. Not only the starting position, but the points, as you said. So now, advantage Gomez with just three tiny points on Zach Drummond. That's going to be fascinating between the two. And Lewis Francis as the referee between uh, the CRG and the parallel contender. Francis for the back in P4. But still, you know, if he stays where he is, that would mean 20, 226 points. He cannot go any higher than that, but uh, it's down to Gomez and Drummond to uh, fight their way through to, uh, yeah, indeed decide who, which of them will end up uh, on top of the points. Thibaut Ramakers, in the meantime, watching certainly closely on the sideline to see where he uh, to uh, decide of uh, which of the drivers he will be starting tomorrow because Ramakers, as, as it stands, cannot be uh, caught and beaten by Luis Francis. So Ramakers will be starting on the front row of the grid. Will it be alongside Gomez? Will it be alongside Drummond? It remains to be decided. Certainly does. Well, Francis leads the way. Uh, not by much, though. Gomez has closed right in uh, to the race leader. We go on board with the driver who leads the intermediate classification and is now looking to go for the lead into turn one. Gets it done under braking. And Francis goes down to second place. Gomez leads the IC. And he now leads this final race of the day. Yeah, beautifully made indeed by the Brazilian. That's all he needed to get himself in the lead. Matheus Morgato, his fellow countryman, is putting out the fastest lap from P5, climbing three places. 
Uh, maybe still a few things to see from Matthias Morgato. He's been uh, relatively discreet, so to speak, as run inside goes Zach Drummond. Drummond sees the danger. He needs to get something done. He needs to uh, throw the action in. He just did that, first of all, with uh, Lewis Francis. The second objective will be uh, Gabriel Le Gomez. And as he was doing that, Gomez, of course, didn't wait in line and uh, started beating the gap just a tiny bit as Kasper Eriksson is speaking. He's being investigated at the moment. We'll uh, get back to that. As for now, the pressure and the focus is very much on the top three. Gomez, Drummond, Francis split by six tenths of a second at the advantage of the CRG driver. As the two are battling along, he can keep on building that gap. He can focus on everything that lies ahead, which is nothing, just pure air. He can actually do qualifying lap after qualifying lap. Not better about what anything that's happening behind him. Covisto and Morgato might be working together as well to get caught and uh, get close to Drummond and Francis. We might have actually Morgato making his bit around the inside of Covisto. It just happened on the corner of your picture. And we have the Brazilian up into P4. Mike Ladeira also under investigation as well uh, for the start of that incident. And uh, obviously he was the one who was uh, part of that starting incident where he cut across the track on board with Gomez. Uh, then leading the way. I'm going to keep an eye on sector times. Drummond closed in just a fraction more there. Uh, took about half a tenth out. I mean, Grant, it's only half a tenth, but we are halfway through this race. We're on lap seven of 12 uh, at the moment. This was the move. Big check over the shoulder there for Lewis Francis to make sure there wasn't two carts trying to come through. Uh, but yeah, nice and cleanly done. This was then Drummond getting down the inside. Uh, that was a vital move from Zach Drummond. You know, if he wasn't able to get that move done sooner, he wouldn't have the chance to now try and close in on Gomez. Remember, they're both fighting for championship points. Uh, they're both fighting for the win in this one and starting on pole for the final. Uh, but right now, it's in control by Gabriel Gomez. Uh, Drummond just seeing if he can try and close in the gap. Oh, it's, it's staying the same now. They're matching the pace now. They're matching the pace together. Uh, he is pulling away from Francis, but he's not closing in on Gomez. That is a tricky part of the race, isn't it? On lap number eight, the uh, checkered flag is again in here. And with that, the checkered flag on, on day two of competition here in Val la And uh, this is the last speed, last piece of pressure for those uh, young drivers to try to make a difference. Gabriel Gomez is there for the taking. He's doing the job that he needs. He only managed two uh, wins so far. One win on the road and one win after the uh, penalty of Lewis Francis. Francis, two wins as well. Three wins for Thibaut Ramakers. So it's very close indeed in terms of results, as you said before the start. But now it's down to Gomez to make it maybe three victories out of five attempts. Zach Drummond so far only, yeah, three wins as well. So they're pretty much close on results. But uh, which one of them will get the upper pole, shall we say, in the uh, overall leadership of the classification? There will be another classification, uh, don't forget, after the superheat, before we get ourselves into the final. So another reward of points. Here's, uh, once again, the uh, decisive move. Could be decisive for the victory by Gabriel Gomez, who uh, didn't wait in line just before that red kick in the breaking point of turn number one. Lerich Francis knew that he, he wasn't the one taking any advantage from this fight. Yeah. You know, he had the one... He was the one who had the most to lose, at least. So for him, securing the best results possible, P3 as it stands, is certainly the goal. Yes, certainly so. And uh, from that replay there, you could really see how early uh, that Francis backed out of uh, trying to hold on to that position. It was actually before the, the kink going into turn one, wasn't it? So actually quite early on. But again, I think that's understandable because the racing line's kind of a little bit tougher on the inside. He might have risked, you know, running out wide at turn one. And you certainly don't want to do that, especially when you're fighting for P4 in the intermediate classification. Uh, well, the gap between Gomez and Drummond continues to fluctuate, but stays the same. It's fluctuating uh, microseconds after microseconds. There's nothing, really. Uh, so, uh, you know, they're just staying staying together at the moment. France is still there. Morgato, though, has closed in. Morgato's looking like a threat to Francis here. Francis does have to, I think, uh, really think about what he does now. And he thought about just giving up the position, not going to fight it. Uh, you know, I don't want to risk losing too many positions uh, holding on to this one. Does that affect the IC fully? Uh, the answer to that is he loses points, but he stays in fourth. So, yeah, he's fine. But he's only two points clear uh, from uh, Inuit Peschel, who's not obviously out in this one. Uh, but he doesn't want to drop down any further, does uh, Francis Henriksen next on the order. But he is under investigation, so he needs to be careful. But he did just set the fastest lap of the race. So he needs to be really careful now. <laughs>
He does indeed, as uh, he's trying to pick up the pace to catch up with Lewis Francis. Francis might be uh, looking over his shoulder to make sure not to be caught, because as you said, two points uh, splitting him and uh, Chedris Penzel uh, from uh, P5. Uh, Either P4, P5, that's a huge difference, because it means starting on the front row of the grid, or uh, as, it, as it stands for Lewis Francis on the uh, second uh, qualifying uh, superheat, shall I say. No, uh, so that's going to be an interesting one. So second to be hit, yes indeed, on the front row for Lewis Francis. If he stays where he is, in P4, on track, in P4 in the uh, classification. And Gabriel Gomez, in the meantime, still half a second as he lapped in 50.1. 50.1 as well for Zach Drummond. The split by hundreds of a second on lap by lap. And the Parolin driver not quite able to uh, catch up, really, with the Brazilian. Very consistent. Is used to, is, we got used to see the Brazilian over the years, you know, being not only a force of nature when it comes to uh, overtaking skills, but once he's in the lead, he's really uncatchable and pretty much unbreakable in terms of rhythm. Yeah, he, he goes into a tunnel vision, he just focuses on what he needs to do, uh, drives away, and usually it's just apex after apex after apex, and he just does what he needs. For Gomez, it's all signed, sealed, and done. A secure pole position for Super Heat 1 tomorrow. Drummond securing Super Heat 2 pole tomorrow in the senior category. It's Gomez from Drummond, Morgato with an incredible P3 finish. And one of his best results for Matias Morgato at the end of what has been a busy day of racing, not always coming his way for the Brazilian. That's two Brazilian drivers in the top three. And the first one being Gabriel Gomez. Another victory, victory number three for the CRG driver on equal score as a Zach Drummond, three wins each as well for uh, Thibaut Ramacher is at the end of this uh, busy two days of qualifying heats. But in the end, there could only be one leader and one pole sitter for the super hit one at least. And uh, it went to Gabriel Gomez. Zach Drummond will have to make do with second place overall, but still with the pole position in the bag for the super hit number two. At this Morgato between this race from Lewis Francis and Casper Eriksson. Remains to be seen if uh, the uh, driver from World Racing will be able to keep that result in the end as uh, it was uh, put under investigation to be confirmed in the official results as always available on championscarting.com. Gabriel Gomez wins for the third time in five attempts from Zach Drummond, Matthias Morgato, Francis. Then we have Casper Aronson, Emily Covisto, Michael Eider, uh, Matteo Giacardi, Vivek Han, Tom Dussol, Joe Jusson, Xavier Abramides, Aaron Garcia, uh, Stefan Antonov, Mike Pajala, P. 15. Roland Corlein is a P16 following with a sixth place recovery from Andy Cansani, Vigar Clementsen, Dominic Simic, Freddy Lloyd, Matti Rittenen, Bernardo Bernoldi, Louis uh, Castellini, and three drivers missing out in Joseph Smith, Sebastian de Pavan, and Leo Nilsson. And uh, surprisingly enough, Michael Heider finds himself indeed in trouble after having to cut the, the grass and the track uh, due to an early incident. And uh, found himself at the back end of the field but was able to uh, climb back up to P7 so impressive uh, set of performances for Michael Heider to be confirmed in the end of this day. We're gonna go through the uh, proceedings of that qualifying heat and uh, hear from the protagonists and the pole sitters of tomorrow one of them being Gabriel Gomez and then this will be about time to wrap things up ladies and gents for day two of racing here on the karting of Val d'Argenton but uh, mark it in your agenda there's plenty more to come tomorrow on Saturday. Here's how things happened with a great start from Lewis Francis on the inside. The car Republic driver holding on to that first place from Gabriel Gomez, taking the, uh, the toe from the pole sitter to uh, get himself onto the inside of uh, Zach Drummond on the left. That uh, other, uh, other line at the forefront of the grid. Certainly not the easiest one as always with uh, a heavy turn just after the uh, start finish straight. It was uh, pretty clean for most of the drivers into uh, turn one and two. And then a couple of contact already that led to uh, the uh, DNF, uh, unfortunately, for uh, Joseph Smith from Victory Lane. That big contact with Michael Heider and Joseph Smith being put into the uh, the gravel on lap number one. Quite an unfortunate turn of event and incident. Michael Heider on the left uh, had to uh, let everybody through before being able to uh, while he's placed back in the field and uh, starting his recovery charge up to P7 uh, in, in the end. The 218 of uh, Lewis Francis here, the 257 getting past. This was the decisive move for what would be win number three for Gabriel Gomez. And Lewis Francis showing no sign of resistance as uh, he wasn't uh, the one 
with uh, the more the more to lose in this battle. It wasn't his battle. Is it wasn't his win. His uh, race to win, shall I say? And uh, he went down to Gabriel Gomez. So for Lewis Francis, it was about securing what uh, will be finally P4 results. And if it doesn't change, that uh, means a front row start for the car of a big driver. Talking about front row, Gabriel Gomez will be our pole sitter for Superheat number one. And Zach Drummond, second of this race, pole sitter for Superheat number two. Let's hear for the favorites of this last uh, heat of the day and the protagonist of tomorrow's racing. Thank you very much, uh, Guillaume. Yes, down here with our race winner from that one, Gabriel Gomez. Uh, that was a superb drive for yourself. Save it to the end of the day as well, where it really mattered. You went into that race, joint on points with Zach Drummond. You came out on top. You lead the intermediate classification. You get the championship points and you start on pole for the superheat uh, tomorrow. That's got to be a great feeling. Yeah, I think it's going to be really good for us now for the championship and the points we go. We have a good advantage now, uh, but anyway, we're still tight. They're really tight. Again, after the first round was the same. In the last hit, it was me and me and Zach with the same points until the last hit, and now again same points. And now we made a good battle, and I I managed to win that one. I think it's important. It's gonna it's going a really good week for us. We are testing something more important for the European, but we are getting there. I think for tomorrow we still need to fund a little bit, but we are in the game. Yeah, exactly. Uh, let's talk a little bit about uh, what's going to happen tomorrow. Obviously, you're going to be split up now. You've got the Super Heat 1, Super Heat 2, uh, Drummond, who you won't be racing with on that one. It's just going to fall down to the final then. And uh, come that one, the longest race you're going to have over the weekend. Brand new set of tyres, of course. Uh, a full race on a brand new set on this track where it's really rubbed in. How's that going to feel? Uh, do you feel like you've you've tested every single scenario? Oh, I don't know. It will be difficult because now it's a new track for everyone. Uh, nobody do any final here yet. I think it will be difficult, but we can see it. It's the double of laps of the heat. And then will be for sure will be difficult for the towers and tomorrow is for sure more hot temperature and will be difficult to manage it but we will test a lot of things to see what we can find what's the plan for the rest of the day and tonight is it going to be relax work with a team focus getting the cut ready or is it going to be party hard and uh, hangover for tomorrow no no now we need to work a lot we need to check the data everything to see where now talk with the team to see where we can find a little bit we do we are doing we are doing a little good job with all the team. We are working with every driver, every different setup to find a, a good way to work. And now we need to sit there. We'll talk a little bit to see what we will do for tomorrow for the yeah. final. Well, excellent. Gabriel Gomez, professional as ever there, uh, working all the data. Best of luck for tomorrow. We'll see what you can do in the Super Heats and, of course, that all-important final. Thank you. Excellent stuff there. Well, a brilliant set of qualifying heats, 30 races completed, but that is not all we have for this weekend. Uh, Guillaume, let's head back over to you. What can we expect tomorrow for Saturday's racing? Thank you very much, uh, Anthony Jordan. Thank you very much again to uh, Gabriel Gomez Obrigado, my friend. It was a great day of uh, racing for CRG. And we have our two pole sitters for the OK class in uh, Gabriel Gomez and Zach Drummond. Here's what lies ahead for tomorrow. Champions of the future round two heading to his final day of racing. Starting at 9.50, the first super heat one for the juniors. Then the seniors at 10 past 10, 10 30 past 10, we'll go back with the juniors. And then again at 10 to 11 with the seniors once again. The final will be taking place on the afternoon after the lunch break. First with the uh, junior starting at uh, one o'clock on track and then the OK class at uh, 40 past one uh, local time. We have six races remaining. Uh, the action on track will be starting at 8.30 uh, local time with the warm up sessions for both classes. Six races after that and uh, the biggest of challenges lies ahead for the protagonists of the junior and the senior class. Uh, only 72 drivers qualified in both super heat in each class and we check uh, we get a good chunk of drivers heading to the final with only the 36 best left uh, to compete for glory and the victory at the end of round two of this year's season. So be with us on championscarting.com. 
will be live as always on YouTube, Facebook, as well as Motorsport TV. We got you covered as always on social media and online with the live timing brought to you by Apex Timing. The live stream, thanks to the effort of the RGMMC group. Once again, a big thank you to everybody at Val d'Argenton. One day remaining and a lot of things still to be done, a lot of questions to be answered. We'll see you tomorrow on Saturday, starting at 9.50 on track. 9.45 will be live here on championscarting.com and Motorsport TV. But uh, for now, this is see you tomorrow. Bye-bye et à demain. It makes life a lot easier out of the track, so you don't have to worry about school and on-track performance and grades and all that sort of stuff. The school understands exactly what I'm doing. They understand, you know, how important it, it is for me. And the schedule that they, you know, cater for me is really well balanced, and I really enjoy it. It's a very fine balance between his sporting career and also his studies. He doesn't have a compromise on either. I'm very happy that many of us supported us for this journey. The communication is great, and um, yeah, I'm enjoying it. I think NBA would help a lot of other races. A lot of people come into the track and asking about it. What do you do for homeschool? Like, how does it work? And um, I always say Minerva, you need to contact them and get, get going with them because it's made my life so much easier.